I really need y'all to listen to this story from the beginning to the end. I repeat, listen to this story to the beginning to the end. Hey y'all, so today's story is about a couple who tried to have a baby and when they finally had the baby, the mom was displaying symptoms of postpartum depression, but the husband didn't understand what she was going through and wasn't listening. Here's the story. So it's this married couple who been married for some time and they just for the life of them could not get pregnant. Like they tried over and over. She was um, checking her ovulation. They thought about getting the fertility shots. They thought about adoption, looking into surrogacy, just everything, whatever they had to do to get a child. And they just was thinking, maybe it's just not in God's plan right now. Let's travel, let's get that out the way. Let's, um, let's get a house, let's get our house paid off. Let's do everything we need to do so when when and if you get pregnant, we're going to be stable. We're going to be financially stable. We're going to have a home for the child. We're going to have time for the child because we got all of our partying and our traveling out the way. And it just so happens exactly what they thought about and they planned happened. She ended up pregnant. So now she's finding out she's pregnant and they are so excited. Oh my gosh, we, this is what we've been waiting on. Now we got our blessing. They was just so happy. They told their family they had the baby shower. They got all the diapers and the clothing and the body washes and everything you need to prepare for this baby to be born. And they just, we're going to be the best parents ever. We're going to love this child because we've been wanting it for so long and now it's here. When all the doctor appointments, everything looked good. Mom is healthy. She ain't got no complications during the pregnancy. And now it's time to have the baby. And she goes into labor smooth sailing everything was fine but she noticed as soon as she had the baby she did not want to touch it she did not want to look at it for the life of her she did not want nothing to do with that baby and her family didn't quite understand especially her husband because everybody knew this is what they wanted especially her all she could talk about after she got married is wanting to be a mother specifically being a mother of a daughter because she wanted a mini me. Oh, I can't wait to do her hair. I can't wait to dress her. I can't wait to teach her things of how to be a lady and you know, what to look for in the bad guys. So just every, just life experiences, life, you know, lessons, period. That's all she wanted to do. But when she had her baby, it didn't go that way. She had her baby. She didn't want to touch it. The husband like, just, just look at her, baby. She's so beautiful. She looked just like you. She got your eyes. She got your, just look at her. And the wife, she just, she just, uh, you know, I, not right now. I'm tired. And I'm just, I don't feel good. I just, I don't want to deal with her right now. And he's voicing this to the nurse because they haven't been released from the hospital. Like something ain't right. She don't want to look at the baby. And I know she wants this baby. You know, we've been talking about this child for a long time. I don't know what's going on. And the nurse is explaining to him, like, sometimes when moms, especially new moms have babies, you know, their hormones be off balance. She just needs to regulate. She might be exhausted. Labor is a hard thing for the body. It could be a lot of stuff going on. Let her get her rest. She'll get back into herself soon. So one thing the husband knew for sure is that they wanted to breastfeed, but because she wouldn't even look at the baby or touch the baby, he had no choice but to start bottle feeding the baby. So this was not in the plan. He like, she ain't touching her, she not talking to her, she not looking at her, and now I'm forced to, to bottle feed her. Eventually they get released. We're fast forward, they're at home now, and it passed the point where her trying to connect with the baby and breastfeed the baby that she just settled with bottle feeding her because she got to feed her, you know, she can't let the baby starve. And he's like, are you are you ready? Um, are you ready to, you know, be with the baby? Am I am I able to go back to work? And she like, yeah, I'm good. I got this or whatever. So he'll go to work and he'll come back and notice that the house ain't clean. It's like full disarray. He like, baby, what's going on with the house? And she like, ah, you know, I just didn't have the energy to clean up. And he like, I mean, you, we can't live like this. What's going on? And he's trying to be understanding of her being a new mom and baby, you know, up at night sleep during the day she tired but he he like come on now clean up do something his his understanding is getting very thin because he don't understand how you're home all day you really don't have no responsibilities other than the baby why is the house dirty 
when in reality audience just being a full-time mom full-time parent is a lot in itself you know you gotta feed the baby on a schedule try to put the baby to sleep you got laundry you got housework you got a lot and then no telling what was going on in her body with all her hormones and chemical imbalance but as a man he didn't understand none of that all he seen was a trifling house so fast you know fast forward he still fussing at her about the house being dirty and now he was trying he noticed that she's forgetting to do stuff he'll come home and the stove will be on baby how long this stove been on how long the oven been on oh well i cooked dinner uh maybe an hour or so ago. so you telling me you did you didn't remember to turn the oven off you could have burnt our house down well baby i just been so tired you know she keeping me up all night i don't know what's going you don't know what's going on all i hear is excuses when she was really fatigued she was really tired she was really forgetful and she even within that she was trying to explain to him like i really need you to you know see if you can take some more time off at work because i don't feel like myself it ain't that i'm trying to be forgetful i'm just you ever heard of pregnancy brain i really can't remember but he didn't care he he heard it as an excuse and she's like and I, I'm not trying to be trifling as you're calling me. I just have zero energy. He like, you're not even doing nothing. I'm doing all the work. I'm going to work. And she like, no, I'm doing a lot, even though it don't look like it. It takes a lot for me to even wake up and feed the baby and cook dinner for you because you got to come home and get a meal. But he wasn't hearing that. And so she kept on voicing what's going on with her. But him seeing the mess. And seeing her forgetting to do this and that, he was not hearing her. All he was starting, he was getting mad at her. He was starting to resent her. We've been wanting this child for so long, and now we finally got this child. And you're not even, you're not even doing all the stuff you said you was gonna do. You barely spending time with her, other than feeding her and putting her to sleep. The house is a mess. You're forgetting to turn the stove off. He's like attacking her, and she's really voicing something is not right. She's having a hard time bonding with the baby. When the baby cries, she has to step away and go to a separate room because she's crying. But she cannot express this to him because he's not hearing her. And she doesn't feel like she can talk to anybody else because they'll look at her as a failure or feel like you didn't want this child. Now you got it and you don't even know what to do with the child. So now she's in her mind and her thoughts by herself dealing with this and she does not know what's going on. She don't know who she can talk to who will understand. Whole time this woman did not even know she was dealing with postpartum depression. It's a real thing for pregnant women to go through this they don't know they're going through this they don't know the symptoms because it's not talked about enough but it's a real thing with all the different hormones and the chemicals off balance in your body one day you might just have your baby and not know what's going on and want to harm it and this is exactly what happened to her you don't really want to harm your baby this is just what all the imbalances going on in your body some women go through this and in her case this is like i said what happened so one day she was cooking dinner and she just could not get it out of her mind that she just it'd be so much easier if i just put the baby in the oven and she just was like no i can't do this i love my baby i really love my baby but she just could not shake the feeling of wanting to just it'd be so much easier if i put the baby in the oven maybe you know it'd be easier for her because she deserved the best mama and if i just take her out of this world she won't have to deal with me she won't have to hear me and her daddy arguing and fighting about the house being clean or what if i forget to get her out the bath one day and she you know she drowned what if i forget to get her out the car and i leave her in the car overnight she said she was all this stuff was going through her mind and all she could think about if i just put her in the oven and just be done with it this would be better for her not realizing what she was saying is you know is insane but it wasn't her she was really going through something so it just so happened the husband decided i'm gonna come home from work i'm gonna come home from work on my lunch break check on them because my wife ain't been my wife lately i need to just make sure she good make sure the baby good and he came in the house just in time when she was actually putting her baby in the oven The moral of the story is y'all that if y'all got a pregnant girlfriend, wife, sister, mama, whoever is going through pregnancy and they happen to not even have the baby 
and um, go through something. Cause some people can some people can express pre, you know, postpartum or prepartum depression where they just not feeling it. And, oh, I made a bad idea getting pregnant. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this child. Whatever the case may be, if they voicing stuff like this, please hear them. Do research. Talk to a doctor. Talk to a nurse. Talk to somebody to see if you can help them get themselves back together because this is a real thing it's really uh, it's a real thing it's mamas out here that is going through this and they don't know how to tell nobody out of the fear of be looking at as a failure looking at as somebody that just is crazy because at the end of the day they've been called you crazy you tripping and with that i'm out hey i'm dante if you enjoy my story time, y'all gonna love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the Cash App. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, y'all, it's story time. So in today's story, we gonna talk about, let's name him James and his girl Mariah. James and Mariah got together just on some random, you know, I met a girl out in the world and we just been hanging and realized that they were both very smart and scamming. And they was killing the game. It was like, at first, it was just little by little just to see if they can get away with it. But over time, they realized, hey, we got something here. We could keep this up. And they were doing so good that they wasn't even noticing that a lot of people was getting caught up with that scam and stuff. But they didn't care because they was riding a high horse. They was making money. They just like, no, we out here. We doing this. We doing it too good. We ain't on nobody radar. So let's just keep this going. They ended up putting up money and saving money and they were smart, unlike other scammers who was out here trying to show out and be hood rich and posting their money on Facebook and all over these social media sites. They wasn't doing that. They were still walking around regular, put, saving money, talking about where they're going to put it to invest or how can we flip it to make more. So they at first wasn't on the radar until over time. They just was making so much money that it caught eye of the FBI. Now, here we are, fast forward. Now, James is getting called in. They already got enough on him for scamming, but they got stuff on Mariah too. But he took the blame. She ain't had nothing to do with it. She ain't know nothing about it. She works a legal job. Don't put this on her. I'm going to take this, put it all on me. So before he gets locked up, he makes sure that he talks to Mariah, get his affairs in order. Here's all the money. This is where the stash spot said. This is where we got to say, if you hold this, you hold me down while I do this time. They giving me four to 20 good behavior, possibly early release. I just need you to just hold me down, keep money on my books, put it up. So when I get out, I have something and we still going to be good. She understood this. She got this. Now it's time for him to go in. He's in. Everything is going good. For the first two and a half years, like clockwork, on the phones, sending back letters, money on his books for commissary. She's just doing everything she's supposed to. She holding him down. He has no reason to question her. He has no reason to feel like his money is in jeopardy. She's sleeping around. Even if she was, he like, shoot, I can't do nothing. I can't please her. I just... You know, when we get out, we can just, when I get out, we can leave off where we, you know, left off or whatever. Just hope she don't get pregnant or get no STD she can't get rid of type stuff. That's his mindset because he grown and he ain't stupid. He knows she out here probably doing her. But long as she answered that phone when I call, that money on them books and that commissary and she returned them letters, I ain't go trip. So 
a lot of people been getting picked up for scamming for this for that whatever and they started um talking about early releases and he like well i've been in here about a good two and a half years i might possibly be on that list and it just so happened because his case wasn't as extreme as the other cases he was on that list so he was like oh man this would be perfect if i just surprise her i'm not even gonna tell her i'm getting early released i'm just gonna you know show up at the house you know probably go grab some flowers or something set up something with my mama so we can have a room ready he just had this whole miraculous plan to just just treat her to this beautiful day when he get his early release because she been holding him down for this two and a half years so now it's two months before his early release date and he started noticing she been slacking like his commissary getting low and it ain't never been low you know what i'm saying she she ain't been answering the phone like she used to like if he was used to routine clockwork on the hour whatever or even if it ain't on the hour on that day half of the time she wasn't even picking up the phone no more and he like she got a dude she gotta have a dude like i know she was gonna be out here doing her thing but i mean come on now we a team we we got this like what's going on she ain't answering the phones she ain't she slacking on putting money on my books my commissary i ain't had a letter in about two months what is going on so he like i can't get my mind there i can't get depressed up in here this place is depressing as it is i ain't even gonna worry about it Maybe it's something deep. He talking to his mama. His mama ain't telling him nothing. He talking to his friends. They ain't telling him nothing. So he just think that she just is ghosting him or she got a dude and she like forget him or whatever. So now two, uh, two months has passed and it's time for him to get the early release. His mindset is still to surprise her. So the first thing he do when he gets out is he goes to the house that they was sharing together just to find out that she don't even stay there no more. Like the house is put up for sale. And he like, what? Like, how is the house even, what? We we had all this money. She, she could have took care of this. She was supposed to take care of this. This was her job. Somebody else is living in a house, basically. He like, okay, what am I supposed to do? So he goes to all his old spots, all the places he used to hang out, all the places his friends stay. And he asking them, have you seen Mariah? Like, anybody seen Mariah? And they like, yeah, Mariah, she always be on the corner, yada, yada, and blah, blah, blah. He like, on the corner, yada, yada. What, what's that supposed to mean? He like, dude, you ain't going to believe it unless you go over there. And he like... Okay, so is she staying around the corner or something? Like, did she move? She she put this house up for sale, let somebody else get it, and now she got something better? Because all his mind is thinking is, we had a lot of money. We have a lot of money. Ain't no way we don't have this house no more. She had to upgrade and got something better for when I get out, so we go be straight. Because that's what's the job she's supposed to do. He goes around the corner. He, he driving, he driving, he driving. He don't see her. He's stopping in the stores. Have anybody seen Mariah? Anybody seen Mariah? Yeah, she um at the street, yada, 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 yada. He like, okay, so he wasn't at the, she wasn't at the streets. His friends was telling him. He go to the street that the dude at the store tell him or whatever, and then he sees her. But when he see her, like, he can't even speak. He, he just in, like, shock because she looks so down bad. And he like what like no that ain't my mariah that ain't my baby and he just got sad like what's going on his first mind was thinking that she was cheating on him or not even necessarily cheating on him she had a dude she fell in love with or something and then they telling her telling him that she on the streets or whatever so prostitution came in this mind can you say this but sorry <laughs> but it wasn't even that she was like looked like she was strung out on drugs he slowly rolled up on her. He like, Mariah, Mariah, baby. She she look at him and she's shocked because she didn't even know that he had early release. And she like, oh, oh, oh my God, baby. Hey, how you doing? You know, twitching and scratching and stuff. And he like, what happened? What happened? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I messed up. I, I know I messed up. I messed up. I know. And he like, you know what? I can't even, I can't even get into all that. I just got to ask you, Mariah, where's the money? Where's our money, Mariah? Where Where's the money, baby, that we put up? Please tell me you put it up. You got it in a safety deposit box somewhere. You got somebody holding it, baby. Where's the money? 
We, we don't got no more money, baby. I messed up. It's all gone, baby. It's all gone. I messed up. He like, how? What do you mean it's all gone? We had so much money. Where's the money, Mariah? Please don't play with me right now, honey. This is the only thing I had to my name. Where's the money, honey? And she's like, we don't got no more. You know, within that two and a half years, you was locked up. You know, I was partying. And I was testing this and testing that. And somebody, somebody slipped something in something. And I, I just... Over the last two or three months, I just got hooked, baby. And I just was selling stuff. That's how we lost the house. And I just, over time, I was, the money's gone. I don't know what to tell you. The money's gone. Y'all, the moral of this story is, regardless of how you got your money, if you know that you possibly is doing something that you can end up in jail for, I'm not saying you can't trust your girl. I'm not saying you can't trust your family, but make sure that your finances is in order, whether you get a safety deposit box, whether you get a bank account only you have access to and you know somebody you can wholeheartedly trust, access it and keep it good. But make sure your affairs in order so you don't, <clears throat> excuse me, so you don't be like this brother, just getting out and ain't got nothing to his name. And with that, I'm out. Hey. I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all. I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 PM Eastern time. All right, family, this is another one of them crazy Covington, Georgia stories, y'all. Hit that like button for me before we even start this video, because y'all been lacking on that like button. And share the video, too, while, while y'all at it. So it's me, Al, this girl named Tara, this girl named Tasha. Tara and Tasha are sisters, right? And... They was in love with my brother, a king. They was, when I say they was in love with him, they, they was just starstruck with this dude. So we all went to school together, except for Al. He didn't go to the school with us. So every day, literally, when a king introduced me to Tasha and Tara, we all used to skip school every day. See, they mama, they, they mama had like a morning afternoon shift. So what we do is, as soon as they mama go to, as soon as they mama go to work, we just go right over there, right, and we be chilling there all day long. So, we weren't in drinking or smoking or nothing like that. We were just chilling, just watching movies, and they cook for us, and we just sitting there chilling, right. So, the first day we did this, it was just me and my brother Akeem and Tasha and Tara. Now. Of course, I thought I was going to be chilling with one of these chicks, but they wasn't feeling me at all. They was, like I said, it was starstruck on my brother. So it is what it is. So we did that for about two days, right? So then I, I ended up inviting Al over one day with this skip thing. So Al is me, Al, Kim, Tasha, Tasha, and Tara, right? So we all just chilling. So... Al really, when I say really, he really was attracted to Tasha. And when I say attracted, I'm talking about, do y'all remember like on them cartoons where, where like when a wolf see a girl that he liked, and he like, oh, it had a big old hard eyes. That's how Al was with Tasha. And he kept trying to press on her, right? And she was just like, look, I'm not feeling you. I like Keem and that's just what it is. So Al was like, dang, well, don't, man, you got somebody for me? Can you bring somebody tomorrow? And she was like, yeah, I got somebody for you. And he was like, who? And she was like, this chick named Jasmine. Now, listen, when she, when she said Jasmine, I automatically got to thinking like, hold on, it's only two Jasmines. Hold on, you got that Jasmine, that Jasmine. And I know the two Jasmines, they my homegirls. So I'm thinking like, okay, okay, I can see that. I can see that happening, right? So we end up leaving next day. Now, this is where the story starts, right? Now, it's just me and Al. My brother, he wasn't with us. I think he went to his girlfriend's house or something. But it was me and Al. So we roll up in there, right? 
Tasha and Tara is sitting on the couch just smiling. So we get in there. I'm like, what's up with y'all? It was like, nothing. She in the room, Al. Jasmine in the room. So he was like, shoot, say less, right? Now, Tasha hurry up and she like jumped up and got in front of the bedroom door. She was like, look, you got to keep the light off, though. So Al was like, what you mean keep the light off? She was like, because she don't want to, you know, if y'all going to mess around, she don't want to be seen. She want to do it with the light off. So he was like, man, shoot, it is what it is. I could do that, whatever, right? So m remember, D Tasha and Tara is dang near bawling, like smiling. The only thing they ain't doing is laughing out loud. So I'm kind of confused at the moment. I'm like, why is they, that's, hold on, this is getting really weird. So the first thing I think is like, oh, man, they probably got a gay dude up in there or something. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Let, I, I, so I just sit down, right? So Al go in the room and close the door. I said, who up in there? Tasha was like, it's Jasmine. I said, why she, like, I, I know both of the Jasmine. Like, what Jasmine? She was like, Jasmine Blank. I ain't going to say her last name. I was like, oh, y'all bold in the mud. Now, hold on, y'all. Let me tell y'all about Jasmine. Or should I say, Big Jasmine. And before y'all try to play these military mind games, ain't nobody body shaming. Ain't nobody sitting up there trying to talk down on big women or nothing like that. This is just a story that happened to me, actually what happened to my homeboy, Al, that I'm just retelling the story because I was there and it was crazy. So if you, if y'all are too sensitive to be listening to my stories, cause y'all be in the comments section, stop. If anybody that's sensitive, stop listening to my videos. I'm tired of giving these dang disclaimers. Enjoy the dang story. Anyway, so I'm like, y'all is out cold. Now, let me tell y'all how Big Jasmine was. When I say Big Jasmine, y'all remember the last story that I told about Big Kiki? Now, here's the thing. Big Jasmine was nothing like Big Kiki. In fact, Big Kiki was like Beyonce towards compared to Big Jasmine. I would do a wife up, Big Kiki. Um, Big Jasmine, oh whole different story i'm not even going to describe her just for the sake of the story just to put it this way she was um she was very unattractive that's all i'm going to say so now it's making sense why she wants the light off she wants the light off right so al he go up in there right and i'm like y'all is out cold y'all bold in the mud so they just laughing right so I hurry up and I get like my ear towards the door and, and they get up too, Tasha Terry, they get up too and they listen to too. So it's quiet and so we hear them talking and he like, man, come on, let's do it, let's do it. And she like, come on, let's do it. So all I hear, Al like, man, come on, I need to see what you look like. So they going back and forth, she like, no. So at this point, Al getting out the bed because I guess he laid down with her and was kissing on her or something. And maybe he would, you know, I guess Al was experienced with slimmer women. So when he's touching extra things, he like, man, hold up. So he's trying to get out the bed at this point and cut the light on. And Big Jasmine is grabbing him and pulling him back like, no. So now they like in a, they like kind of wrestling. She trying to hold him down and not let him get to cut the light on. So eventually, so we hear all this this noise and, and, and stuff falling off the dresser and stuff. So we're like, what the heck? So, but we know that he's trying to get to the light. So he cut the light on. He like, man, what the F? Man, oh, heck no. Heck no, man, man, y'all effed up. Y'all, man, oh, man, oh, no. So you hear Jasper like, no, come on, man. Come on, let's do it. He like, no, man, no, you ain't my type, man. I'm, I'm good. I'm straight. So it got quiet, like. So they arguing back and forth for maybe about two minutes. It's back and forth. So now they like they not arguing. Now they just talking. And I hear Jasmine telling him like, "Come on, I haven't had none in a long time, and I ain't gonna tell nobody." And this and that. And Al like, "Man, I don't know, man. I man, I don't know." So, <laughs> so, so eventually now. I, I don't know, like, like, we hear this outside the door. 
So I can't see exactly what's going on in there. I can only assume. Now, so I guess they back sitting on the bed. And I guess she trying to get on top of Al. And he like, I don't know. Like he like, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if he just going along with it but keep trying to stop her at the same time like one foot in one foot out type of thing so i guess she get the kiss it on it with something because i know this is the part that i walked in she was on top of al but they still had clothes on and i guess she was really trying to pull his pants down or something and he when i opened the door he ended up pushing her and she was like, no, you going to give me some. Now, me, Tasha, and Tara is right there in the door. So we see this. So she's like, no, you going to give me some. And she like trying to pull his pedal. He like, man, get off me. So she got him kind of pent to the bed, right? Why Al like, he like moved to his side a little bit. And he just came up with a strong right, y'all. And he punched this girl right in the side of her head. And she, she like fell over. It's like, oh, why you hit me? Why you hit me? He was like, no, man, I told you to get off me. I told you to get off me. So he get off the bed. Now, she done fell, like, rolled off the bed, y'all. So we looking like, what the heck going on? I'm like, Al, why you with her, man? He was like, no, man, I told her to get off me. Now, Al putting on his shirt, <laughs> and he looking at Tasha like, but you can get it. You definitely can get it. She, and we just started laughing, right? Let me ask y'all a question real quick, real quick. Now, fellas... And, and women, because this is for y'all too. Have any of y'all dealing with the fellas and the women, have y'all ever had to take one for, for the team? Let me know in the comment section. And what I mean by that is that, you know, okay, for the fellas, if, if, you, if you and your homeboys out and y'all meet some girls and the other girls, they like, well, we ain't going to mess around with you unless it's somebody for our friend, unless you got somebody for for our friend whatever right so you like I right, well so let's let me know have y'all ever had to take one for the team to mess around with somebody that y'all weren't attracted to and for the ladies out there have y'all ever had to take one for the team where it's you with two or three of your friends and they got their dudes with them or some dudes they just met and you know everybody everybody got who they attracted to but then it's just that one guy that y'all like, I ain't messing with him, and you like, you know what, forget it. I, I guess I'll take one for the team. Let me know in the comment section, have y'all ever took one for the team? I'm going to put it out there. Dante never took one for the team. I'm going to tell y'all why. I was the one that was setting up the plays where the guys had to take one or be the far guy to take one for the team. So y'all can say that's cap. Y'all can say whatever y'all want to. It is what it is. But, again, y'all, I need for y'all to hit that like button and share the video and leave a comment. Also, listen, Alicia Norwood is going to be dropping some more crazy stories, y'all. I need for y'all to show her some love and comment and hit that like button on her videos, all right? Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Tyrone, that was all the money that we had. How could you? I gave you all my income tax money. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. This story right here is for the ladies. Ladies, I need for y'all to pay close attention. It's income tax season time, and I'm about to put y'all on game. You know your baby daddy that always comes around around January, February, March and start acting right, treating you good. Well, he only around to get that paper. Okay. You know y'all know the type that always come up with these crazy plans like, yo, baby, check this out. I got uh I got a plan for us. Give me okay, so you get ten thousand dollars back. Let me get seven thousand. But wait, listen, listen, this, this is what I'm gonna do. 
I'm going to take that 7,000 and I'm going to get some work. And then I'm going to flip that work and get 14,000. Then I'm going to flip that work and get 28,000. Then I'm going to flip that work and get 56,000. And then when I flip that work, I'm going to have $112,000 to get us out the projects, get us out the hood, right? So you're going to let me get it, baby? Most of you females fall victim to that all the time. I'm going to say that again. Let me scoot up just a little bit more so y'all can really get the grasp. Most of you females been in that predicament and most of you females is going to be in that same exact predicament this income tax season. But let me tell y'all something. Instead of giving y'all money to Tyrone, because y'all know what he about to do, right? As soon as he get that money, he going to go to the mall and get him a Gucci belt, get him some Gucci shoes, get him some Jordans, get him a nice Nike outfit and go to the strip club and throw your money on them girls. But wait, have no fear. Since you know that he's going to do that already, why not send it to me? Why not send it to Dante? At least I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with the money. I'm, I'm shooting a video, and it's coming out in October. This video needs funding. So I need, for, for you women out there, that's going to give Tyrone your baby daddy, or Tyrone or Gene your, your money, send it to me. I'm going to have my cash app and my PayPal pinned up in the description below. So before y'all break off Tyrone, break me off, okay? So I can pay for these permits and these locations and these Airbnbs when I'm shooting this video, these, this movie that's coming out in October. All right, but let me get y'all to school. So where was all this hustling at the whole year? I call them seasonal or income tax drug dealers. That's what I call them. Income tax seasonal drug dealers. And they, 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 it's like the same thing every year. What was all that hustling spirit at through the whole year? You could have went to McDonald's. You could have been making what? What? I don't know how much people at McDonald's make. I'm going to say $1,000 every two weeks. $2,000, right? So with that same mathematics that you got, seasonal drug dealer, income tax drug dealer, if you make $2,000 a month, right, take that $2,000, right, flip it to four, flip that four to eight, turn that eight to 16, that 18 to 30, what, the 18 to 36, Flip it, just like you was going to flip your girl income tax money, taken away from your kids. Yeah, yeah. See, and and and, and look, I'm dead serious when I say in, instead of giving it to Tyrone, give it to me. I'm going to put it to use. Oh, I'm going to put it to work. I'll tell y'all something. You dudes out there that be playing military mind games with these women, y'all foul. Y'all wrong. A lot of these women got kids. And and so what you decide to do is you see a vulnerable woman that got low self-esteem and that can't keep a man. She got a couple baby daddies. So what you do is because you like, yo, well, it is cold outside. This is a come up. So I'm going to start treating this chick right. Knowing she got kids, knowing she supposed to spend that money on her kids, but you're going to get up in her head. You're going to tell her, oh, I want to be with you. I, I, and this, this is for the cats that don't got kids with her because it's predators. That's like in prison. There's predators out here on the streets. They'll see a, a single mother that got two or three baby daddies. that got two or three kids. And, and they know the type. They, they, they see her at the grocery store all the time with her two or three kids with no man around. They they know that she's staying in a project or a low-income place, right? And there's nothing wrong with living in these low-income places. It's not. But you should it should be a footstool because everybody need help. And what you do is use these places until you can get on your feet, right? But anyway, we get in past the point. So these predators will watch a female, lay on a female for a while. And what he would do, he would cozy up next to her. Start taking her out on dates, talking about, I love you. Giving her that good jug. You know what I'm talking about, because that bed get lonely at night. Oh yeah, that bed get lonely at night. And don't nobody want to feel lonely, right? Sometimes that rose that you be playing with yourself with, sometimes you just want the real thing. 
And Tyrone gonna give you the re he gonna give you the real thing too. But you gotta understand what comes with that. See, some of you women, y'all want y'all y'all want a Tyrone, and and that's cool. No, hey, and, and this is no diss to no Tyrones out there. there. There's good Tyrones out there, but we in 2024, y'all, and you women keep falling for the same trap, the same trap. And maybe some of you women want to buy love. Maybe I just need to shut up. L l let me know in the comment section, cause you got one side. You got one side that'll say, "Well, she shouldn't be so dang gullible and charge it to the game." Then you got the other side that's saying, "Like, really? I just learned something today." So, was dudes out here really getting in relationship with chicks because they don't want to be homeless? There's dudes that's out here just getting in relationships with women around income tax season because they trying to get some of that bread. Yeah. There's dudes out there that does that. There's dudes that try to get back with their baby mama around this time because they want some of that cheese. They going to come around. They going to be, it's going to be like this. Hey, baby, listen, look, look, look. Um, I, I, I've been really thinking lately that, um, I I I want to start doing right by you. I, I'm I'm not going. I ain't talking to no more other females. Um, I, I start going to church. Uh, matter of fact, I'm finna go back and get my GED because I just want to do right by us and, and get our family. You hear them, our family out of the hood. But but just just so and coincidentally, he doing this around income tax season, right? So now you are like. Okay, even though it's just your third time giving him enough, give him th three checks. It's the third time. Okay, I, I guess I, I guess you could come. Uh, he like okay, babe. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna move in. So he come over there right with his backpack that got his PS4 in it. That's all he got: his PS4, his pistol, and two pairs of Jordans and a pair of drawers and three white tees. That's all he got. That's what he coming. That's what he. That's that's his whole life in his backpack. So when he get in there, he, he cooking, he cleaning, he making sure the house clean and everything. He rubbing your feet. Matter of fact, he giving you all the attention that you need. Y'all know that scene when a dude, when, when a woman at the grocery store, she at the um at a restaurant or at a liquor store, and you got the guy that stand behind the girl with over her like this, and she right there paying for the food. Yeah, y'all know the type. That's him. Now, when he find out how much she getting back on her income taxes, because she done told him, well, I'm getting 9000 back, he going to play it off like it ain't nothing, like like he like he not interested in it. But as soon as them days start counting down, he going to be asked like, hey, babe, um, it, it, did the money come yet? Oh, no, it should be here, um, over here. Oh, well, check the IRS um, website. It should tell you when your refund should be coming. And she'll tell him, right? And he just doing the most now. Now he just showing out. I'm talking about he posting you and the kids on Facebook and on the gram and everything. He he daddy of the year. As soon as you get that money, I don't know if it hits your yeah, it hits your direct deposit, right? It'll hit your iPhone. So it's like this. Matter of fact, the money supposed to be coming Jan the money supposed to be coming January seventh, right? And the notification done hit. You got that Chase account too. So it hit. And you looking. You see that seven, you see that nine thousand in there. Ooh. You like, hey baby, um the, the, the money hit. She like, oh, okay. Now listen, y'all, it's ten o'clock at night. She like, oh, all right, all right, cool. Now now my now baby girl, she work at a group home. She is CNA. And let me tell y'all something before we even go on with this story. Because I've been seeing a lot of a lot of dudes hating on chicks that is working as a CNA. First of all, you cats out there that be hating on women that be working as a CNA, shame on you. Shame on you. A job is a job. And a woman that works as a CNA is strong. And I'm going to tell you why. They got to clean at the full adults, like clean their body. Wipe their backside. I'm being respectful. I'm being respectful. So I'm not saying exactly what they cleaning. But a lot of women that do these jobs, 
then women are strong. Y'all need to stop looking down on them type of women. Because a job is a job. At least she got an income. At least she got money coming in. Why look down on a female? That's one of the things I really don't like when dudes look down on females that's working. What are you doing besides running your mouth? It, anyway, so he looking at it. He like, oh, baby, I, you, you, you got the money here. She's like, okay, we, 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 I'm, I'll take care of it tomorrow. So now he like, you know what, baby? Turn around right quick. She like, what? He like, turn around. I want to do something for you. And she like, boy, what is you doing? And then he end up going down on her. Y'all know what I mean. We adults. He blow, he rock her world that night. Oh yeah, he rock he rock her world. Right? He doing it all. He sucking the toes, all that. Cause he about to get that payday. The next day come around. He done made breakfast. He done got the kids up. And all that, right? Hey baby, um, you think we can go to the bank around like ten o'clock? She like, yeah, we, we can go. We can go. Okay, okay, cool. They go to the bank. She say, listen. I'm not going to give you this whole 9000 but I'm going to give you 5000 okay? So is that cool? He like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's cool, baby. Yeah, but I'm finna, I finna go get, I'm finna go flip this right now. I'm finna go flip this right now. She like, okay, okay, go, go, go take care of your business. Be careful. He like, okay, baby, I got you. I got you. So as soon, as soon as he drop her off in her car at her job, Doing CNA work, he he going straight to the mall. He going straight to the mall. He going to go to the Gucci store or the Louis or the Louis Vuitton store and go get him a five hundred dollar belt. Then he going to go to the Gucci the Gucci shop and go ahead and get him a Gucci bag, get him a Gucci some Gucci shoes, right? Then he going to go to the middle of the mall, right, and go get him a fake chain. Oh yeah. Then you know what he gonna do after that? He gonna call he gonna call Tay Tay and Ron Ron. And be like, hey, um, y'all got some bud? Hey, we got some bud. I mean, you got some bud. I'm trying to cop like a pound or something. What? Yeah, I'm trying to get a pound. You, you mean you trying to get an ounce? Nah. I'm trying to get a pound. They like, boy, who you done robbed? He like, man, stop playing, man. You know I got it, man. I've been having it. They like, all right, pull up, man, pull up. He like, all right, I'll be there in a minute. So he like, what this hit for? What this hit for? They like, well, this right here for a pound. Uh, give me fifteen hundred. I right, bet, bet. Now listen, he uh, he down to only two grand. He out of that five thousand, he down to two thousand now, and he just gave dude fifteen hundred for this for this sack. So now he telling himself, okay, so I'ma smoke maybe about. Two zips. I'ma smoke about two zips. I'ma sell the rest of it, right? Now he only got five hundred dollars left. Y'all see where this is going, right? So now, as the money start leaving, he done spent all this money before before baby girl even got off of work. So now, baby girl went in at eleven o'clock. She get off at seven. Eleven to seven, Monday through Friday. It's six fifty five. She calling his she calling his phone. You know why she, he not well, you you wanna know why he not answering? And she done called him five times already? Cause he at Magic City. Doing the rest of that five hundred dollars. He got his Gucci belt, Gucci shoes. And he out there telling chicks that he he the big dog now. He got the smokes on deck now. Matter of fact, he giving away nicks. He giving away dimes to the strippers. So now it's 10 o'clock at night. Baby girl done caught the bus home. She like, man, I hope nothing happened to him. I hope nothing happened. No, he at Magic City on your dime, on your hard income tax. So he come through, right? One o'clock in the morning. He smelling like liquor. He got glitter all over him. He was in that trick daddy, big trick daddy, right? Come in the house. She like, what, what happened? What, why, why you pick me up from work? Why you answer your phone? He like, man, stop tripping, man. She like, huh? 
man, stop tripping, man. I'm about to go to bed. She like, and then she looking at him like, hold on, he got, he got a chain on. He got a Gucci belt. Go, man, what the? So she like, hey, how much money you got? Man, leave me alone, man. And there it go right there. This is the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of all the issues. I give it two weeks later. She owned him because she realized he ain't flipped that money. And then the pack that he did get, he done smoked it up. He done smoked it up. So now she like, dang, I am so stupid. I could have bought my kids school clothes. I could have got my car fixed. I could have took that money and got out of the projects, paid my rent up for at least four or five months. I could have been paying my bills up. But I trusted this dude. I'm not going to ever give him no more money. And then and then on top of that, this dude that gave me an STD from one of these strippers. Ladies, pay attention. And the reason why I say, the reason why I said in the beginning, give me the money. Give me if you if you're going to keep fa falling for Tyrone antics, just give me the money. I know what to do with it. I got a movie that's coming out in October and I need to pay for permits. I need to pay for Airbnbs in, in different locations. So if you want to invest in, invest in me, I got the, matter of fact, I'm going to put the cash app right here. The cash app is right here. Send me the money. Dante know exactly what to do with it. I know exactly what to do with it. By the way, y'all, I started a brand new channel. A brand new channel called Dante the Ape. I need for y'all to go over there and subscribe to it. This is what the channel look like right here. And if you and if it don't pull up when you type it in, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get to the channel. So stay tuned. Okay, when you type in the Dante Show on my homepage, you scroll down. The first thing you're gonna see is for you members only videos also if you want to become a member make sure you join the channel so you can get all the member videos okay you're going to see true crime stories prison stories hood stories reaction videos the dante show podcast prison compilation stories the yard that's where i put all my skits at all the way at the bottom down here y'all y'all see that right here the one right here to say dante the ape that's my new channel. Make sure y'all subscribe to that channel, okay? I have listened to the people. I'm going to give y'all the Prison Pimp Big Red full story right now. Part one, part two, and part three. This is the full video. Hit that like button. Let's get to it. Shit, here we go again. Last year, I told y'all a story about this pimp named Big Red. Long story short, Big Red was in there pimping other dudes, and his do justice ended up coming in the form of him end up pimping out his own blood son, and he had intercourse with his own son, and it messed him up. Well, this is the updated version of that story because I left a lot of stuff out of it and I'm about to tell it all. So y'all sit back, relax, and we about to get to it. Now, Dante was in his cell. When I peeked out my cell, because every Tuesday we get a new shipment of cats coming in the pod, okay? So I peeked my head out the cell to make sure none of my enemies, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I had to make sure none of my enemies was coming in the cell, were coming in the pot. So I peeked my head out there, checking everybody out. It was about four cats that came in there. So I see this younger black dude, he come in there. And I'm like, oh, okay. I ain't seen nothing special about him or nothing. But I seen Big Red. He was over there by the control booth looking right at the young cat. So I just put two and two together and I said, oh, Big Red got another one. So Big Red pimped over there to him instantly and was like, hey, what's up, young blood? 
um, you know what cell you going to? He like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know what cell I'm going to. He said, well, let me get your stuff. Let me help you and bring your, you know, take your stuff to your cell. So he like, okay, okay, cool, cool, OG. Let me tell y'all something. Number one, off the rip. If a man approach you in prison on your first day and trying to help you, be careful. Be very careful. Because he might try to do what Big Red is about to do to him. Now, I get it also. If you're a part of a gang or organization, yes, they will approach you and bring you home and teach you how to do things. So that's cool. But if you ain't a part of no organization and this random man come to you being extra friendly, understand that he wants something. And well, let's get back to the story. So he like, okay, so this your sale right here. And this and that. He like, yeah, okay. So he telling him like, listen. I'm gonna protect you up in here because you you look like you're young. H how old are you? Oh, I'm 18. You, you 18? Oh, okay, what you in here for? Man, I robbed somebody and man, they gave me 10 years. Oh, you got 10 years? Yeah, I got 10 years. Okay, okay, well, do you got any family that's gonna be helping you out on your books, you know, give you commissary or whatever? He like, I mean, my mama, but you know, she, she gets social security and you know it's like i i know she ain't gonna be able to help me out so big red go like you know what i got you i'm gonna look out for you you with me homeboy he like okay okay cool bet so big red like hold on one second so big red go back to his cell and he go get him some commissary he get him couple packs of ramen noodles, a couple Mountain Dews, you know, a couple Kit Kats, sneakers, honey buns, you know, the whole works. So he go back to the dude's cell, he give it to him right here, man, you can hold that down. Dude like, oh man, thanks. Thanks, man, that's that's real. That's real love. Big Red like, yeah, man, don't worry about it, man. Like I said, I got you up in here. I got you. So now, Big Red like, okay, so I'm gonna let you know about me, okay? I'm not no cat that live an alternative lifestyle. Due to YouTube laws and regulations, Dante gotta choose his words carefully because y'all know that that community be coming for my head all the time. So, I have to say alternative living lifestyle. So Big Red says, you know, I, I, I'm not living no alternative lifestyle, but I do manage of the cats in here that is living that way. So if anybody try to step to you and try to tell you like, oh, stay away from Big Red because he ain't no good. He gonna try to turn you out and pimp you out. Listen, I'm I, I'm not, them dudes that run with me, they want to be pimped out. Them dudes that run with me, they I protect them. And it ain't like what, what me and you got going on. It's basically, I see you a young cat you new to the system. It's cats in here that's going to try to take advantage of you. But Big Red ain't going to let that happen. Yeah, I, I bet you Big Red ain't going to let that happen. Because Big Red is doing exactly what he trying to tell him not to do. Or prevent him from dealing with. But Big Red is a predator. So, he like, okay, OG, OG. Okay, cool. So, Big Red is telling him like, yo. So, we get up at this time. We we go if if you go to programs, you know you can get your time knocked down. If you get do you got your high school diploma? No, I I ain't got my high school diploma. Okay, well check this out. You need to sign up for your GED classes. Um, get some anger management classes. You know, get into all these programs so that way they can start knocking down your time. So even if like what you got ten years, okay, so you'll be eligible for parole in three years, okay? Because he showed him his paperwork. So it's minimum that he had to must do, period, is three years. But he got 10 over his head. So he said, okay, it'll look good in front of the parole board if you got your GED and all these programs and classes. So, you know, just when you talk to your counselor, everything will be good. So do like, all right, bet, cool, man. Now, over the next two or three weeks, Big Red ain't really pressing him for 
let's say X, y'all know what I mean. We're not about to play no military mind games. He's not pressing him on that tip because he already got four boys already. And if you don't know what a boy is, it is a man that has turned to the alternative lifestyle of living in prison. So he already got four of them. Now, Big Red program was cold. How he used to program with these four boys, when they go to the lunch hall, right? When, we, when they go to the chow hall, all four of the boys must walk in front of him, okay? They can't look to their left, they can't look to their right. It was like he ran a tight ship, like he was an army commando or whatever. His philosophy was like, if any other man try to look at y'all or talk to y'all, you do not talk to them or look. Matter of fact, when, when we are in the presence of a man, y'all look down to the ground. He was really pimping these cats. He's like, y'all look down to the ground, okay? Y'all, if, if anybody, and everybody know how Big Red was in their programming, if anybody had an issue with one of his boys, we can't argue with them, okay? We have to come to Big Red and settle our grievances, right? Because that's just how Big Red was running this ship. So, he noticed that, well, all of us noticed that, okay, so, Big Red will have him right on his side. And keep in mind, before everybody get away, this is Big Red's son, but he don't know it. Big Red don't know it, okay? Because when Big Red got sent to prison, his son, okay, so Big Red was a pimp also outside in the real world, okay? And one of his girls that, you know, that was walk, working for him, ended up getting pregnant by him when he got locked up. So he don't know that he have any kids out here, okay? So let's keep that all in mind. Now, remember y'all told y'all, this is an updated story. So now, we noticed that the, the, the young fella that's with him now, which is his son, is walking side by side with Big Red while the four boys is in front, right? So I'm looking and I'm like, yeah, he grooming them, he grooming them. That's all that is. Now... We're going to say like maybe a month go by and Big Red is hitting them off. Big Red is breaking dude off. I'm talking about he giving him nihilators. He giving him all types of big bag of commissary. He making sure that his hygiene right. Giving him deodorants, toothpaste, toothbrushes, all that. He do, do living good. So Big Red... He, now this is where the military mind game start. Big Red like, hey, uh, used to move in my cell. And the little fella like, yeah, you, I, I should. You know, we, we, we jailing together good. You know, you like a, a father figure to me. Yeah, like a father figure to me. So yeah, yeah I, I, I should move into your cell, right? So Big Red tell him, okay, Here's a, here's a slip. Go fill it out and ask that you want to sell change. And he like, okay, cool. And you know the, the and say you want to move in here with me, and I'ma sign off on it. So he he do that. They change the sale in three days. Now this is where the story is about to turn crazy, wicked, right? So now, dude in the sale, he in the sale with Big Red, right? Big Red on the first night, when we when lights come out, come off, Big Red like, hey, listen. Now, dude at the top, Big Red at the bottom. He like, hey, young blood, I need to talk to you about something. So he like, what's up? What's up, Red? He like, hey, um, haven't I been taking care of you? Like, making sure you eat good in here and you know, making sure nobody cause you no type of harm. He like, yeah, OG, what, why, what's up, what's going on? He like, man, I, I got a, I got a problem. He like, w what type of problem you got? He like, man, bro, I, I, I just got a never mind, never mind. He like, no, what is it? Now he done poked his head over, talking to Red while Red laying on his back. He like, man, you remember like the the four boys that that you know that I got out here working for me he like yeah he like man bro man I, I owe somebody something and never mind never mind he like what 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 is it he like man okay so 
one of the boys end up contracting something and you know none of the other inmates want to mess with the rest of my boys because they think they're gonna catch something and i got like this crazy massive debt that i gotta pay and the person that i owe this debt to you know he like a real heavy hitter up in here and i really don't feel like i mean i can go to war with this dude but it's just gonna mess up a lot and i just i can't put none of my boys you know to go satisfy that debt so i was wondering like man i was wondering could you could you go handle that for me so at this point in time y'all dude like what 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 you mean go handle that for you he like man i'm just saying just look like i said ain't nobody in here you know gay no, no nobody up in here gay except for my boys but you know i i need for you to go like tomorrow to go in this certain cell and you know just do whatever this dude tell you to do and he like but that is gay he, he, remember y'all check this out dude is 18 years old this is what i tell y'all about the military mind games you know you know what he asking you to do you know it ain't right but because he was feeding you well let me not jump ahead so he like no nah, man i don't i don't, don't want to do that man that that, that is gay he like Red sit up. He like, man, jump down here, man. L -l -l let me talk to you, man. Come on, I I, I ain't even mad. Just, just jump down here. Let me talk to you. So dude, get off the bunk. And he sit right there on the desk. He like, listen, man. Haven't I been taking care of you? Haven't I protect you up in here? Haven't I showed you the ropes in here? Why you think nobody ever stepped to you because of me? Why you think that you never went hungry up in here because of me? And I just asked you to do this simple thing. And I, man, d d listen, I've been in here for so long, man. I know how this prison stuff go. See, you still a kid. You don't know that it's men out here that won't even ask you. They'll just sock you out and take you, man. And I'm out here sticking my neck out and you can't do this for me? Come on, bro. You, re you really going to do me like that? I've been taking, he like, man, I'm saying OG, but man, I, I can't do that. I'm not gay. He like, oh, Big Red, like, listen, man, I done told you already. Ain't nobody in here gay, man. Nobody. What I'm asking you to do is just a favor for a favor, man. Everybody do it all the time, man. So, dude, he just wearing, wearing Big Red wearing them down mentally. He just keep asking them and switching words up, playing these military mind games on so then dude finally give in. He like, all right, man, listen. Well, what, what you want me to do? What, 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 what I gotta do? So Big Red and due to, you know, YouTube laws and regulations, I'm not gonna say it. But Big Red told him like, you know, you need to go on the cell, man. You know, just do everything that he asked you to do. And he like, man, but I'm not gay. He said, man, stop saying that. It's not about that. He said, matter of fact, let's practice on each other. Now listen, y'all. I'm not gonna describe what happened, but what I'm gonna tell you all is this. Big Red and Lil Fella, we gonna call him Lil Fella, end up becoming intimate. They end up doing it, all right? Like, like going all the way doing it. So Big Red used, now pay attention y'all, for you cats this young that might end up in prison understanding the military mind games and the manipulation tactics that is at play right now. You got you, Big Red been locked up for years, okay? You see Big Red with cats that live in an alternative lifestyle and he pimping them. You know that for a fact, right? Big Red is giving you all type of Doritos, Fun yens, honey buns, hygiene, everything. And he ain't asking for nothing, right? And then when he finally asks you for something, it's a sexual favor to go do something. So now he got you. So now you came in here straight. And now your mind is twisted and bent. Because now big now you feel like you feel like you owe Big Red something. 
you owe Big Red something because he been hold you down. So this is the military mind games that I tell y'all about. And when people say, oh, yeah, it ain't no more booty bandits out here. That Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, that's true. But it's not true. It still happens when dudes that knock you out and take it. But this is the play that happens. They get you in debt. They, they know that you are very impressionable. You don't know nothing about this world. You don't know that the rules that apply in the penitentiary do not apply out in the real world. So when you when, when, when you are in a situation where a man such as Big Red, number one, he was a pimp out there in the streets. So he got the gift of gab. He know how to talk. He, he can talk, right? And then he show you all this love and all this and that. And then in the end, he manipulate you and you just sweet words and calm voice. Yeah. And then he tricked you out of your butt. And now you doing it now, now, now that that happened and you felt like, oh, I just gave up my manhood now. So now you, you going to just, what, what, what you, what do you, what are you not going to do now? You already did the ultimate sacrifice to yourself. So now when the doors pop and Big Red go holler at the dude that he owed something to and send you down there. What are you going to do? You're going to go down there and he just gonna, it's just going to get real crazy for you. So anyway, let's fast forward. So about two weeks after that, Big Red is steady sleeping with dude and pimping dude out, right? One day, Big Red is chilling in the day room and dude get on the phone talking to his mother. He telling her, she like, oh, how you been doing, baby? Cause this is first time talking to mama since he been locked up. Hey, hi, hi, baby, how you been doing? Are you safe? Are you okay? Yeah, ma, I'm in here good. I I'm good in here, ma. She like, okay, you safe? Yeah, ma, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm every, everything cool, ma. Okay, hey, ma, there's a guy in here that you know that been protecting me and hold me down. You know, he, he done showed me the words. He done showed me, you know, how to live in prison. You know, he like a, you know, he like the father figure in here to me. And she like, oh, okay. And he like, he like man, matter of fact, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm going to talk to him. Okay. Hey, Red, Big Red. Hey, this my mom's, man. Hey, come, come, come say hi to her. All right. Here she go. Big Red, get on the phone. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Where you from? Yeah, yeah, that's what they called me back in the day. Uh-huh. Oh, there's you. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, I remember you. How you been doing, girl? Okay. Okay. Oh. Huh. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Huh? What? You? What? No, 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 uh, no, uh, 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 no, uh, uh. Red dropped the phone and stormed off. Dude here and grabbed the phone like, my, what happened? What happened? <sighs> Let me tell y'all something. When Red got locked up, he got this woman pregnant. She was carrying his baby. He never met his son. Son, 18 years old. He done twisted and tangled his son. He done penetrated his own flesh and blood and pimped his son out. Big Red is on the phone and I just hear him like, oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. So I'm like, man, what the heck he, what the heck going on with Big Red? So I pop my head out the, out the cell to make sure, you know, when ain't no riot popping off. And I see him like by the phone and he like, no, oh, no. And I'm like, did, did somebody like hit him with, with the sword of justice or something? Like what's going on? So he dropped the phone and he just stormed off. And so his son of what I know now, his son, 
was like, what's up, Red? What's going on? What, what you say to my mom? And he like, man, hey, oh, oh, man, man, hey, get away from me. Get away from me, bro. Get away from me. And everybody looking like, man, what the heck going on? Like, what what did she say to him? Like, because at this point, y'all, we don't know what's going on at all. The only person that know what was said was Big Red and this woman on the other end. So... I'm like, okay, um, I mean, I don't know why Red out there wilding out like that. So two of his punks come over there to his cell, and he they like a soul to him. Now he like yelling at this point like, oh, man, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. And remember, his son is his cellmate also, but they won't let him in the cell. So at this time, one of the guards come over there like, Yo, what what's going on over here? And Red just wilding out. He like, man, get the F off my face, man. I need some time to think, man. Get the away from me. Get away from me. So the guard like, hey, you need to calm down, you know, escalating the situation. Now the guard clearly see that it wasn't no problem, wasn't no threat. He came over there to check on Red and see what the commotion was all about. He said there wasn't nothing going on. But y'all know how these CEOs do it. They always want to escalate stuff. So they like, well, you need to calm down, and we need to know what's going on, and all this and that. And Red basically snapped on him and jumped up and started walking towards the CEO while the two punks was holding him back. Like, no, nah, Red, don't do it, Red. Red, don't do it. And Red like, man, let me go. Let me go. So the CEO get on the, uh, the walkie-talkie and get the call in the code and telling us to lock down. And... Red trying to really get at the CEO because I guess he's taking his anger out on the CEO because the CEO wouldn't give him time to, you know, go through what he was going through. He kept pushing the issue. Now Red trying to get at him. So the two punks, Red punks, like was holding him back. They like, please, Red, don't do this, Red, Red, please don't do this, don't do this, Red. And Red just, you know, he calming down just a little bit and dude said like his son like man hey oh um, red what, what what happened what happened what, what, what's going on like what, what did my mom say to you and he red just steady just hollering and hooting like man this is so messed up well he didn't say messed up he said this is so effed up that's what he was saying but you know this youtube and i can't really cuss like that so he like yeah man man I, oh man I, I can't believe this this is so effed up man i can't believe this so, um, about five CEOs come in there, and they, you know, y'all know how they do it. They come in there with the um, all black on, with the let, with the um, steel toe boots, with the um, army fatigue stuff on. Y'all know how they, y'all know how they do it. So they come in there, tell Red to cuff up and all this and that. And Red like, man, I, why, why I gotta cuff up and all this and that? I ain't even do nothing all this. And they like, cuff up. We need to figure out what's going on. He's like, ain't nothing going on. Ain't nothing to figure out and all this and that. Right? So he eventually cuffed up and they let him out of there. Right? So we still on lockdown. So we like, man, what the heck going on? So we send a kite trying to see what happens. So the next day when we get off a of lockdown, Red still ain't there. They done roll him up. Matter of fact, they move all his stuff out. I guess they put him in solitary confinement and go move him to another part of the prison, whatever. So do get on the phone with his mama and boy, oh boy, this is where everything come out. So he get on the phone. He like, Hey ma, um, what, what what happened yesterday? You know, Red started wilding out. The mom was like, "Hey, let me let me ask you a question. You know, I never told you who your father was." He like, "Nah, I, yeah, you ain't never tell me. You, know, you never told me about my father." She was like, "Well, the guy that was on the phone, Red, th that's your dad." He like, "What?" Yeah, that, that's, that's your dad. That's your father. He like, ma, come on, man. Stop playing. Stop playing. She like, no, that is your father. He 
she like, well, I mean, you're in there, so now you'll be protected by him, you know. He, he'll have you back in there. Now you got somebody, you know, your father is in there. That's, that's your father. He went to prison when I, when I was born, when, when, when he got, he got me pregnant and he got sent to prison. So he never met you, but yeah, that's your father. He like, ma, please tell me that ain't true. That, that, that can't be true, ma. Tell me that ain't true. She like, yeah, well, why are you saying that though? Why you keep saying like that's a problem? He like, ma. Please tell me that is not true. She said, yes, son, that is, is true. Big Red is your father. So he said, hey, Ma, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call you back. I'm, she's like, what? what? What's going on? He said, Ma, let, let me just call you back. So he hang up the phone, and he's sitting still by the phone. He kind of like slouched down on the brick wall where the phone is at, and he just got his hands in, in his face like, you know, like, covering up so i'm looking at him another cat's looking like man what the heck is going on with well i mean red just wild out yesterday talking to this lady he, he wild out he done got put to the hole now his son you know what's up with this mama like what is she saying to these dudes for them to you know doing what they doing so one of the punks of red come over there and said you know like what what's going on with you man what what, what what's going on why red like what did your mama say to red or whatever he was like man man red is my father man and the gay guy that the punk was like what he like yeah man red man he he he, he my father the punk's like what you mean like like yo, your dad, like <clears throat> that's your blood daddy. He like, yeah, man. He, yeah, read re re my father, man. The punk was like, oh, oh, oh. So he like, yeah. Let me tell y'all something, right? I know this story is really, really hard to believe. I get it. I understand why y'all don't believe this story. But understand, this story is 100% real. I changed the names and I changed the location to protect the victim, which is Red Sun. You see, I don't want to, when I tell these stories, y'all, of course, a lot of these stories sound like they heavily embellished or stressed out. But anybody that been to the penitentiary, y'all know it's it it goes down. This what I, this the version that I'm giving y'all is PG thirteen. There's no way in heck you two would allow me to tell y'all these stories in this whole entirely. They will take my butt off this platform. And this is what I do, y'all. I am an entertainer. I am a master master storyteller. And I'm here to provide these stories to y'all. Now y'all might don't like me. Y'all might don't even like how I pronounce my words and tell these stories. If you don't like the way I tell these stories and how I do it, you can always watch somebody else. You know, you ain't got to stick around. But for the people that do enjoy these stories, this is for y'all. Okay, take what you need to take from it. Especially these young cats out here that be out here committing crimes. Jail, prison is not fun. There ain't nothing fun about it. There's there's nothing to there's nothing in prison that nobody should want. Nothing there but a bunch of dudes. And it's crazy in there. So like I said. There's a lot of demonic things that goes on in prison. Prison is like a world inside of a world. There ain't no rules. There ain't no laws. The inmates run it. There's a lot of military mind games that's going on in prison. A whole lot of them. Where there's a bunch of horny dudes that's trying to get with younger inmates and try to take advantage of them. We all heard that notion where cats 
uh, would knock out a younger inmate and then take him, right? That don't go on really. I mean, it goes on still, but it's rare that that happens now. You got cats out here where I tell y'all that's doing the slow con, like what Big Red did to his own son, which is wine and dine you and give you things that make you feel like, like they're protecting you. And then a month or two or three go by and they start coming on to you and trying to tell you to do certain things where other people are with them. And if you say no, they try to guilt trip you and try to play military mind games of saying, like, I've been protecting you all this time and you just going to not take care of me and all this and that. Who you think been protecting you all this time? And, you know, they try to guilt trip you to, you know, doing what they want to do to you. Right. And then you also got them cats that, you know, get you in debt and they tell you like, yo, um, he go three honey buns and he go a couple of summer sausages, you know, five items of commissary. And then you thinking they showing love to you. And then when it's commissary day, they say, yo, you got them 20, um, items. And you like 20, you only let me get five items. Nah, man, it's just my interest. And then he pull out that knife on you and like, yo, either you going to give me, you know, these 20 items or you going to have to give me something else. And that something else is, well, y'all know what this story all about. So don't ever think that you cannot be in this situation. Never understand this, man. Because you got to understand, you got convicts and you got jailbirds. Me? I'm going to be real, y'all. I was a jailbird. I wasn't no convict. I wasn't no convict. I was just cruising on through there. This was not my home. I was just a visitor, okay? It's a difference between a convict and a jailbird. Me, I was a jailbird. I could not stay out of the county. I was always in and out for stupid stuff, but I was never a convict, okay? So, again, y'all... If y'all was wondering, you know, how this whole thing went down, Big Red, like I said, he ended up getting transferred on the other side of the prison. He was in a hole for about a year for a while and now, and I guess he caught a couple of assault charges back then while he was in the hole. Because, I mean, I guess, see, the magnitude of what he did, you know, was weighing in on him. And, hey, it is what it is. He should have, hey, he was programming a certain way. And I guess his perversion caught up with him. All right, y'all. This is the third and last installment of Prison Pimp Big Red. Now, to give y'all a quick recap, Big Red is a pimp that got locked up. And when he got locked up, he kept pimping up in prison. He ended up having at least four dudes in his stable. And... A guy comes in, a young guy comes in at the age of 18 and Big Red end up sliding up on him and, well, he end up turning him out. Turns out that this 18-year-old guy that he just turned out is really his biological son. Talk about karma. Now, we about to get to the third installment. So now Big Red gets sent to the hole because he wilding out. He done fought with the guards and they done put him in a hole where he in a hole for six months. Now his son, he like, oh man, that's my dad. Oh, that's my dad. So his head all the way messed up. So I'm going to just go ahead and let y'all know what happened to the son. For about two weeks, he was going to counseling because his head was screwed up. But he said to himself one night, like, you know what? I ain't going to be able to live with this. I I'm just not. So he was contemplating on, y'all know what I mean. I can't say because YouTube algorithms are going to pick it up and they might block this video. But he was contemplating, you know, taking himself out with the sheet. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So the next day, he called his mama. And he told her, like, 
hey, Ma, I got to talk to you. She like, what is it, son? He like, Ma, you know Big Red? She like, yeah, that's your father. He said, yeah, Ma, I know. Um, well, not only he was protecting me in here and keeping me safe, safe but Mom, I I'm messed up. I'm like really messed up. And she like, what you mean you messed up? He like, Ma, I, I, I really don't want to tell you, but me and me and me and Red been messing around. And she like, what? What do you mean y'all was messing around? Red, Red is gay. He like, Ma, just j just listen. I'm I'm kind of really messed up inside about this, Ma, and I I don't I don't want to be here no more. And she was like, but listen, you you got you only got a couple more years, man. You got a couple more years, man. Just just hold on, just be strong. He like, nah, Ma, I ain't talking about being here in prison. Like I don't want to be here on this earth. And she like, son, listen, whatever happened, we can get through it. We can we can get through this together. He like, no, nah, my, I, I just, I, I gotta go, my, I, I love you. So she like, son, no, no, come back, don't, don't get off the phone, no, don't hang up, don't do nothing, don't do nothing. He hang up the phone. So then he go back to his cell, and he get this bed sheet, and well, y'all know exactly what happened. So just use y'all imagination. Y'all know what happened. So then when he actually did the deed, you got cats like, hey, 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 Dip, Dip. Hey, man, hey, this man trying to unalive himself. Hey, hey. So when he tied it around his neck and he jumped off his rack, he was dangling a little bit, but then he came up out of it. He didn't put the knot tight enough. So then he came up out of it. And so the deputies run in there and they snatched him up out of there. Put him on suicide watch. Now, that will be the last time that I will see that little dude. Right? Now, Big Red. Somehow, some way, Big Red, and I'm going to leave this article for y'all okay it's real important for y'all to click on this link that i put in the comment section or the description for the people that can't find it i'm going to give y'all a link to who big red is this is big red right here in the thumbnail the face that y'all are seeing is big red now big red unbeknownst to everybody everybody in the prison was from the united kingdom yeah the uk and big red got extradited yeah he got extradited to the uk and boy oh boy so big red was over there pimping before he got locked up yeah he was a pimp out there in the uk and guess what he was locked up for over there and got extradited for? Guess what it was? Big Red was spreading something. Yeah. Big Red was spreading something to women that you can't get rid of. You like, Dante, what the heck is you talking about? Oh, y'all want me to tell y'all what, what I'm talking about? Big Red was sentenced to 12 years at the age of 61 years old because he infected multiple women multiple women with something well y'all just gonna have to read the article because youtube gonna flag this video so i can't say certain things but yeah big red was 61 years old y'all and he got sentenced to the in in the uk prisons for 12 years for spreading something so he ain't getting out till he about 73 years old. Matter of fact, he might just succumb to what y'all going to read when y'all click on the description, what he got. But Big Red programming is, is crazy. It's crazy.
Now, as I think about it, every dude that was in there messing with big red punks, whew, that means they got it too. That means whatever big red, and y'all click on the link and y'all will see what he got. Whatever big red got, they got. And what they got, the boys got, the many men that was messing with them boys in there, they got it too. And here's the cold, here's the whole cold play about the whole setup. A lot of these men will get out of prison and get with women. And you see the cycle just keep going on. It just keep going on. Now I'm going to try to look at the face of Red. Look at Big Red. Look at him. That man right there is what you would call a demon. Yeah, a demon. Imagine how many lives that he done affected. Let's think about that. But then it's one of them things where the other people didn't have to indulge in these activities, right? They didn't have to sleep with them boys. But, hey, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. This is why I tell people, I know y'all don't like when I bring up the Bible, but hey, the wages of sin is death. God gave us these commandments and laws and regulations for a reason. Stop fornicating. Stop sleeping around. Stop being a whoremonger. Because this is the, the wages of sin is death. And, well, you out here sleeping with this person, that person. You see this beautiful woman at the club not knowing her boyfriend just came from the penitentiary and he been messing with them boys. Matter of fact, he been messing with one of Big Red boys. And you see her looking all good and you end up taking her to the hotel. Now you got it. And then you trace the whole thing back from you messing with the girl at the club, the girl from the club messing with um, the dude from the penitentiary. The dude from the penitentiary was messing with red boys, right? Red boys was messing around with red. Red already had that gift that keep on giving from his chicks out there in the UK. And the chicks from the UK that he was pimping get, got it from Whatever cats that they was messing with, you see how quickly that stuff spreads? But yeah, y'all keep on playing military mind games. Keep on playing games. It's like the hot potato. You keep on messing with these strange women and these strange people. You're going to get that hot potato. And when you get it, you got it. One of the things that's real crazy to me, y'all, let me know in the comment section if y'all think that people that knowingly spread certain things, should they get a life sentence in prison or what you think they should get? Because to me, that's like a death sentence right there. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoy my story time, y'all going to love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the cash app. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all. I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 PM Eastern time. Ladies, if you got a man at home that's out there providing for you and you decide that you want to get an itch that need to be scratched and you go step out on that man, well, this story is for you. And, well, go blue. Ah, shit. Here we go again. So, basically, this lady, her and her husband been married for a couple years now, and he was a truck driver. Now, he was on the road. 
five days on, two days off. You know, he had to do what he had to do to provide for her and his children or whatever. But he was a good dude. Like, he just stayed on the road all the time. And at first she was okay with it because she understand why he was on the road, you know, for the financial gain and, you know, the security and everything. But over time she just got bored. And she had voiced it to her friends, like, I'm really getting tired of him being on the road. I wish that they would um, change his schedule. But see, they couldn't change the schedule because he was a new truck driver. He was fresh out of the um, classes or whatever. So he had to take whatever route that they gave him. He had no choice. And she understood this when he presented it to her, the schedule. Like, this is all I can take. It's good money. I have to do this for the first couple years. Are you okay with it? She was okay with it when the money was coming in, but over time she noticed he ain't home. I got needs, you know, but what can I do? So while he was out, she'll, you know, take care of her mom duties and the house duties, but she'll still have her me time with her friends. And on this one particular day, she decided to go out to this jazz bar with one of her friends. So they was just there, just, you know, mingling and having a good time listening to the jazz music. And some guy decided that he wanted to make his way to her table. Now, he came to the table, introduced himself. Her friend, knowing that, you know, the person, the story I'm telling, is married. She like, yeah, you know, thanks for coming by or whatnot, but we're not interested. You know, I'm taking, she married, you know, whatever. But her friend, like, um... The girl I'm telling the story about, she like, girl, mm -mm, mind your, you, I got this, mind your business, you know, whatever, hey, I'm so-and-so. And her friend's just shaking her head like, I don't know if this is what you want to do, girl, but I'm going to let you be grown and let you do that. So she noticed the rest of the night at the jazz bar, the friend and dude sitting there getting well acquainted. And so the friend, she like, so, well, I'm finna head out because, you know, I don't want no purses. Do you want me to take you home or are you good? Girl, like, I'm good. I find myself home safely. Thanks for coming out, you know, with me or whatever. You have a good night. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So, friend leave. Married woman stay. She's still socializing and chatting it up with the guy. They getting well acquainted or whatever. They exchange numbers. That's day one. We fast forward. Husband home. He doing everything he you know supposed to do while he home. He catering to the wife. He hanging with the kids, bonding time, trying to fit in everything he can because he know he only got two days to do this. So he doing what he's supposed to do. It's just unfortunate. He's five days on, two days off, and now that the woman is secretly talking to old dude from the jazz club and texting him secretly and doing all this side conversation while husband on the road, that ain't even good enough no more. Now she complaining when he home. Like, mm, thanks for that, but uh, it ain't like it's going to last long. And, yeah, I mean, it ain't like you can't find enough. You need to look for another job and all this and all that. When uh, originally she knew what it was. He had to take what he had to take because he was new to the company, you know. So the husband on the road, he, like, just taking it all in with the wife been complaining about. He, like, you know what? I think I need to start spending more time at home. I am about to start looking for a new company or whatever because my wife don't deserve this, you know. She shouldn't have to take on the house and the kids by herself. I know I just started this company and I did it for financial gain and for, you know, stability and this, that, and the other, but it's messing up my marriage. I don't want to lose my wife behind this schedule. I don't want to miss my kids growing up, behind, you know, behind this schedule. Like, he was a good dude, you know. And so... He looked around, looked around, and by the grace of God, he found something. He put in an application. He took the job. Now he is on the road three days, on the road four days off. The wife is happy. So she didn't start a whole texting conversation, side conversation. She didn't went out on dates with dude. Everything is good. But now she has to break up with him because she's happy at home now with her husband. And dude flipped the script. He like, oh, I was good enough 
when your husband was on the road, but now you ain't got no time for me? Constantly texting her, constantly bothering her. Why you ain't responding? Why you ain't texting me? What's up? What's up? You was just with me the other night. We was just getting it in the other night. What's good? What's going on? And she's like, I'm sorry I wasted your time. It was good while it lasted. Thank you for providing what I needed in the time when my husband was on the road. But I just, I, I'm sorry I even pursued you. I'm just trying to make it work with my husband. He doesn't know about you. I would like to keep it that way. Just please understand. You know, I should I should have listened to my friend the first day you came to our table, but I was just lonely, blah, 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 blah. Thinking she could say everything for this man to understand that at that moment, that's all she wanted. But dude was not accepting that because he felt like you played me. I scratched your itch and now that your husband is home, I'm not good enough. So he went from texting her and calling her to somehow he found her home number. So now he's sitting there calling her home number, but it was just, like I said, it's something about that grace. He will always call at a time when the husband was in the shower or the husband was running to the grocery store. I didn't tell y'all that she even told me she had dude at the house while husband was on the road, sneaking him in when she put the kids to bed for school or just, you know, bedtime after baths. So he knew where she lived. So he was able to watch the house to see when the husband was coming and going and knew when to call. That's what I took it as. Because how he know when to call when the husband is stepping out to run to the grocery store or to the gas station to fill the cars up or something. So anyway, so now she on the phone like, please, just please, you got to stop this. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He like, no, you going to be sorry. You going to be sorry. And she like, what do you mean? It was good while it lasted. Just take it for what it was or whatever. Fast forward, fast forward, she changed her number, but she can't explain to her husband why she's changing her number. She's saying she's tired of scam likelies calling her and all these random calls she don't know. She just gave a good excuse and him being understanding and patient and kind, he just accepted that. But he said he couldn't change the house number because his job and doctor's office and stuff called a house. Dude was still calling the house. She she blocked him some kind of way. It wasn't enough. Fast forward. Dude got so frustrated with her passing him by, ignore him, that he sets her house on fire. Just to sum it all up, thank God she and her husband and kids was not there. She comes home, her house is on fire. She calls me in friend. He did it. He really did it. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. And I'm like, calm down, calm down. What's going on, girl? What's going on? And she like, he he said that I was gonna be sorry. He said I, he, I was gonna be sorry. I shouldn't play with people out here. I shouldn't be playing. I'ma learn from this. I'ma learn from this. I didn't know he would go this far. I don't know. The, and I said, Are you sure it was him? You sure you didn't leave the stove on? One of the kids accidentally bumped the owls because it's a gas stove. I mean, like, just are you sure? I know it was him. I know it was him. I know it was him. Fast forward, she she called the police. She explained what's going on. She happened to have um, records of like private calls and stuff like that, and she was saying that it was him. So the police was like, I don't know if it's enough, but I mean, it's showing a pattern leading up to the house getting caught on fire or whatever. So they she gave him the name. She gave him this information. She told the whole history of her affair and everything. Come to find out, this dude already had history of being an arsonist. So. Everything leading up to him from the day on, um, jazz club, text messages, calling her, sleeping with her, her trying to stop it. He did this before to somebody else. He didn't serve time for doing this. So I'm just going to sum it up, y'all. If y'all in a relationship, marriage, spouse, partner, whatever the case may be, and y'all got a good partner, I mean a really good partner, take time to talk to that partner Figure it out how it can work for both of y'all. Communicate. Have open communication. And don't try to figure out if the grass is greener on the other side. Because just like my homegirl I'm telling the story to, she found out the hard word that it definitely isn't. And with that, I am out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoy my story time, y'all going to love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the cash app. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. 
If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all. I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 PM Eastern time. I'm not going to say too much, but what I am going to say is this. Keep your hand to yourself. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. So it was this girl who was with this guy, and she was with this guy for some time. It was just a real toxic, drama-filled relationship. It was like they always was fighting, arguing, slashing his tires, busting out his mama windows. He dragging her out the front door. It's just, it got rough. Like it was a real deal fighting, arguing. But when you see them out, they laughing and look like the best relationship ever. But it was just like super toxic. And a lot of people would try to get the girl away from the dude, but she liked it. She liked that stuff. She used to always joke about it like, shoot, it's nothing because I be getting back with him. Or nine times out of ten, I hit him first. Or she would say, girl, that's the best, you know, love making afterwards. Shoot, shoot I, be, I be wanting him to hit me and do something just so we can spark the sex. Pause there. You shouldn't have to get beat on to get turned on. Right there shows trauma in itself. So you need your man to put his hands on you just for you to get turned on. Something is wrong with you and you need to dig deep and see what's the cause of that because it shouldn't even take all that for you to even want to be intimate with your dude. They always fighting, always into stuff. You got She got marks on her. I mean, battle wounds, it looked like, you know, like because they getting it in. And her friends, her family, everybody like, you know, I'm tired of this. I'm trying to girl you need to listen to me something gonna happen you need to leave that dude alone and she like y'all just hating y'all want what we got we just keep it spicy like y'all want this type of love and all this stuff and people like looking at her like she crazy because they like no no we do not why would we want to be fighting with our person he's supposed to be your peace you supposed to be his peace your confidant you know what i'm saying your best friend why? no i don't want that and she just she didn't take heed she was young she was dumb she thought it was cute she thought that, you know, uh, this is what everybody doing out here because she see it on the reality TV with the with the cheating and the drama and the multiple baby mamas. And she like, shoot, we I'm on that. This is just the hood edition, the street edition, the regular life edition because she ain't on TV. And she like I said, she was young and dumb. The fighting continuing, the baby mama drama continuing. She trying to, you know, get over on him. She cheating on him. He cheating on her. STD checkups. They take their meds, get back to it. It was just a never ending cycle. They eventually took it too far. They into it. They going hard, breaking stuff. They got kids now. Babies in the back crying. They doing all this in front of their kids, not caring that they is installing this in their daughter, showing this example of daddy beating on mama, mama fighting daddy. So this, the daughter go grow up thinking this is how a relationship is supposed to be because this is what they're showing her in front of her. You know what I'm saying? So they fighting, they arguing, it's getting crazy, screaming, all this going on or whatever. And so uncle, uncle just, he don't stay far but he just decided to check on his niece because he ain't seen her in a minute. And um, she like, uh, she she into it with the dude, uncle on his way over there. But in the midst of them fighting, she tell dude like, you know what, that's okay because I'm tired of this. You want to keep putting your hands on me, blah, 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 blah. I got something for you. I got something for you. So she decides to call her brothers. So she got two older brothers. Uncle already on the way, not for this specific you know, reason he just happened to want to check up on her because she know he knows that she in a toxic relationship. But not only is uncle coming, now her two brothers coming because she called her brother. He in the background like, call them blanks, call them. I don't give a care. I'll put my hands on them too. What's up? Call them, call them. So she calling them. They like, yeah, cause I've been waiting on this. I've been waiting. That's I've been waiting on this phone call. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. So now they on their way. They not far either. It just so happens they pull up when up pull up. Uncle like, hey, what's going on? Because they hype me. I'm about to get this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I've been waiting for this. It's time now. He about to see what it is for real. 
So they getting out the car, up getting hyped because he trying to match their energy, trying to figure out what's up. He like, yeah, she just called and he up in there putting his hands on, they up in there fighting. They, and Unc like, that's all he needed to hear because it's, it's been going on way too long. So they go up and they bust through the door. They snatch him up. Unc got him in the headlock. The other two brothers stomping him out. They really getting it in. And he fighting back at first. And then after a while, he just go loose. But they not knowing. Because the drill is pumping. All the fights and all the arguments and all the marks that they see on her. All the ignorance she talking about. This is love and this is how it's supposed to be. And everything they know she done went through and is going to go through in the future from this trauma. This, this toxic relationship. That's all they seeing while they whooping this dude's tail. And it's going on and on and on. And now at this point, she first she was like, yeah, get him, get him, get him, get him. But now she's like, hold on, wait a minute. I'm sorry for calling y'all. Get off of him, get off of him. Wait a minute, stop, please, please. But they ain't caring because in their eyes, they are protecting their sister. Unc is protecting his niece. They're doing what they feel they are supposed to be doing. And listen, sus, you call bros. Unc was checking on you because of your past trauma with this dude. He was just trying to see if you was good because he ain't heard from you for a while. But see, that's why I be telling y'all, don't, don't call them. Don't call them when it gets too much because you've been warned. Females, males, I'm sure somebody in y'all life who love y'all warned y'all to walk away. Get help some kind of way. Do whatever you have to do to get away from this toxic person because it can end badly. And in this case, it did end badly. They beat that dude down so bad that when they finally got off of him, they were still pumped up. Yeah, yeah, we got his A. High five and dapping it out. All of that just to stop and realize dude been dead, unlived. They didn't, uncle didn't have to hold on his neck while he, while the brothers stumping him out that he didn't broke his neck. He didn't even realize neck was broken. So they, they stumping on the dead person and not even realize he's not defending himself no more because he's gone. But they just so thinking about all the stuff that he didn't put their sister and niece through that they don't care that they hurting this man. They just felt like it's been time for this. You been was supposed to get this. Dude, you earned this. But they didn't they ain't mean to kill him. They was just trying to, you know, just trying to hurt him. Give them a little, if you keep doing this or if you don't leave our niece and our sister alone, this is what's going to happen next time. But guess what, y'all? It wasn't no next time. Sus, niece, same person, ended up calling the police. And guess who she told on? Them. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get over here, please. I need you to get over here, please. He dead. He gone. Ma'am, ma'am, calm down, please. Relax. What's going on? They killed him. They killed my boyfriend. My man is gone. I can't believe this. This is my kid's daddy. I can't believe this. And they like, wait a minute. Oh, I don't know. We was just trying to help her. He was beating her. No, y'all didn't have to do him like that. And they looking at her crazy because they was protecting her. But it don't matter. Because at the end of the day, she was going to be writing for her boyfriend. Who she been writing for. Who been beating her up. Who she been busting windows and slashing tires. And keep having kids with. And thinking it's cute. Because we the real life reality TV. The moral of the story is. If you are in this situation. And you in a toxic, damaging abusive and all forms of abusive relationship find your way out find a way to get out call people to help you get out but don't call them to beat your dude up your female up just knowing you go go back to that person don't put them in a situation that they could end up dead or in jail y'all take heed to what i'm saying because there's a lot of relations out here that is real like this uncles brothers cousins sons sisters because sisters will step up and fight dudes and fight girlfriends too mamas all of y'all don't get yourselves in that situation after y'all done told them to leave and with that y'all have a blessed one i'm out hey i'm dante if you enjoy my story time, y'all going to love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the cash app. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. 
If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all. I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 PM Eastern time. These women is for the streets. These women is for the streets. Let me know in the comment section, is it ever okay to put your hands on a woman? Now this story right here is about when Tar T ended up meeting a chick in Atlanta and he ended up bringing her to his house and well, it's about to get real crazy and dangerous. Let's get to it. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. So Tar T like, man, Dante, man, I need for you to come over here, dog. I need for you to come over here right now. I'm like, what's up, man? He like, man, I, man, this be cheating on me, man. This be cheating on me. I'm like, okay, like I like cheat. He like, no, if that man Dante come over here right now, then I heard, I hear a scream. I'm like, T, man, what is you doing? He was like, man, Dante, man, I need for you to come over here right now, man. So I'm like, all right, I'm on my way. Now, Taurus T stayed like right down the street from me, like literally down the street. So I hear you put my shirt on and throw my Timberlands. So I run out the house and I go right down the street and I hear the screams. I hear B, B, you cheating on me? You gonna suck this dude D? And all I'm like, so I, I bust up on the door. I'm like, hey, I'm banging on the door because it's locked. So he opened the door. His girl is sitting on the couch with a bloody nose and it's like her eye is puffy and he's standing there with his shirt off. I'm like, what's up? He like, man, Dante, get this B up out my house, dog. Get this B up out my house. I'm like, what's going on? He like, man, I'm going through this girl phone and she just sucked some dude D in front of my house, dog. When I was not, I was drunk last night. I'm like, wait, wait, slow down, slow down. He like, man, listen, last night she called me to come over here, right? I'm like, yeah. So when, when she come over here, you know, she telling me she want to do this and she want to do that with me and. You know, I'm like, all right, bet. So after we get done doing what we do, you know, I fall asleep because I was drinking. And when I wake up, she ain't nowhere to be found. Why? I look outside and she's sitting in a car with some dude. I'm like, okay. And, he, and so now it's like, I'm like, man, who the heck is that? So when I open the door, she had to get out the car and the car take off. So I'm like, man, who is that? And she talking about oh that's just my friend and okay if that's your friend why did why did he put off like that so i'm like okay so he like so we get in the house and you know we just arguing back and forth just bickering and i just say forget it because you know i'm drunk at this time so i just go back to sleep so while i wake up and you know she in the bathroom and i just look through her phone and i see that this dude talking about come outside so you can blah 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 and this girl and gave this dude my address and everything, bro. So yeah, man. This so at this time he walking towards her and trying to hit her. So I'm like, oh, hold on. Now remember, y'all. Tall T like six nine, six six eight, six six eight six nine, maybe two ten, right? And Dante at this time is five eleven, maybe one ninety eight at best. Right. So I instantly like get right in between him and her because he trying to like really get at her. I'm like, I'm like, T, man, what is you doing? He like, no, man, this B need to get out of my house. I'm like, dude, she ain't got no. Now, listen, y'all, this girl only had a sports bra on and some panties. So he trying to throw her, throw her up out the crib. And I'm like, dude, what is you doing? He, he like, no, man, she got to go. She got to go. She got to get up on my house. And she was like, I need my clothes. He like, I ain't giving you nothing. I bought them. I bought that stuff. You ain't getting nothing. Them shoes, I bought that. Them pants, I bought that. Right? So I'm looking at the chick, and this is not Tar T main girl. Like, this is not his girlfriend. Matter of fact, I never seen this chick before. So I'm looking at her. I'm like, who, who? I like, man, come here. So I kind of muscled him out, muscle him out the house. I said, T, who, who is that chick? He said, man, it's some chick I met, man. I'm, I'm like, 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 is she like a jump off or is she like one of your girl girls? He like, nah, man, only knew her for a week, bro. But that ain't the point. I said, come on, T, come on, dog. You done hit this chick and 
what I was, man now that ain't the point man i done bought this girl these, these clothes and these shoes and she up there sucking on other dudes man while i'm asleep man no man no man she gotta go i said tall t dog Man, you don't, this ain't your main chick, man. That girl is for the streets, man. Why you, why would you gonna get mad at her? Because, I mean, I, I get it, I get it, I get it. She had no business giving this dude your address and going out there doing what she did. But you don't know her. This is Atlanta, dude. This is the A-Town, man. You know how these girls is. Man, I know they ain't the point, bro. Anyway, bro, she, she getting up out my house. I said, listen, check this out. Just let her get her pants on and give her shoes and let that just be it, bro. He like, nah, bro, no, nah, man. No, nah, I ain't doing that. I said, listen, T, man, you cannot send this girl out here and her panties in a, in a sports bra, bro. You can't do that, man. He like, man, F that, man, F that. No, that B got to go. That B got to go. I said, listen, T, look, let me let me go in here and go, what you got to go in here and talk to her about, bro? What you got to say to her? Ain't nothing you can say to got to go. In the comment section, let me know am I'm wrong, okay? And when I say am I'm wrong, it's because at least he should let her get her shoes and her pants on before he kick her out. Or or Dante need to just shut up. Let me know in the comment section, all right? So I'm like, bro, let me just go in here and talk to her right quick. He like, nah, nah, shawty, she ain't, no, nah, I ain't going for it. I ain't going up. She, she leaving out of here, man. Anything that I bought this chick, I said, wait, I mean, I said, look, man. You got to be reasonable, dog. I mean, come on, where's she going to go? The dang train station is a, what, uh, 30, 40 minutes away? The next bus stop is 15 minutes away? Come on, man. You can't you can't do that, man. What about, he like, no, man, she should have thought about that. She should have thought about that. I'm like, listen, T, I, you, uh, dog, I, I can't tell you what to do, and I ain't even about to. He like, man, watch out. So he like rushed past me and like kind of slung me to the side. He ran back in the house. And I ran after him. He like, man, get out my mother effing house. So he got to grab me. So I grabbed him. And he like, man, Dante, let me go. Let me go. So I got him like on the side and got his arm locked. And he basically then swung me and like kind of slung me. I done failed to hit the couch and I done jumped up. I like, Tar T, listen, I ain't trying to fight you, bro. He done pulled up his pants and everything. Like, Dante, Dante, you my guy. You my guy, but I'm telling you, dog, you better move. You better move. I'm like, T, I'm not about to let you hit this girl, dog. He like, man, I'm not trying to hit that folk. I'm not trying to hit that folk. Listen. This girl going to get out of my house, dog, and you ain't about to. So he like, man, I ain't about to explain nothing to my house. So he, so me and him, <laughs> now y'all know when you don't want to fight, right? When you, when you get into it with your partner, right? And y'all don't really want to fight. So y'all like holding back, but y'all wrestling like that. So me and him was basically extreme wrestling, but he was getting a better of me because Tar T is way taller than me and he had me about 30 40 pounds right so i'm trying my best to you know do what i do with this dude but he dude will lift me off my feet a couple of times <laughs> so the girl like okay i'ma leave i'ma leave so he like yeah get out my house beat get out my house so she leave out the house now this listen y'all this girl is literally in her bra and panties sitting on the porch talking about oh this is so messed up this is so wrong this is so wrong how you gonna do me like that so he like i don't give a man you can just go just go get get on b get on b at this time other people coming outside people in the whole heard the commotions now if anybody is from coverton georgia y'all know um and okay in settlers grove where i stayed at it's a cul-de-sac and what we caught was the drive so on the drive i stayed at the bottom of the hill and tortillas stayed like on the right side of the bottom of the hill right so when you go down there it's like maybe maybe 12 houses that line the street up so everybody hearing this and people coming out. So you see this chick in her bra and panties crying and walking up the street. And this older lady was like, come here, baby. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. And I guess she brought her in her house. And Tarty got the wild and out. He, he like ran up the street like, no, uh-uh. Miss Jones, no, uh. Let, tell that bee to come out. Don't bring that bee in that house, Miss Jones. Now, this is what Tarty was dead wrong at, okay? The chick is, I get it. I get it. 
you know, you know, brought the chick to, to your house, you know, bought her some clothes or whatever. I'm not justifying what he's doing. Trust me, y'all. I'm not justifying what Tar T is doing. But, uh, but, but it's like, dog, she off from under you now. She not in your house. You can't dictate who take this girl in and try to, you know, get her where she need to go. So Tar T banging on Miss Jones' door. Talking about, no, oh, Miss Jones, tell that B to come out, man. Let, man, let, bring that B back out, man. Let her walk. Let, let her go. Miss Jones and they're like, T, I'm going to call the cops. I'm going to call the cops, T. He like, man, that's messed up, Miss Jones. Man, man, you don't know what she did to me. She don't need to. I'm like, Tar T, come on, man. Let's go. So then my cousin Derek, he come from around the corner. Because every time we all hear commotions like that, you know, everybody run into a fight. So my dear, my cousin Derek and Randy, they come around the corner. Like, like, like D, what's up? What's going on? So I'm like, man, Tar T tripping on this chick, man. He like, oh, man, that's his girl. I'm like, no, that ain't his girl. Some chick that he met at the mall or something. And she, he wilding out on the girl done. Brought some dude to the crib, and she went down on him in the car last night. And, psh, man, Tarty, he, he was like, oh, what the, I, well, shoot, it is what it is, shoot, if that be. I was like, psh, man, I mean, he done put hands on the two. He, they like, okay, and so what? She should have never did what she did. I'm like, man, all right. So then Miss Jones like, y'all need to get away from my house. Y'all ain't coming here, Tarty. Tarty is the only one that's trying to, like, really get the girl out of Miss Jones' house. Right. So Miss Jones like, I'm I'm gonna call the police. I'm calling the police. So they argue back and forth. Miss Jones get on the phone. She called the police. Tar T like, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere till she leave out this neighborhood. Right. So I'm like, man, T, let's go, man. Let's go. He like, man, Dante, I ain't scared of jail, bruh. I ain't scared of jail, bruh. This B no, nah, man. She no, nah, uh-uh. No, nah, bruh. This B gonna pay. She gonna learn, dog. I'm like, man, T, I, right, I'm gone. So I hear the sirens in the distance. So I'm like, man, I'm gone. So I go down to my house, right? So then my chick at the time, she called me. She like, Dante, what, what you got going on out there? I'm like, man, that ain't me, man. That's Tar T. She was like, oh, okay. Cause you know, I looked out the window cause at the time my girl, she was braiding hair and she was like one of the coldest braiders out there. And she said she looked out the window and seen some half naked chick running down the street and here go me and here go Tar T. So she was like, what the heck? So I guess I had like four missed calls. So, and she like, oh, okay. I was just making sure you weren't out there doing something crazy. I'm like, nah, that ain't me. That's Tar T. She like, oh, okay. So she like, hey, um, come up here right quick. So I come up there. She was like, what, so what's going on? I said, okay, so Tar T ended up meeting some chick from, from the A, right from the city. And um, I guess he bought her some clothes or something. And I guess she spent the night with him. But some some at some point of that night, you know, she ended up calling some dude over there. And she ended up, you know, going down on him and she was like what i said yeah she ended up going down on him in the car and tall t i guess he caught him and they got to argue and he went to sleep because you know when, when t drink you know he fall asleep he said he woke up went through her phone and you know he, he ended up putting hands on her she was like oh okay i said yeah that's why he had miss jump she had miss jump she the girl at miss jones house now miss jones done bought her in the house and trying to protect her with over tar t over there wilding out so she like yeah t he, he'll be going to jail i say yeah i know she was like well you need to stay out of that i said yeah i'm done i'm, I'm done and she was like you bleed and i'm like what you mean i'm bleeding she was like look you bleeding on your elbow i'm like oh. now this is why i don't get into people mess y'all because i done got a dang carpet barn from me and tar t wrestling you know what I'm saying? That's why I said I didn't even know it. And as soon as she, I guess my adrenaline was pumping, I didn't know it. But, man, I had a real deal carpet bone on my goddamn elbow because me and this dude wrestling. And I didn't even notice. Right? And, but when she said and pointed out, I so felt every bit much of that sting, though, for real. So she was like, hold on, come in. I got, you, you got to clean that off. So I'm like, all right. So she put that, ac man, listen. Whew, that alcohol ain't no joke. She got to put that alcohol on me and put that band-aid. Oh, man, I had tears in my eyes, y'all. You ever put alcohol on an open wound? Ooh, 
<laughs> yeah, so eventually the cops pull up, two man patrol come through. They like, what's going on? Miss Jones, like, he need to get away from my house. And Todd T like, man, hey man, look, I don't care about going to jail. I don't care about going to jail, Shawty. And and guess what? Todd T ass went to jail too. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoy my story time, y'all gonna love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the Cash App. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You know, I always say, why have enemies when you got friends and family? I'm gonna say that one more time, just in case y'all didn't catch that. Why have enemies when you have friends and family? So today's story is about um, a friend of mine. She told me to tell her story. She liked how I delivered um, another friend, past friend story. So here we go. She said she was in college and she um, was real cool with this one girl who had this friend, and we gonna say friend, who was really interested in my friend, but she was just trying to focus on school. She wasn't trying to get in a relationship. Is your friend a guy or girl? She's a girl, it's a girl. So they was like lesbians? No, okay, so I had a friend who I'm telling a story for. Okay. She had a friend, I don't know this friend. Okay. But then that friend had a male friend oh. who was interested in my friend. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah back to the story and my friend the girl she she didn't want to talk to nobody but this male just kept on pressing the friend like I really want to holler at your girl I really want to talk to her she seems so cool just put in a good word for him put in a good word for him mm -hmm. so I guess over time she gave in because the girl kept saying he good he a really good dude you know you ain't gonna hear nothing bad about him you should give him a chance just you know go on a date with him find out what he about or whatever so she took the chance, they exchanged numbers, they went on a date. One date turned to two, two turned to whatever, and now they're dating. Mm. And everything in the beginning was really good, you know what I'm saying? He was whining and dining her, saying everything right, you know what they do, wolves and sheep clothing, you know, put on a good face in the beginning. But then she started noticing, he started getting easily irritated by little things, you know what I'm saying? Like, say she had cooked for him when in the beginning he loved her cooking. But now I was like, dang, you could have added a little more seasoning. Did you really have to use this plate? You know I like the other plate, like stupid stuff, like real little silly stuff. So she would go to her friend and she would be like, girl, I think something off about him. I mean, he wasn't showing this behavior in the beginning, but now he just like every little thing is making him flip the script. The friend like, girl, no, he just probably had a bad day at work or one of his boys probably upset him. He ain't really, he ain't like that. You should continue to give him a chance, you know. You know, he, he just a man that just had a bad day. You know how they be doing. So she like, okay, whatever, whatever. And so she like, I'm not even going to read it for what I'm thinking. I'm just going to let him have his bad day, give him some space, leave him alone when he irritable or whatever. But then it went to little stuff like, um, she would be talking to him and he would ask her like, do you even know what that word mean? And throw a dictionary at her. Dang, that's really belittling her. Yeah, making her, make, making her feel like she's stupid. And it got to the point where like she, he was doing this in front of his friends. Oh, like she no. telling me like his friends will be coming to her behind his back like, you know, you shouldn't have to take that. Like, you know, Dang. you know, why are you even dealing with that? He don't deserve you, stuff like that. But she started looking at it like maybe his friends is just hating. Dang. So she would go back to the friend and be like, girl, like, he he really tripping. Like, the other day we having a conversation and um, we just having a simple conversation and I said a word and he like, do you even know what that means? And threw a dictionary at me. And the, my, my friend, her friend, started laughing. 
and she like girl you know he crazy you know he be just doing little stuff like that he just be playing now my friend is telling me that she looking at her home girl sideways like how is this funny like where is the joke how did you get any you know laughter out of this mm -hmm. that made me feel low that he thought I wasn't intelligent enough to use a word and know what it mean but then again she like okay maybe I'm tripping and when she telling me this story I'm starting to see a pattern like this dude is wearing down on her own you know mental making her feel like she ain't smart enough making her feel like she ain't good enough because he's tripping on a plate you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying or how she's seasoning her chicken or whatever and so I'm listening to her and I'm like okay 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 so then she, I was like, did you talk to your mama? And she like, yeah, I talked to my mama about the situation. And my mama told me leave him alone before he started putting his hands on me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, being young and dumb, I'm like, my mama hating too. She don't know nothing. She said she should have listened. Yeah. So fast forward, for some reason, she's still messing with this dude. I don't know. Still going back to the same friend that's sitting there encouraging her to stay with the dude. And now here we are, this dude is starting to put his hands on her, but he doing it little by little. Like she said that he had hit her in the forehead. Like, girl, shut up. You like, know what I'm like, saying? Like a pop. Yeah. Like like like, pop. like you pop like you popping your child. Oh, like, girl, yeah. shut up. You know what I'm saying? Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And she like, she said she'll fight back. She said she was pop his hand, like, boy, you need to chill out and all this stuff like that. But then she said that over time that he escalated, it'd go to like her him punching her in the chest. Or wrapping his arm around her neck and like you better stop playing with me i ain't having a good day and then she'll go back to that same friend and be like right, enough is enough with this i can't stay with this this man is crazy he already popping me and choking me and stuff like that and the girl like is but is he beating your a for real wow. like is he really hurting you though girl you better hit his a back and i'm telling my friend like that ain't your friend like you sure this girl don't want your dude who is going to encourage your friend to stay with a dude that's first? Like, I mean, I know dudes have bad days and they, you know, be irritable or whatever. I'm not going to, you know, take that away from him. But, I mean, he going, he's he's insulting your intelligence. He making you feel small. He embarrassing you in front of his friends. And now he thumping you, hitting you on the head and, and took it up and not putting you in a, in a headlock or whatever. <laughs> wow. Choking you out or whatever. Why is you still with him? She said because every time she threatened to leave him and was fighting him back he was threatening like I, if i can't have you nobody can you really want to be the reason i yada 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 you, you know what i'm trying to say because yeah. i can't say it on again you want to be the reason i do that it's gonna be your fault it's gonna be your fault and she couldn't have that on her heart if he actually took it to that you know dudes audience dudes and females play that game they they beat you down they make you feel low make you feel like nobody else wants you and then when you get the confidence to leave them they make you feel like you can't because if they happen to do something to themselves it's your fault don't fall for that like i told my friend don't fall for that that was a conscious choice that they made if they decide to do that to themselves that was them doing that to themselves you did not cause that yeah that's a military mind game right there Basically, if it was me, I'd be like, okay, oh, you want to do something to yourself to take yourself out, out of here? Here, what you need help with? You need to rope? What you need? You need uh, you need for me to go to, to Walmart and get you ingredients? What do you need so I can help you fast track this, okay? And that's what I was telling her. Like, girl, he is trying to use that on your mental and make you feel like you have to stay with him. He already making you feel like you ain't good enough for nobody else. He the best thing you ever had. I have about me the type of person that i am i like to install confidence encouragement of lift women and men around me and i'm telling her girl you don't need this know your worth like what is what is up well he keeps saying if i if i and if he do that that's better for the world that's better for the environment if he decides to take his stuff that's better for the next woman shoot let him let him do that shoot i'm you know and so i'm like and you need to start watching your friend the one that keep encouraging you to stay with this man the one that talked you into being with him so fast forward fast forward she finally got the encouragement and the i guess the confidence to leave him mm -hmm. she she left him 
he was messing with her a little bit, you know, sending her messages like, if I can't have you, nobody can, you know, popping up at her door and stuff. And she like, no, nah, you better leave me alone. I'm not playing with you. She was smart enough to get Mace, register herself a gun, show him the gun and let him know I'm on that type of time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like she wasn't, I, I guess she was listening to me about my past stories, about my past stalking or whatever, that you got to be ready. Because these dudes, is, they ain't taking no for an answer. Be ready. And so he left her alone, but then, you know, her when she left him alone, her friend disappeared. Uh. I'm like, where was your friend at who was encouraging you to be with him? Why she ain't there with you in, in your downtime to lift you up like, girl, I'm sorry or anything? She said she just went ghost. Stop answering the phone. Stop, you know what I'm saying, returning text messages. It's like when she, you know, not divorced, but when she left dude, friend left her. So she said, um, what, she was out at a party. She go to a party. Why do a homegirl together, like, hugged up, but when she walked through the door and noticed her friend walking through the door, she, like, scoot over, like, push him over. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and what did you do? She like, I just, that just right there verified everything I, that you were saying, that I already was kind of suspecting after you mentioned it to me that they was together. That, but I'm like, I still cannot wrap my, my head around why was she trying to get you to talk to him? Like she, if she wanted him in the first place. That part to this day still didn't make no sense. It came to find out that he was talking her into talking to, to the friend, knowing the kind of man he was. Uh -huh. I don't even know if he was beating on... I mean, can I say beating? Yeah. I don't even know if he was beating on um, homegirl and belittling with her and stuff, but she was okay with him doing that to her friend. Mm. They had a whole relationship based off of what my friend was telling me. They had a whole relationship secretly from them two, but I guess she was the punching bag. Girl didn't ever like her anyway, and she was jealous that her man wanted her, but she didn't want to leave, dude. Uh -huh. So she had the mentality that long as you come home at night. Oh, man. I know you like my friend. You can have my friend, but you better not treat her better than me. Hey, people in the comment section, now I'm really talking to the ladies. Um, do do y'all have a friend like that, that, you know, that y'all have girl talking, you know that her man is cheating on her, and she like, listen, it ain't, the, the, the dating pool is toxic right now, and you know, it ain't really no good men out there, so I just deal with what I deal with. As long as he don't bring me nothing home, we good. Do y'all got uh, people out there that uh, got friends or family members that y'all know that's like that? Let me know in the comment section. So, Alicia, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about that? Let me ask you that about what I just asked the audience. How do you feel about that? I would have to say, first, I'm thankful that my friend got out of that toxic situation uh -huh. like she over there she's still doing her thing you know in school and she she great and i'm so happy she just exited stage left and found the strength to let that go okay i'm sorry that she even had this person i'm not even gonna call it a friend this person in her life bringing that mess into her life mm. she knew that dude wasn't no good he wasn't no good to her because he was sitting there trying to talk to her friend and the girl mm -hmm. she She's shady, first off, for even uh, just agreeing to that. But at the same time, I pity her. I feel sorry for her. Your self-esteem is so low that you okay with your man being interested in your friend and then you even giving him side points like, but you better not treat her better than me. Wow. Like, that, what kind of female does that? That sounds like insanity. It's, <laughs> right this there. is a true story. And it's, girls, this ain't the first time I ever heard of... A, a best friend or a close friend, quote unquote, encouraging her friend to stay with a sorry dude. I always say, why have enemies when you got friends? No, for real. Like, besides this story, I have heard this before. People that came to me in confidence telling me, like, yeah, and she telling me to stay with him, lose her. Forget her, unfriend her, block her, because that ain't your friend. I'm not going to tell my best friend to stay with a dude that's dogging her. Baby girl, you are the prize. Or, do you the prize. Leave her alone. Because, you know, males be going through stuff, too. I'm not about to encourage nobody to be with somebody that make them feel less than. Mm. Know your worth, people. Y'all the prize. Y'all the jewel. No, nah, don't you let nobody make you feel like you garbage, that you trash, that you a doormat, that you a punching bag. Because you not. You a king, queen. You are greatness. And don't feel like you worth garbage, as people be trying to make people feel out here in these streets. And with that... 
through to the sake of time, y'all. That is Alicia Norwood. And we out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoy my story time, y'all going to love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the cash app. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Ooh, we we got another crazy story for y'all. This story is about Alicia Norwood telling us how her grown boyfriend was courting a 16 year old. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. All right, so um, I was dating this guy. His name was Joseph, but everybody called him Jay. And he was real popular. Like, everybody knew him, thought he was real cool. I eventually stopped talking to him because... I found out he was interested in teenagers, specifically this 16 year old girl that he used to call his little sister. Now, mind you, I thought this was his real sister because she was always with us. Like, I thought it was weird that every time me and him got together, this girl was always with us. But I didn't trip because I'm like, what if they just got a really close relationship? You know, big bro, little sis. So, you know, I just I didn't I didn't say nothing about it. The more into our relationship. It just seemed like every time we had like a date night or um, was just out and about at the mall, at the park, walking around downtown, he would say, let me go pick up my little sister. And I'm like, um, can we just have our time this time or whatever? Like every time we, you know, is out and about, you go pick her up and he, he'll get mad, like offended. Like you got something against my little sister or something. And I'm like, no, it's not that. I just think it's kind of like weird and i you know i ain't trying to insult him or nothing but it was weird like every time we get together why is she with us it i mean tell me you know more about your little sister do she not have friends um do she like got an issue that you just got to be around her to protect her like explain to me why she always has to be the third wheel that's like if every time me and him got together i decided to invite my little brother. It just didn't make no sense. Little bro can ride with us sometimes, but you're not about to be with us every time me and Joe is on a date. No. So fast forward, we in this relationship, she's still coming with us and he's still complaining. And I just happened to voice, you know, my concerns to one of my homegirls, like, girl, every time me and Joe together, he always inviting his little sister. And like I said, he is popular. So they like little sister. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I met his family and they even called her little sis. But I'm just trying to figure out why every time we out and about or going somewhere, she has to come. Like she's always the third wheel and she never invites somebody else. It's not her and her friend, her and her dude. It's her, me and Joe. So my home girl, like, girl, I don't know. I ain't never known him to have no little sister. I mean, I know he had cousins he grew up with or whatever, and he got um some other brothers that's real cool, but I don't think he got no sister. And I'm like, you sure? Because everybody he introduced me to within this year and some change, so we just rounded up to two year relationship, said that was his little sister. And they like, she like, no, 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 let me call so and so, and I'm about to get this information for you because I don't think that Negro got no sisters. So she called so-and-so and she put them on speaker and she like, hey, girl, what's up? You know, how your day? Blah, 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 yada, yada. Hey, let me ask you something real quick. You know, Joseph. Yeah, tall Joseph. Handsome. Yeah, everybody know him real cool. Everybody call him Joe. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Do he got a little sister? And girl on speaker like, no, nah, he ain't got no sisters. She like, are you sure he ain't got no sisters? Like, like, no, nah, but it's this girl he always with when I see him. Like, they be in a car together, and I didn't see them out to eat a couple times. So, like, she look hella young. Like, I don't I don't think that's his sister, how they be, like, close and stuff. And my, my homegirl, like, what you trying to say? Like, 
how close like is it like close like brotherly sisterly close mentor close or it could be in a relationship close and girl on speaker like no nah, i think he messing with that little girl like for a minute it's been whispers in the streets anyway that he liked little girls like she like little girls and i'm like little girls and she like yeah like teenagers like he be sitting there like grooming them and stuff like checking them out whistling at them all kind of weird stuff when he with his homeboys crazy part y'all i have never seen any of this behavior other than you know girl going with us on trips and and dates and stuff like so anyway i'm like oh hey no i'm gonna have to confront him about this because once i sat and thought about it i'm like that kind of makes some sense though like he always subtly would compare me to her like yeah um i i like this outfit on you you know my little sister she um she know how to dress and she really be looking nice in this blah 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 and I'm like, yeah, that's her style, but that ain't mine. But I think he'll be like, but I think you should just try it out. Let's see how you look with this hair color. Let's see how you look with this outfit. And I, you know, I wanted to please him, but at the same time, I'm like, that's weird that you want me to look like your little sister. But every time I bring it up, he'll get offended. And I felt like I ain't had no reason to question that it wasn't his sister because his people was telling me she was whole time fast forward y'all he was in a relationship with this 16 year old girl like the whole time me and him was together they were together he was grooming her like i heard later that she was running tricks for him like he was putting his hands on her i never seen none of these signs when we was together all right so now i want you to tell me about when you actually like the whole epic soul that the epic center of this whole story of you catching this dude and confronting him like really confronting him about what was going on like walk me through that day like the morning like when you woke up what happened okay so i woke up and i was already like i had it on my mind from the day before my friend calling her friend and she's saying he ain't got no little sister so i'm feeling played now because all of his friends and family let you know they've been telling me this is his little sister okay so i'm at my house we don't stay together mm. so i call him over to the house he comes to the house and he acting like everything is good or whatever hey baby try to give me a kiss and i'm like hey hold on because i got to talk to you about something he like what what's up um so yeah i heard that trina is not your little sister Okay. I heard that she is actually your little girlfriend. Oh. And so he's starting to get mad. Like, what you mean? What you trying to say about me? That's a teenager. That's the whole teenager. That's my little sister. I said, though, that's not what the streets are saying. Uh. So we sit in there going, I mean, we going at it. And I'm mad because I'm feeling like, dude, you got me looking silly out here. Every time we're together, she with us. And that's your whole other girlfriend. Mind you, she's a teenager. Mm. So that look crazy as hell, even on my part, because it looks like I'm in a relationship with a teenager and my dude. Mm. So he... He, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. I need to cool off before I do something, before you make me get crazy, blah, blah, blah. So he leave the house, he go to the corner store, and he comes back. He comes back with a big old can or whatever it is. It's, it's alcohol, so he drinking. Yeah, you tripping, you tripping. That's my little sister. My brothers and all of them already told you that's my little sister. So at this point, he's drunk. Uh -huh. His phone goes off. It's going off. Bling, 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 bling. I said, you going to get that? You go, You go check that? Oh, don't worry about it. It's just my job. I was just coming over to here to say bye to you before you go to work. They just wondering where I'm at. Still drinking. So I, I know he's lying because he's getting drunk. So you telling me you about to get, you going to go to work drunk? It doesn't make any sense. But I'm just letting him, you know, pop off. Go ahead. You got it. So he drinking. We still going at it because I'm not convinced this is his little sister. So he's mad. He's offended at this point. He storms off, but he forgets his phone. Oh. Now, we've been together long enough, and I didn't look over that shoulder long enough to know his password. <laughs> so the phone happens to go off again. Bling, 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 bling. I just picked the phone up, and I opened the phone. It's Trina, his 16-year-old little sister, quote, mm. unquote. And she like, baby, where you at? Er, baby? Mm. I'm like, what? I just happened to go through their messages, and I'm like, hold on. Let me just do some further investigation. So I'm going through the messages or whatever, and I start seeing, like, new pictures, all, D pictures he's sending her. Oh. All kind of weird, just P 
pedophile mess. Oh man! So I'm pissed at this point. So I'm getting in my car like, no, I'm motherfucker. You gotta, you you got to show me some what's going on with this. You got some explaining to do. So mm. I'm happy. I get in the car. My first mind is not even on work. I'm calling my job like, I, I it's a family emergency. I can't come in. I'm trying to think of whatever to get me off of work. And they like, you good? See you tomorrow. You know, yeah, yeah. So I make my way to his house. I go to his house. I'm banging on the door. He like, hold on, hold on, hold on. As soon as I get there, he opens the door. Why is she there? Oh. With barely any clothes on looking scared as hell. Dang. So I'm like, oh, hell no. My first uh -oh. thought is to fight, but I'm fighting him because she's still a minor. Mm. If I pop off at her, I could go to jail. Uh, yeah. So at this point, I'm grabbing whatever club because he's taller, he's bigger than me. You know, he probably could have really hurt me. But I'm mad, so I'm grabbing everything in my sight, hitting him. When you a liar, you got me out here looking like a fool. You sitting there telling me this girl is your sister, your family back in your day. They shady too, and we fighting. At this point, I'm so loud and stuff getting broke. He trying to defend his baby. No, it ain't what it looked like. It ain't. What it ain't it what like. it looked yeah, like. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. It ain't that. It ain't that. Cause you a grown ass. You can I say ass? No, no. You actually due to YouTube policies, you gotta really tone down on the cussing. You a grown man messing with a 16 year old. All the stuff I've been hearing in the street was the truth. You sitting there. She a victim. You sitting here grooming her. You got her out here running tricks. You beating on her. I ain't beat on this girl. That's nothing you say right now at this point is the truth because she's here mm. half naked. And then you you so stupid. You left your phone and it, I know your dang own password. Mm. I see all the news, all the D pics. Oh. You a pedophile. Oh. You a whole child molester. Oh. So I'm going off and I'm loud and breaking stuff and all. And all two years of my life I wasted with your child molesting. You know it got crazy. Uh -huh. And then the police got called. Oh, who called the police? The neighbors. Because okay. he stayed in an apartment. So, okay. I mean, over time, with me breaking stuff and cussing and loud and little girls. Somebody like, called the police. Screaming. Somebody called the police. So, the police opened up. We got a call for a domestic dispute, blah, blah, blah. That We opened the door. Mm -hmm. And they looking at me because I was the one doing the yelling and stuff. But I'm like, no, you need to be looking at this. He the whole child molester. You oh. know what I'm saying? Okay. And, the little, and they asking the girl, are you safe? Is you okay? And she's, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. So, yeah, it's safe to say that relationship is over. So, what, wait, so what, what happened? Did they take his phone? Did they, he go to jail? I mean, what happened? Well, yeah, they took us both down. Okay. They took us both down, and yeah, they took his phone. I can't say if he went to jail because the girl didn't press no charges. Mm. She didn't press no charges. I just told them what I saw because, yeah, you dang right. You're not about to have me looking like no clown. And then got me looking bad out here in these apartments, even though I went over there and went nuts or whatever. But no, heads no. Here is the proof of why I popped off because he look at the proof. Mm. And so, I mean, they took his phone. What they did with that was on, because I, I lost contact. I was over. I was straight on all of them. And that's the craziest thing. See, St. Louis, man, it is crazy out there. Listen, I'm from Detroit. And, hey, it be some crazy stuff going on in the D. But St. Louis, y'all right across the water some from us. Some of them us. dudes is weird. Some of them dudes is weird. It's grown men out here courting teenagers, little kids. Mm. Compared to my grown tail, that is a child. Yeah. And then you so bold. You so, you so, just a narcissist. You thought it was okay for you to flaunt this 16-year-old child in my face. Let me tell you, Mr. Dante, she went with us all the time. Dang. Every, every date, every time we just wanted to get out and walk downtown, she was with us. Let me go pick up my little sister. I wonder, I, this is what I wonder. Do you think that he would have eventually told you the truth and see what you were going to be down with it? That's what crossed my mind often because I feel like you were bold enough to put her in my face. You were bold enough to give your family a story to tell me when we around. And, and, and the family. The oh, family. my God. I done been to barbecues, holiday dinners, events, baby showers, cook-offs, and this girl there. So and they, they calling her little sis. They condone his behavior. Got me out here looking like a whole clown. God, that's... Looking, looking sick and the whole time in the streets. I mean, like I said... I told my home home girl she called a friend who you know know people in the streets and they said it was whispers that this that he was into teenagers. Dang. Oh, I'm the man. only one that didn't hear the crap, and I mean in my face they kept it you know brother sisterly. Yeah. So I didn't know, but I mean it was weird. It was weird. It was weird. So I mean, how how old were you at this time? 
19, 19, 19, 20, yeah. Oh, okay. So that's three years. Well, one would say, uh, how old was he? He was older. He was oh. older, so he had to be like 27, 26, 27. Oh, okay. 26, 27. And you said she was 16, so that's four years. Seven, he's about 10, 11 years older than her. Well, I guess he liked them young, huh? Yeah, I mean, I real young. Something. I was young anyway. I, I would say that I was 19 turning. Oh, 20. you know what's crazy? I'm going to have to look up and see what, what is the age of consent in uh, Missouri. Because if it is 16, then nothing came about that. Matter of fact, know. everybody in the comment section, look this up for me right quick. What is the age of consent in Missouri? All right, let me know in the comment section because the the creep probably got away with it because I, honestly, after I separated myself from that whole entire situation, I can't even say what was his whereabouts because I didn't ask about him. Oh. As far as I was concerned, whatever, away with you because you filed it. Besides the girl being sixteen and him being a child molester because that's what he was in my eyes. Mm -hmm. It was the whole that. And flaunting her. Yeah. Think about this. Put yourself in my position. Uh -oh. You got a whole girlfriend, and she taking her little brother, oh. quote unquote, everywhere. And the story is they just got a strong bond. Oh no! You know? But not him and his girlfriend. Yeah. Just him. Everywhere. Every time we went on a date. Every time we, had, you know, what I'm saying, you always felt the need to call him to see if he wanted to come. Is he available to come, or we just picking him up? Period. Mm, well, Miss Alicia and Norwell, we got to wrap this up. Um, I want to thank you again for sharing some of your crazy stories. And, um, yeah, I definitely got to get you back over here. Matter of fact, I want to ask you something. Would you be willing to become a full-time employee for the Dante Show Productions? Because I'm actually looking for great storytellers to add to my YouTube channel and social media. And I honestly think that you got some raw stories and I really want to extend you employment. So do you think, would you, would you be willing to at least consider it? I would consider it and possibly make that commitment if this is what the people want to hear. Okay. If you get a good feedback from my stories and they say, bring her back, I'll come back. But if it's not that, then it was nice even having this opportunity. Well, well I'll tell you what, listen, all right, that's fair. And with that, y'all, we out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoy my story time, y'all going to love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the cash app. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. What's wrong with you cats that be working at these shops? Knowing god dang well you got a wife and kids at home and you out here stalking these women? Let's get into this crazy story. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Okay, so today's story is about this dude that I worked with that could not take no for an answer. Now, when I get into this story, you have to understand that me just being kind at work was not me trying to lead him on he just got the wrong idea so i was working at this shop and this shop was based off of um people making orders their product comes to the shop we pack it up seal it send it out and i was on the line with this guy now this guy everybody knew him in the shop he was real cool he was like one of the um line managers or whatever and he took a liking to me now i was the type of person who will go to work do my job, go home. I wasn't really trying to make no friendships, trying to start no relationships, nothing like that. I just was going to work, make my money, go home. But 
he just kept on coming by me are you good miss norwood how's your day miss norwood i'm good 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 i'm trying to be kind i ain't trying to be rude so of course i answer his questions but one day i'm like okay let me just let him know that he ain't got a chance this it, it is this is not what it's gonna be i let him know like hey i appreciate your kindness or whatnot but I just want you to know that I'm not interested in anybody. I ain't trying to, you know, get with nobody. I just want to work and go home. And he just was like, oh, no, no, it's not that. It's not that. You know, I ain't even known that. I just feel like everybody needs friends in the workplace. It'll make the day go by faster. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. Just as so long as you know, it's not going to be that, you know, whatever. So I befriended him. You know, we started talking. I started conversing with him and a lot of other people at the job or whatever. He was right. It did make the day go by you know faster or whatever and we start all eating together the same people it wasn't just me and him like a date you know it was me and a couple other employees so i go to work um go to work do this leave and go home okay i start going home and i start noticing that i was having like little notes on the car you know hope you had a good day at work looking forward to seeing you tomorrow you know good night stuff like that and i'm like okay like whatever this ain't weird but it was but I ignored it because I'm like, maybe he's just a kind person. He does this to other people. So I thought I go to work. I mean, go home. I'm sorry. Come back to work. It's the next day. Hey, how you doing? I'm asking him like, yeah, um, I seen them little notes you left on my car. Uh, that's kind of kind of different. You know, you already told me bye before I had left. I didn't feel like a note was necessary. And I'm trying to say it kind because some people, you know, will get offended if you come to them like this. So I'm like trying to explain to him that this ain't right before it becomes like a HR situation. Oh, no, no, no. I, I do that to a lot of people. You know, you don't know what they're going on, how they day could have ended. I just wanted you to go home and have a good peace of mind with a good note, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. So we work in end of the day time to go home got another note but this time i start noticing the same car kind of telling me i'm like no i gotta be tripping i know this dude is not following me home so you know you this is what you do when you feel like somebody's following you you drive 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 hit a left and then you hit another left then you hit another and just let's just make a right just in case or whatever that this person isn't following you no nah, this person was following me and then they noticed that that I noticed that they was following me. So he hurry up and split off. In my mind, it's telling me that it's this line manager. So I go home and I'm looking out the window, making sure this dude wasn't like far back and decided like he was gonna keep on following me and know where I live now. So I'm nervous looking out the window and stuff. I don't see nobody. I chill out like, man, maybe I'm just overthinking it. I go back to work. It's the next day. I'm asking him like, okay, I just mentioned about the note and I found another note on my car like and on top of that did you follow me home he like what are you talking about no one followed you home and yeah yeah my bad about the note uh I wasn't thinking it's just habit to leave notes on people's cars so now I'm like weirded out I'm like I'm gonna need you to please just not leave no notes on my car like I appreciate the kindness I love my job I don't want to jeopardize it in any kind of way I just want to work make my money and go home you could tell me bye, have a good day before we leave, but it should stop there. He like, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. You know, you ain't gotta, your panties ain't gotta be in a bunch. And I'm, he get mad. I'm like, er, like this ain't that. I'm just trying to explain to you, like I don't need a note. Like a uh, goodbye is good enough for me. Thank you, and you know, have a nice day type of situation. So I go to work. Now I'm trying to avoid him. You know, I already developed a relationship, friendship relationship, work relationship with this man. But I'm thinking he getting some mixed signals that is not there. And so, like, I'm working. He trying his hardest to do everything to get my attention. I'm trying to avoid him and just stay on the product, product, seal, ship it out. That's where my mind is at. I even finished my shift and left. Like, I didn't even wait for him to, to be, lie, be lying to me to say goodbye or none of that stuff. So he catch on, at least I thought he caught on. We go fast forward, fast forward. Now I'm leaving, I ain't got no notes on my car. I don't feel like nobody following, but now I'm getting random gifts at my house. Random gifts at my house. So, you know, flowers one day, a, a car just thinking about you. I'm like, what the heck is this? I'm not talking to nobody romantically. Nobody should have my, you know, be sending stuff to my house. 
I'm like, no, I know this can't be this dude. So this got to be somebody sending it to the wrong address and just don't know. And so I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm not even going to mention it to him because I don't want him to think that I'm thinking about him in no kind of way. But then I start like seeing, um, one day I had came home from work and a dang cassette player was at my door playing Aaliyah, At Your Best You Are Loved. Y'all know that song? At Your Best You Are Loved. Yeah. And I'm like, what the heck, y'all? I can't say. You get what I'm saying? That was, that's actually one of my favorite uh, songs. No, until this Aaliyah. day, that song creeped me out. I love the song. I get the message. But when I hear that song, I think about this time. Yeah, that's, so, that is creepy. Yeah, it's creepy as heck. Like, so I'm like, why is somebody putting? Why? So he had a cassette tape. It was one of those, you know, the how reporters, yeah, oh, yeah, man. the click it and record. It was playing at your best, you are love. And you, and I just have to ask you, and you never slept with this guy. I never slept with him. I never gave him an inkling that he had a chance to sleep with me. You never went on a date. Or never. Anything. It was strictly work related. Okay. And this is what I have to tell women that sometimes you can't even be kind. You can't even be kind because you don't know what's going on in these men's minds mentally. And you give them a little smidget of attention. And they, and run, they, with they run with it. They can't take they can't take rejection. They can't take no and it's your fault. The so, woman's fault for so, even doing so, that. So how do you so after you hear the recording and like what happens that you pick it up, you pick up the cassette? Like yeah, because I'm tripping like, okay, now it's, it's past flowers. It's past cards. You know what I'm saying? Like, who in their right mind go put a cassette tape with a, at, at a, a song, love song, and you're not even romantically with anyone? So my first thought, okay, enough is enough. So I go to work. This is I go to work because I just got off work. I go to work. And I go to him and I'm like, dude, okay, this got to stop. What is you talking about? What is you talking about? I'm like, I can't think about nobody but you. Now, call me crazy. I will accept that. But I'm getting flowers, I'm getting cards, and I'm getting cassette tapes about songs, You Are Loved, and all this stuff. And the only person I can think about is you because you was the one leaving notes on my car. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you got me. You got me. This is him. Oh, man, he admitted it. He admitted it. He thought it was funny. He thought it was cute. Oh. I ain't even gonna hold you up. Every time I hear that song, I think about you, and I just wanted you to know that you are loved this way. Well, let me ask you a question. Did he have... Any other women at the job? Because I'm pretty sure it was a lot of women there at the job. I I don't know. I mean, I'm sure eventually after I had reported him to HR and stuff. Wait, wait, wait. Get, let's get to that part. So what happened? When did you report him? After this incident, I reported him because I told him enough is enough. This is crazy. How did you even get my address? Oh. Well, you know, I, I am a line manager. I got everybody's information. Oh. So you thought it was okay. For you to go into my, my private file and get my information and then take it upon yourself to send me stuff after I kindly, yeah. respectively asked you not to even leave a note on my car. Can I ask you how many years ago was this? Because there's, there's that actually a lawsuit that you get filed because that's a HIPAA violation right I'm there. 35. So I had to be mid-20s, 23. I said oh, 23. Okay, yeah. it might be a yep. statute of limitation on that. So what happened? So when you went to HR... So like, I'm mad now. I can't even work. I go straight to HR and I report him. And I'm like, um, yeah, your line manager has been very inappropriate. I told him everything from the car notes that I asked him to stop doing. I told him I felt like somebody was following me home. And I felt like it was him. You know, I have proof, but I felt like it was him. And then it went from that to flowers, cards, candy, and then a song. Mm -hmm. Some weird psycho stuff at my door. And I'm like, I don't feel safe. I'm starting to feel like um, uncomfortable working with this man. Let but, me guess, they didn't do anything because you didn't have proof that it was him? No, they called him in. Okay. They called him in, and in his crazy mind, he felt like what he wasn't, what what he was doing was no harm. Oh, he admitted to it. He was he laugh he was laughing it up like y'all know I'm I'm cool with everybody up here. It wasn't oh, that. No. Oh was no, good. he didn't. He was he was so cocky in himself uh. that he felt like it was okay for him to admit that, and then no, you know, repercussions was gonna be dealt. Oh. No, they let him go. Oh man. They let him go. And then that's when it turned up a notch. Oh, oh well, well. So they let him go. I say about a week and a half, maybe two weeks passed, and everything was good. Everything was normal. I'm back on the line. So I ain't worried. So he left me alone. Okay. He went he went dark. Everything just went fine. But then 
like I start I start feeling like y'all know y'all ever seen like a Jason movie and he'll just be standing in the middle of the street. Oh no. I start leaving because I still had the second ship get off at night. Um I be leaving, get in my car, and he'd be like at the end of the street, just standing there watching me pull out. Just not not saying no word, just watching me pulling off. And I'm like, I'm not about to get this man no type of attention. Did I'm not you ever going. think about calling the police? When I start calling the police when I notice when I will get home, I get home, go to work, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, and I have a tire um, flat. You um, know what I'm saying? Something like that. So he was flattening your he tires? Was, he went so far as was leaving bullets in front of my door. Wow. This is when I knew that this is about to get serious. And yes, I did try to get a PPO on this, brother. And you know what they said? Mm -hmm. That's not enough. We need more paper trail. I mean, they, um, was you living in a house or apartment? I was living in an apartment. You, they didn't have no cameras out there? No. And how the apartment was, it was like... You go through the door, steps, my door, my neighbor door, then you go through a hall and it steps down to the back door. Oh. I was so afraid that if I walked out the door because that um, neighbor door in the hallway, he could have been, you know, around the corner, just could jump out through the back door and stuff. So I'm scared now. Even though that you knew, even though that you knew it was him, how do you really know if it that it was him though? Like, have you ever caught him in that? Well, you did say you. You, did you, okay, when you said when you were bagging out um, to leave out, he'd be standing out in the street. Staring directly now, at me. are you 100% that it was him? Oh, it's, no, I'm 1,000% it was him okay. because I seen him do the same thing out there in my apartments. Oh. I would be leaving out to work, and he wouldn't be directly in front of my apartments, but he would be like my building, then in the, and then it's like a little space. And then the other building, he will be right there at the edge of the street at the other building staring at me like Freddy Cougar, like well, whoever Jason, a uh, uh, dang on serial killer. So, so, I was so scared. how did this end? How did this, how did this, what was the ultimate thing that happened? Well, that after, after, I, after that, I ended up, and it's unfortunate that I had to do this. I ended up eventually have to move. I had to move because when I was talking to the police, it wasn't enough. Nothing was never enough. You moved out your city, your state. Yes, I ended up moving. That's out, how I out of your city or your state. I ended up I moving out of the state. Jeez. I ended up moving out of the state. Period. Because I didn't want this man to have no kind of. It's it's one thing when it's flowers and cards, in a song. It's a whole another thing when you're damaging my property yeah, damaging, and leaving bullets at my damaging door. Damaging property, leaving bullets, and and I just and, have to say this for the sake one more time, man. I'm not. I get what you're saying. Your credibility. You never slept with I this guy. I never slept with this guy. Never I don't, we never went on a date. I don't have to lie. Wow. I don't have to. No, lie. I'm, not, I'm not saying you lie. I'm just saying, wow. Wow. This man was obsessed. It's people out here that have some real fatal attractions and you ain't never touched them a day in your life. It was one of these situations. And before it got real and he unlived me and I wouldn't be able to tell this story, I, I ended up leaving. I left. Like, how would you feel? I'm not even going to just say ladies or males. How would you feel as a person if somebody just rearranged your whole livelihood? Re just just basically. Re that. Okay, just from you being kind at work. You at work and you just saying hi to somebody. Y'all happen to eat with other employees today. And now all of a sudden they feel like they entitled to you. So what I'm saying is maybe you should ask the audience to say, hey, audience. How do y'all, what would y'all do? What would y'all, what would y'all do? Well, what would y'all have done in this situation? I felt like I didn't have a choice. I did everything right. I went to HR, got him fired. That didn't stop him from coming on the premises, standing outside. Oh, so he did get fired? He got let go. Oh, eventually. Yeah, I, wow. I don't know if it was because you know, they, they're not going to tell us this yeah. if other women reported him. Oh. But I know after I reported him to them because I told him I didn't want to lose my job. Yeah, those <laughs> shop guys just like that, man. I be hearing a whole lot of stories. That's why your story was so interesting when you was telling me off camera about it. I say, you know what? I actually have a female cousin that was that went through that, and I be like, yo, what's up with these shop dudes? Like, it's like it's high school, mm -hmm. and these cats like grow up. You end up making that good shop money, and you like, and maybe having families at home. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, having too. whole families at home and sitting there still trying to get with these women, you know, women at the job. Uh -huh. And I, 
I like my job. I love shop work. You know what I'm saying? I feel yeah, like but... I shouldn't have had to be going through that just because you can't take no for an answer. Like, my fault for being nice, my fault for being kind to you, you know what I'm saying? My fault. But I shouldn't, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. I shouldn't have had to deal with that. I did everything right. I went to HR. He still came on the premises staring at me all scary, creepy like. I, I would have pulled out my phone and recorded it and be like, look. He, he's steady doing it. He's, At the time, I wasn't even thinking you, you about it. I was just trying brothers, to get no, away. You didn't have no brothers, no, no cousins, no. No, no your pops? No. <laughs> oh, man. See, you know, and that's the crazy thing. I always say that women are the most unprotected species on the planet. And it's just, it's sad because you are a gorgeous woman. And so I, I'm not saying what he did was cool, but I can see why any cat will be attractive to you. So I, I get it, but I'm not condoning what he did. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> she, you, she, she, she's, yeah. a, she's a gorgeous woman. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a shame that women don't have that layer of protection from these creeps out here. Yeah. And, and, and like, like, I know that you're married now. And, yes. And, and you're happily married. And my husband knows this story. And that's why I'm able to share it, you know. Okay. He knows everything I went through. I'm an open book. But, okay. yeah, I did everything right. The cops didn't feel like, you know, it wasn't, I, it wasn't enough. enough. So it, I did. They, they, they rather for you to end up there. In a ditch. That's what I told them. Yeah. I said, you ain't going to be satisfied till y'all find me in a ditch. And I walked out. Okay. Due to the sake of time, we got to wrap this up. Listen, if y'all like these, Alicia story times. Hey, y'all hit that like button, leave a comment. And with that, y'all, I'm out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoy my story time, y'all gonna love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the Cash App. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, y'all, I need for y'all to help me with this story. Now, my homeboy called me. I'm going to leave his name out of it. He called me and he asked me for some advice. So I got to ask y'all for the advice. So he done been with this girl for 10 years. And to his understanding, she haven't cheated on him. Now, he cheated on her here and there. You know, he claimed in the beginning that's when he was cheating on her. But he realized that she was the one. And now... You know, he feel like he want to put a ring on it. But he said like he feel like she's cheating on him. So I'm going to give y'all the story. So he said that, you know, when he met her, he was not working. And she basically was holding everything down for the first two years. Now, they end up having a kid. So he like, you know what, I'm going to step up and I'm going to get a job and this and that. So I can, you know, take on the role of being a provider and provide for you. And the baby. Cool. Now, when when he started going to work, she just abruptly quit her job. She like, yo, I'm stressed out. You know, I'm raising this baby. I can't work and raise this baby. So you just going to have to hold it down. So at first, maybe for the first three or four months, he was holding it down. But then he like, man, he basically robbing Peter to pay Paul. You all know what I'm talking about. Take it from this bill, take it from that bill to cover that bill. So he like, man, he just can't, he can't get, ends ain't meeting at all. So he called me, he like, yo D, hey, um, you know, if I can, you know, work for you with Dante's production, I'm like, well, I'm really kind of a one man show, but I mean, is is you good with a camera? And he like, I mean, I, I guess if you showed me. So now I'm gonna just keep it real with y'all. I I I record myself on a tripod. So I don't really need somebody to hold the camera unless I'm like doing some acting. 
um, which I'm going to be doing here in the future, like in the fall and I mean, in the spring and summertime, I am going to need a cameraman. But right now, y'all, I'm just stationary. I don't really need it. And the reason why I tell y'all that is because, you know, that's unnecessary money coming out of my pockets. You know what I'm saying? Where I just need somebody to just hold a camera in one place when I got a tripod. So y'all feel me on that. So he come over and he like, man, Dante, I got to talk to you. And before we go on, y'all, my homeboy told me to tell this story. All right. So it ain't me putting his business out there. He want me to put this story out there. So he like, man, Dante, I got to I got to tell you something, bro. I'm like, what's up? He like, man, I think she cheating on me, dog. I'm like, why you why you think that? He was like, cuz, man, it just it just seemed like she always trying to pick a fight with me. Like every time I come home. You know, she always trying to pick a fight with me, and then she just jump in the car and leave. And, you know, I've been at work all day, and now I got to deal with the baby, and it's like, man, like, and then when she come home, she come home around like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and at first I wasn't saying nothing, but now it's like it's just getting disrespectful, and every time I say something now, she just blow up on me, and, you know, she go downstairs and sleep on the couch. He like, what's your advice? I'm like, well, I mean, what what is she saying like going on? Well, like, why is she so stressed out? Why is she at home by herself? He like, man, I don't know. She just say, you know, the baby getting on her nose. She ain't got a babysitter to watch her so she can get some me time. And I'm like, well, I mean, can't you can't she take her to her mama house or your mama house or something? He like, no, nah, man, my mama and her mama said they ain't no, they ain't grannies, basically. Now, let me ask you all a question for the people in the comment section. Don't it seem like grandmas ain't grandmas no more? It's like they don't want to watch their kids. Let me ask you all this, too. Do you all have to pay your mama to watch your kids? Let me know in the comment section if you all do or you all don't. Now, let me know if you all think this wrong. All right. So he like, no, nah, man, we got to pay and this and that. And I'm like, well, um, I don't know what to tell you, bro. He like, man, but I think she cheating on me, though. Like, I be just having this strong feeling that when I leave the house, another dude come through there. And I'm like, well, why do you think that? He like, man, I, I just don't know, man. I just, it just be consuming me. When I'm at work, man, I just can't, like, when I be calling her and texting her, she would be texting me. Back in then, she just stopped texting. And then I call her. I, you know, dip, dip off to the bathroom and call her. She won't answer the phone. And then when she finally do answer the phone or call back, she talking about, oh, I didn't see my phone or I didn't hear my phone. But Dante, she always got her phone with her. So I know that's a lie. So I'm like, okay, well, outside of that, like anything else, he like, yeah, bro. And like when we be... Like, when we first met, you know, she would always give me, how can I put this, y'all? He said, I don't want to be so uh, raunchy with it, but she would go down on him. And he said, like, now she just won't do it at all. So he's like, man, it's like little things like that, like stuff that she used to do. Now she don't do it. And I said, well, maybe, you know, maybe the baby got her tired and, you know, he like, okay, but if that's true, why do, why when she pick fights, like she deliberately picks fights with me, then she leave. And I'm like, well, it, it kind of don't really make sense that, you know, that she's full blown cheating on you. And the reason why I say that is because if you going to work and somebody coming through there, you know, that person there with her for a long time. And then for her, for you to come home and then she leave. And then she go with him and come out, come back around three, four o'clock in the morning. I said, that just, I don't know. That just don't really sit right with me. Cause in that case, you know, she living a double life. So I don't, I, I don't know. So he like, and then my neighbor, like first I thought he was hitting on her, but you know, he told me one day, so he seen somebody, he thought it was me that was leaving out the house. And I said, what you mean? He said, yeah, my neighbor, when I pulled up, my neighbor was like, 
hey, I just, I thought you just had a black coat on. And he was like, no, nah, I ain't had no black. I just came home from work. He was like, oh, oh. And then he was like, what you, what you mean? Oh, he was like, yeah, I, you ain't just leave out your house not too long, like five minutes ago? He said, no. Nah. He was like, well, I, oh, well, okay. Then he was like, oh. So he go in the house. And she in the shower. His girl is in the shower. So he go in and he said, hey, did somebody, did your brother, was your brother here or your cousin, anybody? Here? She was like, no. And he like, oh, okay. Well, the neighbor said that, you know, he seen somebody leave like at the, out the back door. And she was like, well, I don't, well, he must be seeing things. And why he all up in our yard like that anyway? So he like, all right, man, whatever. So. He said, now nah, he's sitting on the couch and he's thinking like, why is she in the shower though? Now listen, y'all. I don't know for a fact what's going on. I don't know if if a dude just left. Because he's telling me this like I'm telling y'all this. So that's why I'm asking y'all, like, what do y'all think is going on? So then he tell me like the reason why he here now, because he like Man, Dante, I just really feel like I didn't even go on to work today. I've been just sitting down the street and I just been watching. You know, this stuff is consuming me, man. And I said, wait, wait, so you called off work to stalk your girl? He like, yeah. And, you know, I want you to come with me, you know, down there to the house, you know, if, if it's a dude in the house. And I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. So you called off of work. Because you think that your girl is cheating on you. And then you come over here to my house and say, Dante, I need for you to ride with me to your house. Just in case if it's a dude in the house. Now, if it is a dude in the house, what do I supposed to be doing? Like, what what is my role? And he like, I mean, we got to get the dude out. And just in case if he try to do something to me, you know, you can handle him. I'm like, yo. Check this out, man. I got a wife and I got kids. What that look like? And Dante is a big YouTuber now. I'm a social media influencer. What that look like? My mug shop get blasted all over social media talking about breaking news. YouTuber Dante arrested for felonious assault or assault and battery. And then when I'm in a bullpen, they're like, hey, man, D, what you in here for? fighting another dude battle because his girl was cheating on him and i had to put hands on the guy that was inside the house to get him out the house and not to whoop on my homie you know how stupid that sound so it it in it, 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 my homeboy he he a little short dude he like five six five seven well he well that, that's not that short but he about five six five and he he about maybe 140 145 so you know, I get why he would come get me to try to help him in the situation. But at the same time, y'all, that's not my business. I tell y'all all the time, all the time, I cannot tell another man how to program. If your girl out here busting it wide open for another cat out here, for whatever reason, that's not my business. Now, I ain't gonna, now if the dude way bigger than you, I ain't gonna let him punch on you. You know, I'm a get in the middle of and try to, you know, stop, stop it. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm not just going to come over there and, you know, what about dude pull out a gun or pull out a knife and now we got to take it there. So, nah, I'm, I'm not doing all that. So, you know, and y'all let me know, am I wrong for saying that or am I right? Because it's not really my fight, but like I said, the most that I will do, is get in between them and make sure, you know, they don't fight. That That's all I can do. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not my fight. So y'all let me know if I'm wrong or do I supposed to just go in there and just start turning up. Let me know in the comment section. So I'm like, so you want to go over there right now? He like, yeah, because I've been calling her and she been answering her phone. And I did see a black car pull up on the side of the house. But nobody got out, so that's why I just got in the car and called you, and here we go. So I'm like, dog, all right, come on, let's go. So we jump in my truck, and I pull up in front of the house, and I'm like, all right, come on, let's go. He like, no, you, you go to the door. I'm like, what you mean go to the door? He like, you go to the door, and like, see somebody there. 
I'm like, all right, man. So I told him to hand me my, you know what, that was in the glove compartment because, you know, this can go bad real fast. So he handed it to me and I go knock on the door. About two minutes go by, she come to the door. She's like, what you doing here? I'm like, oh, I was just checking on you. She was like, um, we good over here. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, where blah, 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 blah at? She's like, oh, he at work. I said, oh, okay. Now, usually when I come over there and my homeboy not there, she'll open the door all the way up and just, you know, like open the door and I just walk in. But she just had the armor guard. She had the first door open and the armor guard door still locked. But there was no window at the top. So, you know, I could see her and talk to her. But she had the door kind of cracked. Like, you know, like she didn't want me looking all up through the crib. So she like, okay, so is that it? I said, yeah, that's it. That's it. Next thing you know, he pop out the car. He like, hey, man, you got it. Uh, uh, you got an N word up in there? I can't. Y'all know what I'm saying. The, the N word. I don't want to this video to get flagged. Man, you got an N word in there? You got an N word in there? I'm like, hey. I said, man, what you doing? He like, he like, no, man. Open up, open the door. She like, what is you doing? He like, she like, he like, man, you got you got somebody up in there, man. Who car that is? Who car that is over there? She like, dude, what is you talking about, man? I don't know. I don't know. You supposed to be at work. What is you doing? He like, man, forget all that, man. You got somebody in there? You got something? Now nah, he turning up. She like, no. He like, well, open the door then. Open the door. Now he ain't got the key to the house, okay? He just got the car keys. And he left. Actually, she the only one can open up the door at this point. So he like, open the door, open the door. And she like, no, I'm not opening the door until you calm down. He like, man, no, forget that. He like, man, hold on, hold on. Is somebody going out the back door? Is somebody? Now, listen, I I didn't hear it. I did not see it. I'm just standing in the front yard at this point, like halfway on the porch and halfway off the porch. Just sitting there, right, while he arguing with her. Now, the back door is maybe, I'm not really good with math. I'm going to say maybe 15 feet away from us I, i'm maybe 20 feet i'm not sure but i did hear like the screen door open but that could have been anything right and he like oh oh so you got somebody in the house you got somebody in the house and he jogged around like on the right side of the house to see if somebody coming out there now he claimed he claimed he seen somebody with a black coat jump the fence right i i didn't see that i didn't hear it um i i don't know y'all i don't know but that's what he claimed that he seen and he ran back around like man open up this door open up this door you just had to come out the back door and all this and that and i was like well go back over there and go through the back door i mean if somebody came through so he ran in the back but the door was closed and it was locked so that what got me thinking, like, yeah, man, he probably tripping, man. He, he ain't seen nobody hop that gate. So she's like, dude, you is tripping. I'm not letting you in. I'm not letting you in until you calm down. Dante, you need to take him back where, wherever y'all just came from and all this and that. I'm like, listen, I ain't got nothing to do with this. I, he just told me to bring him over here. And then I said, well, I said, well, you need to get your friend. You need to get your friend. He need to calm down. So I'm like, you know what, man, I'm I, I'm about to go. I'm out. So I'm like, dude, if you gonna come so you can get your car, but I'm I'm about I'm about to go. He like, all right, man, say less, say less. I'll be back. I'm gonna be back. So we get in the truck. He like, man, Dante, I seen somebody with a black coat. I seen somebody with a black coat, man. I jumped the fence. I'm like, dog, I I didn't see it. I didn't see him. Right when we hit that left and we make a right on Thackeray Street. I did see a guy in a black coat, right? But he looked like like an older type of dude, like he was in his mid-40s. And my homie and his girl is like 34, 35. So I, dude that I seen did not look like she would be his type, but hey, you never know. So he like, there you go, there you go right there. I'm like, dude, that's not, I'm looking, I said, dude, she ain't, man, come on, man, that ain't that dude. He like, man, that's that is, man. That is him. I'm like, man, all right, whatever. 
So we drive and we get back to my crib. And he like, I'm like, so what you gonna do? He like, man, I'm finna go over there and confront that B. I'm finna go over there and confront that B. And we gonna cut the story right there, y'all. Penitentiary rules are in full effect. If you was a problem inmate like myself, this is how the guards would get back at you. They'll starve you out, whip you out, or try to play military mind games and put a punk in your cell. And your big pop, Nadante, wasn't going for none of it. Now hit that like button, share the video, and let's get into this story time. we go again at this time we was going on our annual lockdown the annual lockdown consists of the cert team coming in and shaking down everybody they shaking down every cell it don't matter who you is they coming in there they trying to find weapons they trying to find drugs they trying to find constant bam it don't matter what it is they coming in there and they coming to get it so Here's a little tip for everybody out there that might find yourselves in a penitentiary. If you ever working in a prison kitchen and they got you on a dock detail, if they come in there with them star phone cups, them star phone plates that you, you know, them to go plates, them to go container things. That's how you know y'all about to go on a long lockdown. Now going on a lockdown has its perks. And it have its, how can I say, bad things about it. Number one, the bad things is that they come in there and they finna shake this whole thing down. Meaning they come in there with them dogs. They come in there throwing all your stuff around, going through all your stuff. They gonna get real disrespectful. They gonna put their finger through your peanut butter. And, not, and look, we not about to play military mind games. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real peanut butter. Stop thinking nasty, y'all. So they, like I said, they gonna be going through all your stuff. They gonna be going through your mail. They gonna be flipping your mattress. They gonna be going through all your personal hygiene. They gonna be going through your locker. They gonna dog your cell out, okay? And you better not get caught with nothing in your cell. So now, the good thing about going on an annual lockdown is, well, for the safety of other inmates, you know, they'll find the drugs, they'll find the, the weapons, they'll find all the illegal contraband that can hurt other inmates and other staff members. But the best thing, now this is not for everybody, but the best part of going on an annual lockdown is because if you are in a cell and you don't have no cellmate, you in there by yourself. Now, at this time, y'all, we all know it ain't really no privacy in prison. But when you're on an annual lockdown, there's no movement. You in that cell 24-7. So that means you got all the privacy you want. You ain't got to worry about your bunkie farting in his sleep. You ain't got to worry about your bunkie over there standing butt booty naked by the sink doing a bird bath. You ain't got to worry about your bunkie dropping a deuce in the toilet. You ain't got to worry about none of that. It's just you. It just gives you a little peace of mind in this crazy environment. So... This is where the story actually starts right here. So Dante is getting this stuff together. You know, I ain't got no contraband in here. I ain't got too much of nothing. I got a radio up in here that ain't mine, but, you know, they ain't really going to trip off of that. So I'm good. I'm good to go. My prior Sally, he ended up going to the hole because he got into a fight on the yard. So I'm in here by myself. So I'm like, okay, good. Cool, I'm straight. So, 20 minutes go by. Boom, 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 boom. Everybody, lock down, lock down. Everybody, lock down, lock down. Me, I already knew what was coming. So, I was already on my bed, just chilling, right? They came in, the cert team came in, told everybody to lock down, get your cell. You hear toilets flushing. All that. Y'all know why the toilet's flushing. They flushing that contraband, right? So I'm laying on my bed, and I'm like, okay, yeah, here it come. Now the guard's like, all right, y'all, lock it down, lock it down. 
I'm seeing cats run past my cell from the left and from the right. People hollering, people screaming, yo, yo, hey, hey, yo, hey, hey. Right? And I'm just right there laying on my bunk, just chilling. So about 15 minutes to go by, now everybody is in their cell. There's no reason for no inmate to be out their cell. So we all locked down, right? So two guards walking on the tier. They got, you got three tiers. You got the first level, the second level, and the third level. Dante is on the second level. So they walking around with their clipboard, making sure everybody is where they're supposed to be at. So they're going around. When they come to your cell, you got to stand up so they can see who you is. Because the last time they did an annual lockdown, well, a pre-annual lockdown, somebody was in there dead. Yeah, that's another story. I'll tell y'all that at another time. So they came to my door and they had the clipboard. Dante, I stood up. I'm like, I'm right here. They looked in there. They said, all right. So then he walked off to the next cell, next cell, next cell. Then the guard came back to my cell. He said, where your um, bunkie at? I was like, y'all took him to the hole not too long ago, a couple days ago. He was like, oh, okay, all right. Then he walked back off. Then he came back like 15 minutes later and was like, hey, um, what you got going on in there? I'm like, I ain't got nothing going on. See, right now, y'all, this guard right here, he did not like me at all. And it was a Mexican dude. And I don't know what, I don't know why this dude didn't like me. Maybe I reminded him of somebody in the street. Maybe I looked like a cat that maybe bullied him when he was in high school and middle school. You never know why certain guards have an issue with you. I never was disrespectful to him. I always kept my head down and followed the rules. I ain't never gave him no hard time ever. But, hey, he'll do petty things like when I'm on the phone. He'll, hey, Dante, you got five minutes. How you going to tell me I got five minutes on the phone when it's unlimited, right? So what he'll do, he'll like, you got five minutes. And then he'll cut the phone off when I got like four more minutes. And y'all know them prison calls is very expensive. So he'll do stuff like that, man. Or if he having a bad day, he'll come to my cell and just shake it down. Him and two other guards throwing all my anyway. But that's that's him. Matter of fact, I'm going to put his whole name out there. His name, Officer Garcia. Everybody in the MDOC prison system, y'all know exactly who I'm talking about. Officer Garcia, y'all know the one that I, you know, y'all already know who I knocked out. But that's a whole nother story too. But anyway, he keep messing with me, keep asking me these stupid questions, questions that he already know about my bunkie getting sent to the hole from the yard, right? So he like, hey, Dante, um, you need to cuff up right quick. I need to search your cell right quick. And I get up, I'm like, Man, you're not searching my cell, man. Y'all already about to come in here and destroy my cell. You're not about to pre-do that already. So I, and the reason why now I'm being hostile, y'all, is because I'm going to have to clean my cell back up just for them to mess it up again whenever they come back through here to do that, you know, that annual lockdown shakedown. So I'm like, man, I'm not doing it, man. He like... So you disobeying the order? I'm like, no, I'm not disobeying the order, but I'm not, I'm not, no, man, you're not about to do that. He like, all right, all right, well, guess what? I'm writing you up. I'm giving you a ticket. So I'm like, well, you know what? I ain't even tripping about no ticket. Keep that in mind, y'all. So I lay back down. He write me up. The sergeant come down there in about an hour. He like, Dante, would you refuse in my officer orders to cuff up so we can shake down your cell? I said, listen, Officer Garcia, he keep, it, it's like, I, I didn't even do nothing. Like, he, so I'm explaining my case. Of course, you can never win with these cats at all. So he said, well, are you innocent or are you, or are you guilty? It don't really matter if you say you're not guilty because I'm going to write you up to being guilty anyway. And after the annual lockdown, we're going to give you a week without phone privileges. And, well, there you go. Now, I'm like, all right, man, whatever. So I go back and lay down. Now, we're going to fast forward to about 2 o'clock in the morning. I hear my cell door pop. Click, click. 
I instantly open my eyes because you never know what's about to go down. This is prison. So the guard like, Dante, cuff up, cuff up. Now, they tell you to cuff up for one or two reasons. The main reason is you're about to get you a new cellmate and you have to cuff up and go to the back of the cell while the new cellmate come in there and get uncuffed and you get uncuffed. Now, let me tell you all the dangers about this. Now, you don't know if this your enemy coming coming up in here. You don't know if it's a dude that just want to have a cell to itself and just have issues and might just take off on you. So Dante be real hesitant to get cuffed up because about a month prior to this, I heard about a situation about a dude that didn't even have beef with this cat that they told to cuff up and go to the back of the cell while he came in there. And as soon as he got his hand cuffed off, he just mangled the dude. And the police didn't do nothing about it. They wait until this man beat this man unconscious. Now, I don't know what this is set up or not, but Dante wasn't about to go out that way. So I got up. I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm not cuffing up. This is Officer Garcia again telling me to cuff up. He like, you, oh, you going to cuff up. So the sergeant. Sergeant was right there too. He was like, you know what, Dante, just go to the back of the cell and just face forward. Don't turn around. So I'm like, all right, all right. So I hear this dude on the side. Now, the voice was real familiar, but I really couldn't put a name on it. All I hear is, if he don't want me in there, I'm not going in there. And I'm like, hold up, hold up. I said, wait a minute, that voice sound from. That's Nelson. That's Gay Nelson. So I hear him like, if he don't want me coming in there, I ain't coming in there. And I turned around. I'm like, oh, heads, no. Hey, y'all, no, uh. No, man, come on, man. Y'all can't do that now. Remember, y'all, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning. Everybody's supposed to be asleep. But the way I'm yelling and screaming on Nelson and the sergeant and Officer Garcia, everybody waking up like, like, hey, yo, what's going on? What's going on down there, D? D, what's going on? I'm like, hey, listen, he not coming in here. Just listen, I don't care. Y'all can take me to the hole. Y'all can take my privileges away for a whole month. I don't care. He is not coming up in here. That's my bottom line. Officer Garcia like, oh, he coming in there. Are you going to the hole? I'm like, all right, y'all just going to take me to the hole. Let me tell y'all something. Before anybody out there trying to say, oh, there go Dante gay bashing and being homophobic. No, let me explain something to y'all really clear. Okay. In a penitentiary, there's a saying, birds of a feather flock together. And there's a lot of dudes that's always gossiping. It's a lot of rumors that get spread. Somebody can see something that's so small and take that and blow it up to something crazy. Now, everybody know that Dante was a heterosexual straight dude. And if you put gay nails into my cell, come on, man. I can see it right now through the prison pipeline, the prison gossip line. Oh, man, you know, they put gay nails in the cell with Dante and he be out here talking about the Bible and stuff. But he, 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 I bet he in there trying to read scriptures to gay nails in a gay way. I'm telling y'all, you, I'm telling you. The reason why Gay Nelson couldn't come in my cell is because I had <sighs> in prison. It's like this, man, and I, I there's so many ways that I can explain this. Like case in point, if you are a straight man, yes, you can talk to the gay guys. Yes, you can you can conduct business with them, but you don't want to be seen dang that every day conversating with them, laughing with them, giggling with them. You know what I'm saying? Because people going to start looking at you like, oh, OK, I bet. Yeah, he, he got to be messing around with one of them punks. But this wasn't the case. Dante was not about to have that jacket because the worst thing that a man can say about you or the worst jacket you can have in prison outside of having bad charges. If you were straight man and people trying to label you as a punk, a punk layer or somebody just. <sighs> anyway, I'm getting stressed out by even thinking about it. So I'm like, no, he ain't coming up here, man. No, that's out. My bottom line is this. He ain't coming in here. Garcia like, listen, he going to come in here 
or you going to the hole. I'm not about to go through this with you. And I told y'all he doing this on purpose, man. He know God dang well that Nelson cannot come in here with me. That's why he could have put him in somebody else's cell. But he want, he knew I was going to act out. And, well, he did so. This what happened. So Nelson like, uh-uh. If he don't want me in there, I'm not going in there. Shoot, I, I got better things to do. Y'all can put me in the cell by myself. I don't know why y'all moved me anyway. See, and that's how I know that I was being set up, y'all. Because Gay Nelson already put it out there. They done pulled him out of his cell and tried to put him in here with me. So, they like, well, hey, listen. It's about to be the annual lockdown, and this just what it's going to be. Either he coming in here with you, or you going in a hole, and you can be in a hole for two to three months. As long as this lockdown is being um, conducted, you going to be in a hole, so you got a choice to make. What you going to do? I'm like, man, dog, man, he ain't, man, dog, he, he can't come in here, man. Why y'all trying to play me like that, Dante? We not going, we not asking you. We telling you. Either he coming in here and y'all just be, it, it just be what it is, or you can cuff up now and go to the hole. What you going to do? I said, all right, man, lock me up, man. I, I don't care. Lock me up. So Garcia was like, okay, that's what you want to do? So the sergeant stepped in and was like, Dante, listen. <laughs> Look, let him come in here just for the night. I'm like, no. Listen, Sarge, he can't come in here. Man, listen, if he come in here, man, come on, man. It's prison. Y'all already know what time it is, man. It's going to be so many rumors. I'm going to end up going to the hole anyway off a of lockdown because somebody going to try to crack a joke. And I ain't going for that. So he like, Dante, come on, man. Y'all are men, right? You a man, right? Do you? Why do you care about what other people think? I'm like, Sarge, come on, man. You already know what time it is, man. He can't come in here, man. He like, Dante, listen. Either he come in here or you just cuff up, man. It's 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 we it ain't no choice, man. Either you either he coming in here or you gotta cuff up. Which one is gonna be? I'm like, man, I'm cuffing up, man. I'm cuffing up. So he like, all right, turn around, put your hands behind your back. So he get his handcuffs out and he, and he put the handcuffs on. So he set me outside the cell and I'm sitting right there and Nelson go in there. And Nelson like well, like I said, if he ain't, if, if he don't want me here, I ain't got a guard. She was like, Nelson, just go and get in there. I'm like, hey, hey, don't touch my stuff neither. The Garcia was like, and if he do, what you going to do? And Sarge was like, hey, Garcia, chill out, chill out. So I'm like, hey, hey, Sarge, man, this some bull. You know this some bull, right? He like, Dante, we gave you an order. You can't pick and choose. Hey, you should have never committed a crime to come to prison. You won't have to deal with this. So, I'm going to give you one more chance, man. What you want to do? Do you want to go to the hole? Because I really don't want to do the paperwork, man. Either you're going to go to the hole or you're going to be in here with Nelson. Which, what you going to do? I'm like, it ain't no other cells I can go into. Like, it ain't, it, I mean, come on, man. What about the cell he just came out of? Sergeant, like, you know what? All right. All right, whatever. All right, we'll we just take you down there. So then Garcia like, no, Sergeant, he posted Garcia, close your mouth. We just going to take him down there, right? So I'm like, all right, thanks, Sarge. So then he was like, you know what? Matter of fact, go on back in there. So he uncuffed me, and I went back in the cell, and he told Nelson to come on out, and they put Nelson back in his cell. So I'm thinking to myself, like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah, I'm going to have to do something to Garcia. Now, again, y'all. Dante ain't got no issues with the gay community, but y'all got to understand this in prison. It is a different world. The things that go on outside in the free world don't make sense in prison. And in prison, there's things that goes on in prison that will not make sense out here in the free world. Okay. It's just, it is what it is. Back in 2012, I was, I believe, entering my maybe 14th month in my prison bed when this dude came in there named Lil Terry. Now, I knew Lil Terry from Detroit, Michigan. I knew him, like, in passing, but I didn't know him, know him. You know, like, dudes that you would see on the streets and 
y'all just say what up to each other and just keep it moving because y'all from the same neighborhood, but y'all don't really talk to each other. There wasn't no beef or nothing, but that's how I knew little Terry just in passing. So when I seen him, he walked up to me. He was like, hey, ain't your name Dante? I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, what's up, bro? What's up, bro? Now, check this out, y'all. Remember I said we ain't ever talked a day in our lives on the street, but it's good to see a familiar face when you locked up, right? Especially when y'all from the same city. And no, y'all, I am not from Detroit, okay? To be honest, I already know where I'm from. Let me give y'all a quick, brief history about me. So, I was born in Detroit. Then from Detroit, I moved to Flint, Michigan. And then from Flint, Michigan, I moved to Atlanta. And then from Atlanta, back to Flint, Michigan. And then from Flint, Michigan, back to Atlanta. And then from Atlanta to Detroit. From Detroit, back to Flint. Flint, back to Atlanta. Then when I got grown, it was Michigan, um, Ohio, then back to Michigan, and since I've been doing social media, I've been all over the place. So that's Dante quick brief history. So anyway, I'm like, what up? He like, yeah, man, bro, man, yeah, I just got here not too long ago. And I'm like, okay. He like, so, you know, what's, what's going on? I'm like, shoot, I mean, you know, the same, same old, same old, you know. Have you ever been locked up before? He like, no, I ain't I ain't never been locked up. This is my first case. I said, what you do? He said, man, bro, they gave me natural life. I'm like, what they give you natural life for? He was like, man, so this is what happened. Me and my baby mama, basically, I ended up shooting some dude that she was in that mess that she was sleeping with. I'm like, well, I mean, okay, but like, what happened? Like, what happened happened? He like, uh, you want the slow version of it or the long version? I'm like, look, dude, we in prison. Give me the long version because, you know, just give me the long version. I want to hear all details like I be giving y'all the details. So he like, all right, bro. So I was cheating on my baby mama for a couple months. And she told me, like, she getting tired of me and this and that. And she going to get me back. So basically, I get off of work around two o'clock in the morning, and when I pull up, there's a car outside. And when I go inside the house, I hear her upstairs moaning. So I pull out my strap and I kick the door in, the bedroom door in. I just get to shooting, right? I just get to shooting wildly. So when I'm shooting wildly, I end up hitting my baby mama twice, but she ain't dying. I ended up hitting the dude like three or four times, and he ended up dying. So, you know, I went on a run for a couple of months, and they ended up catching me, and they extradited me back here to Michigan. I said, God dang. He was like, yeah, they gave me natural life. I said, oh. I said, well, all right, so this how it is here. Um, if you see a phone just like off the hook, don't go over there and pick it up. Don't don't pick it up. Um, or you might get you you might have some issues. You might have some trouble. Um, this not like the West Coast, so it ain't racist. Like we ain't you can talk to whoever you want to talk to, but just know that be careful who you talk to up in here and like who you affiliate with, because birds of a feather, birds of a feather flock together, and. You know, one of the biggest things is like, okay, so it's gay guys are here. We call them punks or we call them boys. But don't be over there hanging with them. Don't be over there, you know, laughing and giggling with them. Because what happens is if you over there laughing and giggling with them and, you know, conversating with them day in and day out, other cats going to tie you to them and be like, yeah, he must be gay or he must be a punk or something. And they might treat you accordingly. So that could come in the form of a dude on a down low that don't want to be exposed, might want to push up on you in the showers, or he might want to push up on you while you're in your cell. Um, you might, you know, it's just a bad look. You know, just don't, just don't associate with them. I mean, you can do business with them. 
It ain't like, you know, it's like, ew, get away from me. Not like that, but, you know, you just got to be careful. Even like with these gang members up here, man, you got to be careful of who you affiliate with because when when they go to war with somebody or they got an issue with somebody, somebody from another gang that see you hanging with them, they might like, oh, let's get him. That's their homeboy right there. Let, let, let's get him, right? So you just got to be careful. Um, another thing, when you... In your in your dorm or um or or your pod or whatever wherever they send you at, don't be looking at nobody's cell, okay? Especially, I said, listen, you go hear some things, you might even see some things. Just keep keep it moving. If you see a fight pop off, don't don't run to that fight. If you see somebody fighting in the showers or they about to go fight under the stairs or something, don't you go over there looking because you might get your head cracked next. And, uh, you know, just just mind your business. Um, keep your head low. Don't get into no drugs. Don't be gambling if you ain't. And especially if you out here gambling and you like to shoot dice and, you know, bet on stuff, make sure you have that commissary. All right? Because if you don't have what you owe, oh, that's a whole nother ball game right there. But um, yeah, man, they you know prison is like the streets, man. You you know how to navigate the streets. I mean, hey, so you like all right, all right. So what you about to get into? I'm like nothing. I'm about to walk these walk these laps off right quick before we go in. So he was like, "Can I walk with you?" I'm like, "Yeah, oh yeah." So we hit, so we hit the track. So we walk in, and he like, "Hey, bro, uh, I've been here for like a week, and um, I wanted to ask you something. You, you know about this dude named Sweet Low?" I'm like, "Yeah, the dude in AB." He like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Yeah, I know about Sweet Low." He was like. Well, look, dude, I don't know if he trying to come on to me or I I don't know, man, because it's like he be lightweight saying little slick stuff, but I don't know if he being, if that's the way he talk. I said, listen, <sighs> so they got you on the A side. He said, yeah. Now, the A side and B side is like this, y'all. When you first come in in the reception center, they got the A side for violent offenders, right? And when I say violent offenders, it don't matter. It's like, how can I put it? It's like the class classification of what you was charged with when you came in. So if you done took somebody's life or violated a woman or a child, you going on A side. And then they got B side where cats that came from um, a higher custody level, will co they if they can work their way down with good behavior and stuff, they're going to be side. But then they got like a joint side called AB, where they just put both sides in together. And he was on AB side, and this was where Sweet Low was at also. And for everybody that know who Sweet Low is, that y'all been rocking with me from the beginning, y'all know exactly who Sweet Low is. So Sweet Low done pushed up on him low key. So I'm like, you talking about the bald head dude with the beard? He like, yeah. He like 6'6". Six, six. He like, yeah. I said, what exactly was he saying to you? Like, what was he doing? He was like, well, like the other day we was working out and, you know, I'm laying down doing the bench presses and, you know, I've been at gyms when I had somebody to spot me, but this dude, like, literally had his nuts hanging over my damn forehead, you know, while he was spotting me, uh, and I said, what you do? I, he said, I, I didn't say nothing. I, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. That, let me tell you something. There's a thing called a hard press and a slow press, Right? And what Sweet Low is doing, he trying to groom you. He trying to, he throwing out little signals to see how far he can go with it. I said, number one, if you feel something inside of you telling you like something ain't right, it ain't right. 
And what Sweet Low do, he like young black dudes and young white dudes. And what he doing is trying to groom you. When y'all was, when you was on that bench, when you was bench pressing, and he was spotting you, and he, that's what he does. He try to over exert himself, over try to, you know, put his body up on you. And I said, let, let me guess. He been trying to teach you how to box too. He like, yeah, yeah. He, I said, listen, that's what he, and he like to grab you, try to wrestle with you too. He like, yeah, how you know? I said, dude, I've been seeing this day in, day out. That's, that's, how, that's what he do. He said, wait, wait. So you saying that he trying to, he trying to make me his dude or something? I said, yeah. I said, the next time, matter of fact, it should not be no next time, man. Don't work out with him. If he try to give you anything, don't take it. Just, just stay away from dude. He like, man, that's crazy, dog, because this dude just gave me like four white tees. I said, dude, give him back that stuff, man. Get, give it back to him because ain't nothing good for him to come from that. He going to feel like that you, he, all right, all right. So he like, man, that's crazy, bro. He, he been feeding me. He been giving me stuff. I said, look, dog, stop, stop talking to him. Give, give him back the white tees. He like, man, you for real? He like that. I said, yeah, man, that's how he is. So he like, all right. So he left. And we had to go in for yard. The next three days, y'all, I did not see him. I didn't see Lil Terry for three days, y'all. But I ended up seeing Sweet Low. Now, I know how Sweet Low get down. And I know how he program. So, I'm looking at him. And I'm like, huh. Where's where Lil Terry at? Cause I I, I ain't seen Lil Terry for three days, but now I'm seeing Sweet Low on the yard, and I'm like, man, I hope I hope he ain't do what I think he did, right? I know everybody thinking like, yeah, Sweet Low got him. So I send word to to do pot, like, hey, y'all seen Lil Terry? And they like, yeah, Lil Terry was in the hospital. He was like, what you mean he was in the hospital? I was like, well, hey, well, let me tell you what happened. So the other night, a couple of days ago, you know, he came to Sweet Low and, you know, he was trying to give him stuff. You know, I don't know exactly what he was trying to give him, but he was trying to give him stuff. And Sweet Low wasn't trying to hear it. All all you heard was Sweet Low was like, no, nah, I don't want that. I don't want that. No, that, that's you. We supposed to be homeboys. We supposed to be brothers to hear black people supposed to be sticking together. I don't want nothing from you. I don't know who told you that, you know, I, I like dudes in here, man. I ain't even like that. But no, you can't give me back what I gave you because I, I find that disrespectful and this and that. So he like, I guess Lil Terry like, man, listen, I I just don't want to, I don't want to deal with none of this drama and stuff like this. So next thing you know, sweet low, just take off on him. You know, he start punching on him. And Sweet Low, y'all, is like 6'6", six, six, about 250, 260. And Lil Terry, hence the name Lil Terry, he ain't nothing but maybe about 5'8", five, 5'7", five, maybe 150 at the most. So Sweet Low had his way with him. So he did, but he ain't violate him. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He ain't violate. He just beat him up. So... Sweet Low basically told him, like, all right, listen, this is what you're going to do. I need for you to get me two packs of Newports, two packs of Newports, and our debt will be over with. You know, you ain't got to owe me nothing. And he like, man, what you mean? I got to give you two packs of Newport. He like, yeah, I need two packs of Newport, and, you know, our debt will be over with. So he like, man... And Sweet Low like, hey, listen, and if you don't, if you don't get my stuff, this going to happen every day. So, fast forward four days from that day, which is the next day after I put the word out what happened to Lil Terry. I see Lil Terry on the yard now. Hence the thumbnail. Lil Terry, eye is closed shut. His left eye is closed shut. Sweet Low been punching on him. 
So I said, hey, man, you all right? He like, yeah, bro, man. I should never listen to you, bro. I said, what you mean? See, people will always do that. When you try to get them advice and then when something go wrong, I should have just kept my mouth closed, right? Right. So he like, yeah, bro, I tried to get um, Sweet Low back to stuff, and he he wasn't taking it, and he just started beating me up, and he told me I need two packs of cigarettes, and then the debt will be off. So at this point, y'all, I'm irritated because I was just trying to look out for the dude, but I'm like, all right, man, whatever. So I just walk off. Y'all remember Freaky Freddy? If y'all been rocking with me for the longest, y'all know exactly who Freaky Freddy is. Freaky Freddy is one of them older cats that he got, he runs a store. He got all type of honey buns. He got all type of summer sausages, crackers, the squeeze it cheese, he, everything. He, he work in the kitchen. He bring back the onions, bell peppers, all that, right? So how Freaky Freddy get down he he it ain't no shame in his game. He like to he like to get it on with other cats up in there in exchange of commissary. You pay him, he you you pay him with your body and he give you whatever you want. That's how Freaky Freddy got down. So word is, word done got to Freaky Freddy about what Sweet Low and Lil Terry got going on. And of course how Freaky Freddy is, he pulled up on him and was like, hey, listen, I heard about your dilemma and, you know, I, tch, cigarettes, I got, I got that, but, you know, it's going to cost you though. So, dude, like, Lil Terry, like, oh, man, but I ain't gay, man. I ain't about to be doing no gay stuff. He, little Freaky Freddy, like, hey, man, ain't nobody in here gay, bruh. We ain't, man, no, nah, we men up in here. Now, this is where I don't know exactly what happened because I wasn't there. I didn't, I wasn't on a floor. I wasn't in a dormitory. But what was told to me is that Lil Terry kept getting punched on and beat on by Sweet Low for the next three days because he ain't had them cigarettes. And well, the beating stopped. And Sweet Low got his cigarettes. And the only person that could produce them cigarettes to Lil Terry is Freaky Freddy. So, hey, check this out, y'all. Dante got a movie that's coming out this October, but y'all got to help me pay for these permits. What these permits is about is shooting at certain locations that, you know, the town want their money for Dante to shoot at. So that's cool. So we doing a crowdsourcing, a crowdfunding, right? I got the PayPal in the description and in the comment section, and I got the cash app right there. This is the Dante Show Network, true enough, but this is the Dante Show, but y'all are the network, okay? So if you feeling generous and you feel like, hey, we want to see this movie come in October, come on, y'all, lean on that cash app, lean on that PayPal. If you en enjoyed this right here the story hit that like button and share the video and with that i'm out so back when i was about 20 21 years old i had this girlfriend and she was a she was cool you know she she was fun she was cool but the only issue was i was just a dog back then so we was dating for maybe about seven or eight months at this time and I end up, I was at the grocery store without her, and I seen this chick. This chick was like five, five with like long, black, beautiful hair. And I, and she was like, like slim, thick in a way. So I seen her, and I'm looking at her, I'm like, God dang. So I pull up on her, I'm like, hey, um, I said, what's your name? She was like, you know, the crazy thing, I forgot even her name, y'all. That's that's how doggish I was back then. Anyway, so she told me her name. I said, oh, okay, that's a cool name. I said, um, I said, you got a boyfriend? And before she said it, before she responded, I said, you know what? That's a stupid question. 
I don't even know why. I, I know you got a boyfriend. So you don't even got to answer that. But check this out. I really want to be your friend. And she was like, dude, you don't even know me. I'm like, I know I don't know you, but, you know, I want to get to know you. She was like, well, I'm going to let you know right now. I don't got no boyfriend. So you good. And I was like, so when she said that, y'all, that was a green light for me to proceed. Because if she wasn't feeling me, you know, she would have just hit me with whatever to get me away from her. So I guess she found me attractive and was interested in what I was talking about. So I'm like, oh, I bet. So she, when she told me that she had, that she did have a boyfriend, I was like, you trying to get something from up here? Cause remember y'all, this girl is short. She was like, yeah, could you grab me that? Now back then y'all, back then Dante used to work out. Okay. So when I, I had to be, I had a beater on. So, you know, I had the arms flexing, you know, I was just flexing just to flex. So I reached up there and grabbed her. She was like, you work out? I said, yeah, I can work you out too. And she was like, boy, stop playing. You can't handle this. I'm like, man, all right. All right. So I, I, I think it was, um, I put some honey or something like a, a hun I think it was some honey. It was something like that. I had to reach for. So when I gave it to her, she like started touching my arms, you know, like pressing right here, pressing right there, pressing right there. So she was like, yeah, you want to know what to do with this? I said, listen, I will pick you up off your feet and do you crazy. She, oh, 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 wait, oh, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. Y'all let's move the story along. Cause you know, due to YouTube guidelines and stuff, I was about to get too carried away with it, but anyway so we we get to the checkout and i told her like you hungry and she was like not really i was like well i know this chinese spot um and they they got some real good food and i told her about it now i'm not gonna tell y'all what chinese spot because my ex don't even know that this even happened happening well yes she does yes she do yes she do well and anyway the reason why I don't want to give up the Chinese location because it's just some personal stuff that happened to me in my life that involves some other people. Not no criminal stuff, but some other stuff that if I tell y'all the name of this Chinese restaurant, some people that's close to me are going to be like, wait a minute, hold up. So that's why I'm not going to say the name of the Chinese restaurant. So um, she like, all right, all right, let's go, whatever. So... I ain't got no car, y'all. She got the car. So when we get outside, she like, uh, you going to follow me? I'm going to follow you. I was like, I was like I, be honest, I'm on a bus. She was like, you on a bus? I said, yeah, I'm on a bus. She was like, all right, this is my car right here. Come on. So, yeah, and yes, y'all, like I said, I was living, I was living foul. I was a dirty mother. You know, I had my priorities all the way wrong. Okay. So. We get in the car, and so we drive into the Chinese place. So when we get there, I see my current girl sister up in there. So when we pull up, I see her right there. Like, she getting her food, and she about to walk off. So I'm being real hesitant to get out the car. So I grabbed the girl, like, wrist a little bit and was like, man, what did you mix with? You know, trying to hold conversation to so so my girl sister can leave out of this out of the restaurant and don't see me so she like what you mean when i mix up i'm like you just so god dang gorgeous i i never i'm and, and y'all no cap no cap outside of my wife this this chick was gorgeous and i said you just so god dang gorgeous what you mix with you like black and arabic or something she got the smile she said no i'm not arabic i'm just black and I said, oh, okay. I said, you sure you ain't got nothing mixed? You ain't mixed with nothing? She like, no, I'm, I'm my mama black, my daddy black, uh, my grandparents black. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So when my girl sister leave out and get in her car, she gone, you know, we pop out. So we in a line, y'all. I'm standing there and I'm ordering the orange chicken. And, you know, she paid for it. So I'm like, hey, can I get a hug? She was like. 
Why you want a hug for? I said, because, man, you just, I don't know. She said, boy, stop playing. So she just gave me a hug. Now, y'all know how Dante do it. So when I, you know, wrap my arms around it, it wasn't no church hug neither, you know. I put my hand, like, on the back of her back and slid it down to her butt, and I gripped it. Just to, I just tried to get the feel, just, just try to see how far I can go with this. And she ain't stopped me, so I'm like, all right, then, bet. So she was like, boy, you was nasty. I was like, listen, I ain't going to lie, man. I want you bad. She was like, what you want with me? I said, man, stop playing. Now, I, listen, y'all, I told y'all I was a dirty, slime boy, sleazy individual back then. So she was like, boy, you will not know what to do with this. So I'm like, all right, we going to see. So we get the food and get back in the car. So she was like, we going to your place or we going to my place? I'm like, now at this time, y'all, I had a girlfriend and I had a one bedroom apartment and there's no way she was coming to my crib. So I said, no, we can go to your crib. I said, unless you got a man there or something. She was like, no, I ain't got no man. I told you I ain't got no boyfriend. Now I'm going to be real with y'all. I was thinking now. I was thinking to myself, like, this girl is so dang fine. How do she got to have a baby daddy or something, right? So I said, you ain't got no kids or nothing? She was like, well, we'll talk about that when we get to the house. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I kind of got a little worried just a little bit. So we pull up to her apartment. She got a nice apartment. And then I'm, when I say a nice apartment, I mean a really nice apartment. So... When we get up and I'm looking around, she was like, take your shoes off at the door, this and that. Like, she got money, money. So I'm like, I'm looking around. And I said, oh, okay. She she a stripper. Yep. And yeah, y'all, she was a stripper. So I'm like, you you from around here? Did you go to school at so, so-and-so? She was like, no, I, no, I'm from Chicago. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So we talking and we talking, and um, I, I'm not going to, I really want to say this, but, you know, I can't say it, but let's put it this way. She's, okay, well, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to walk y'all through what happened, but I, I'm going to have to leave out the expletive things, okay? So she was like, um. Well, go ahead and eat your food. I'm about to go in the room and freshen up. Like, the way she was looking at me, like she wanted it. So I'm like, man, it is what it is. So she go in her room, right? Yo, about three, four minutes later, she come out and like this, um, how can I put it? It was like a one piece, um, lace, like a lace thing, like, I don't know what it was, but it was like a one piece jumpsuit, but lace, like cut up lace, whatever it was, y'all. I was like, God damn. Right? So she walked up to me and I'm I'm I I still got some shrimp fried rice on my fork going toward my mouth and I just dropped the fork. And she you know, she gave me a hug. Now, I don't like to kiss. I don't like to kiss, but and remember, I, I tower over her. So she trying to kiss me in the mouth and I'm turning, you know, let her get the neck. So then you remember, y'all, she's short. She about five, 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 four. So I pick her up. Y'all know how Dante do it. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we even go on, let me tell y'all something, right? I know I always tell y'all that nobody need to be in other people's bedroom. But like I said, this one, I was 20, 21 years old. And it, it's a whole point to this story right here. It's a whole point to the story right here. So I pick her up off her feet, y'all. And, you know, she wrap her legs around my waist. And, you know, she's trying to kiss me. But y'all know I don't play them type of games, right? And I'm going to be real. I'm going to tell y'all why I, de I didn't. And especially a random chick, period. I did not want to kiss no random chick in the mouth because how I felt, I felt like, you know, what about she just got done going down on somebody or whatever like that? I'm not about to be kissing you in the mouth, L, right? So that's my reason of why I never like kissing or barely kiss 
you know, that that's just how I was programming. So I pick her up and I'm like, dang, this girl light. So I'm like, yo, I'm about to have crazy fun with her. So we it start getting hot. It start getting heavy. So we I like walk her to her bedroom, y'all, and I lay her down. So, you know, I take off my beater. Y'all know how I do it, the whole six-pack. So, she like, boy, you better stop playing and get this. And I said, man, hold on, hold on. I said, oh, dang. Now, let me tell y'all something. Dante say safe sex is the best sex. So, I don't care how bad she was. I had to. And then me knowing to myself that she was a stripper, I'm nah, that's, that's out. I'm not about to go on this raw. So, I'm like, hold on, you got you got a condom? She like, yeah, some over there in the drawer right there. So I went over there. I'm sifting through it. I'm like, God dang, man, it ain't she ain't got no magnum up in here. So I'm looking. I'm like, hold on, man. I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like, all right, man, this just gonna have to do. So I popped that thing on, and then it broke off. I said, wait a minute. I said, God dang, hold up. So I'll grab another, it was a Trojan, I remember. I put that thing on, I'm about to get in it, then pot and pop, popped off too. I said, God dang, I said, you ain't got no magnums or nothing? She like, no, I, I mean, you got to just use what's in there. <sighs> Dante, now listen, y'all, we all got a pass. So y'all cannot, don't judge me, because y'all done did this too. So let me know when it count for all my dirty dogs out there, right? And you dirty women out there, and we, we all was we all got a pass. So let me know, have y'all ever done this? So what I did, I went in, I went in the kitchen, right, and I grabbed some saran wrap, and well, that's how it happened. So get back in the room, and like I said, due to YouTube, um. Uh, guidelines. I can't say what happened, but I'm going to tell y'all this. When I say I, I put it down, that's what I mean. When I say I put it down, that that's what I mean. I'm talking about standing up on the floor, off the bed, on the dresser. It, hey, it went down. Now, in the process of it going down, why my girlfriend was calling me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My girlfriend was calling me at this time. And I butt pocket dialed her. So she hearing the moaning. She hearing the groaning. She hearing me power bombing this girl, right? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I don't take back what me and old girl did. But, um... My girlfriend was hearing it all, y'all. Oh yeah, she heard it all. She she heard me flipping her and dipping her, right? So we gonna fast forward, okay? We gonna fast forward because this this video ain't about what y'all think it's about. Now we finna get to the crazy part of this, right? Whew. So me and her get done what we doing, and I'm, when I say I put her to bed. I put her to bed. I'm talking about, I, I guess I might can say this. She came so god dang hard. She like seized up, was shaking, and just let out a gasp and just went to bed. She fainted. I don't know what happened. She just, that was it. So I'm sitting there at the edge of the bed, and I go in her bathroom and get a towel and wipe off and, you know, Put my stuff back on and I I dipped. So I supposed to have been going to the store to go grab some stuff for the house, right? I totally forget about the groceries that's in her car. So I leave and I jump on the bus and I go I go to my apartment, right? So my girl sitting on the couch, right? And she like shaking. When I come in, I said, what's up, baby? She didn't say nothing. I said, you all right? She was like, who the fuck you was out there effing? Who the F you was effing? I instantly thought about her sister, you know, the one I seen at the um, 
at the Chinese restaurant. Maybe she followed me or something. I don't know. I'm like, man, I wasn't effing nobody. I was at the store. She's like, if you was at the store, where was, man, F all that. You, I heard you. I heard you. I heard you having, I heard you. I said, man, you ain't hear me doing nothing. She was like, oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I, I heard you. I, ca I called you. And so she, so she called me and that was a right, that was the time right there. So I'm like, man, I wasn't, I said, okay, I, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real. I have to think of my feet, y'all. I said, I'm going to be real. I was thinking about you so much, right? Like, I really want to, you know, mess around. I was thinking about you so much that I I just, I went to my cousin's house and I was watching a porno. So, yeah, that's what you heard. She said, what? I said, yeah, I was watching a, a video. Like, come on, man. You know, I want to do nothing like that to you. She was like, Nah, nah, I, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I said, what, I mean, it's, that's what it was. I was watching the porno. And she was like, no, let, let me smell you there. Let me smell you. Now, when you young and dumb, like I was, right? Like I was. See, I washed up with Irish Spring, right? Me thinking like, okay, yeah, you can smell me. You can smell me. That's the first sign. If if you out, especially us men and, and, and fellas, I, I'm sorry that I, I got to blow the spot up, but it is what it is. If so, when she she go down there, and she she like she smelling. She like, B, why the F you smell like fresh soap? And she tried to punch me in my you know what? And I said, oh, 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 oh. So I backed up and she was like, you, you cheating on me, you cheating on me. So she got to punch it on me and I'm like blocking because y'all know I don't hit women. And plus I had, that was, I was in the wrong. I was the dirty dog scoundrel. So I'm like, oh, I'm trying to pull my pants up and she hit me, punching on me. I'm like, oh, 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 man, stop, man. What you doing? What you doing? Ain't, ain't nobody cheating on you, man. Stop, man. What you doing? So I finally get my pants up and I done grabbed it because she done socked me in the jaw. So I done grabbed it. I done threw it down on the couch. I'm like, man, stop, man. Ain't nobody cheating on you. Oh, so uh, she like, she like, I'm tired of you. I'm so sick of you. Get out my, get out my house. I'm like, I ain't going nowhere. This is my house too. Right? She like, oh, you going to go. You going to go. Now, she couldn't do nothing with me, man. So. I'm like, man, I'm not going nowhere. So I let her up and I start walking towards the bedroom. She take off towards the kitchen, right? Now, I done told y'all in a prior story that one of my crazy exes done stabbed me before when I was a teenager. So when she went to that to that kitchen, I knew what she was grabbing. Yo, I hurry up and booked it right out the front door. So I'm running out there with no shoes on, my boxers on, and no shirt on, right? We're going to end it right there because I want to give y'all a part two, but we just going to end it right there because I got to get ready to drop my little cousin off at school. But, um, fellas, fellas out there, if you in a committed relationship, man, keep it at home, man. Don't be out there living a dirty, dirty dog life like I used to. All right. And with that, y'all, oh, the movie is coming out in October, okay? My movie is coming out in October. I'm going to post the, um, this is what the movie looked like right here. The, the, um, the poster looked like. We need to raise money so I can pay for these permits, y'all. We need to raise money so I can pay for these permits so we can shoot at these certain locations, the Cash App, the PayPal is in the description and in the comment section. Come on, y'all. I know this is the Dante Show Network, but y'all are the network. Without y'all, there will be no me. So come on, y'all. Not only y'all need to donate. I don't care if it's a dollar. You can put it. A dollar will go a long way. There's just one less dollar that got to come out of my pocket for this movie, okay? So with that, y'all, hit that like button, share this video, and keep it at home. I'm out. Whenever you go to an Airbnb or a hotel, make sure y'all look in the vents. Make sure y'all look. Matter of fact, y'all need to go to Amazon and get one of them device scanners because this story right here is coming straight 
from the Bronx, New York at an Airbnb. Now, the dude that's in the thumbnail is the actual creep that got caught doing this dirty deed. Let's get to the story. Before we get to the story, I need for y'all to hit that like button and share this video because we need to spread this. So, I'm not going to say his name due to YouTube regulations, but that's his face. That he's from the Bronx. So, he decides to get him an Airbnb. And now, he don't got the money to put money inside of an Airbnb. He was just renting it out. So what he would do, he would install cameras inside of a rented Airbnb that he rented and tape record people doing what they do. Now, I, I me, me per se, I can't rock with that on many levels. One of the biggest levels is that why would you want to see somebody use the bathroom? You know what I mean? Like, especially doing a number two. Like, that is like the most foulest, disgustingest thing that you could ever do. Like, I don't know. There's some sick people out here. So, he ended up getting this Airbnb, and he installed these cameras in. Now, the, how we even know that he did this? Well, it's a whole investigation, and I'm going to walk you all through the whole thing. So you get this family of three, a husband, a wife, and a daughter. The daughter ain't nothing but 14, 15 years old. So she, I guess she's using the shower, and she got this Bluetooth, like a shower Bluetooth to listen to music, whatever. But, like, every time she hangs this device up, like, over where the tile rack is at, it's like she gets some interference. So... She she taking a shower and she like, why is that happening? Like every time I put this Bluetooth over here, it get like this interference. So she'll move it, so she ain't really think nothing about it. So she she moved it and put it over here. Right? Next thing you know, she get out cool. Her mama go get in the shower. And her mama like, hey, let me see your Bluetooth. I wanna listen to some music. So she give her mama the Bluetooth and her mama using it and she put it right there by like the towel rack and it's the interference. Now where the towel rack is at, y'all, <clears throat> imagine that it's standing frontwards towards the shower, the shower head, right? Right there immediately to your right, immediately to your right is the towel rack right there. So her mama put it right there and she like, huh, that's odd. <clears throat> so she pushed it over a little bit more and it's interference even more. So she pushed it back over to the left. So she like, huh, maybe some faulty wiring or something. So she just take it out like her daughter did and just moved it on the other side of the shower. So she showering, blah, 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 blah. So now she get out and she like, she just feel like something ain't right. And women and men out there, I need for y'all to pay attention. If y'all feel like somebody watching y'all or something just ain't right, sometimes maybe that's that intuition inside you letting you know that something ain't right. So she like, uh, something's giving me a creepy vibe. So she cut the shower off and she called her husband. She like, blah, blah, blah. Hey, come here right quick. I need for you to look at something. So he going and he like, what's up, baby? She like, hey, I... I got like this interference and I know you good with technology. Like why, why would this be going on with the Bluetooth? So he like, what you talking about? So she was like, look at this. So she cut the Bluetooth on and she put it over there and it was interference. And with his background, he's a tech type of dude. So he like, hold on, hold up. So he take the Bluetooth and he move it around all over the shower. And when he get to a Pacific Park, again, he like, wait a minute. And now he looking, and he looking, and see he see a hole cut out. He like, wait a minute. It was like a clear tape that was covering like this little hole by that part. So he stuck his finger through there, and he touched something. So then he like, oh, heads no. So he said, baby, cut the light off. So when she cut the light off, 
you can clear it. Now, if you were just looking at with it with the naked eye and you really wouldn't catch this, but he caught it. So he seen it, he peeled the tape off, and now he looking at there's a lens right there. So he like, what the f oh heck no. So she like what? He like, man, it's a camera right here. So she like, what? Now, immediately she thought about their daughter. She said, our daughter just used the shower. He like, oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. So he said, wait a minute. So he got the Bluetooth and he started going around the bathroom. And this is why I tell y'all. Remember what I said in the beginning? Like, I don't, I don't understand how creeps be sitting up there putting these in bathrooms, especially when somebody doing a number two, and especially when they wiping themselves and you seeing that crap. Come on, man. These people got sick fetishes. So he ended up waving it over the toilet. And like there's a spot that's over like in the center right there. It was one right there bearing right down. So he like, oh, my God. Imagine the violation, how violated a person would feel. So he like, oh, heck no. So he called an Airbnb person. And they get to the owner, and he he called the police and everything. He called the police like, man, this Airbnb got cameras around here, and they up there. They would take me go. We got this little daughter, my wife, and all this and that, man. Man, oh, heck no. So the cops come. The Airbnb owner get there. He trying to fight with the Airbnb owner. The Airbnb is this short Chinese cat that barely speak any English. He like I don't know what's going on. I don't I I I don't I don't know. I don't do this. Did not me, right? I'm sorry. And, and shout out to all the Chinese people out there. I might even be saying he could have been Korean or Japanese, but I, I think he was Chinese though. But shout out to all the Chinese people. So he like nah, -uh, that ain't me. I I don't do that. I I don't do that. That 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 ain't me. I did not do that, right? So <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> I got. Drinks of water. Hold up. Oh, I just woke up. You know, my bad. I had to get this morning story out. So he like, nah, -uh, that not me. I didn't do that. So you know, the Chinese, his wife, pull up too. Like, what's going on? They, they, they say I put something in wall. They say I put camera in wall, and they like, no, no, you, you. So if you ain't do this, mama. He be like, no, 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 no. I didn't do this. So they, so this is how the investigation went. So the, a good detective pulled up on the scene. And he was looking around and he was like, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna take this case, right? So he take the case. So he, he tell the Chinese people like, hey, I need a log of the last twenty people that stayed in this Airbnb. So they provided the list, and they was going through, you know, they was looking at the list and seeing anybody that was, you know, on the registry, you know, the, the sex offender registry, um, who had criminal backgrounds, prior felons, all that. So it was isolating and isolating and isolating. So it came down to two people. It came down to this cat right here that's in the thumbnail, and it came to this white lady that had prior charges, but this was like in the nineties. Like she was, she, she ended up sleeping with a kid at her school. She was a lunch lady and she slept with a kid. But here's the thing about this though. This woman <clears throat> is actually in Mali where they tracked her down in Mali. Cause her people told her like, yeah, she and Mali vacation, whatever. So they really couldn't, they couldn't do nothing with her. So they had to roll with dude right here. So they end up knocking on his door. Right? The Bronx PD opened up. He answered the door. They like, hey, um, <clears throat> what was you at at this turn time? Blah, 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 blah. He like, why? Why, why you want to know? Well, because we have reason to believe that you put a camera in the Airbnb and, you know, with your record and blah, 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 blah. Here's the kicker, y'all. While they talking to dude, his door is like cracked open. 
but he's watching something on his television. So now it's two detectives. One of the detectives talking to him, the other dude is like looking in like, hold on. So he looked and he pushed the door. Now he didn't step in, he just pushed the door like hard. While this dude is literally watching somebody in the shower on a on one of them type of TVs, on one of them camera things at a different Airbnb. He they grabbed him so fast and threw his butt on the floor, put the knee to his back, all that. Matter of fact, they probably even overdid him, but good for them. So they throw his hands behind his back, read him his rights, and the detective go up in the crib with him in handcuffs, and they set him down. So they like, so you don't know nothing about what's up with this. He like, oh, no, 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 I'm watching YouTube, I'm watching YouTube. Just don't look like no YouTube to me, right? So he like, listen, uh, okay, uh, okay, I'll tell, I tell you the truth. I'm sick, man, uh, I'm sick. Uh, I need help. Uh, I, 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 I just been going through a lot. They ain't trying to hear that, man. If you know that you sick, hold on, this is sidebar, y'all. If you know you sick and you know that you got issues like that and you uh, you can admit that verbally, Check yourself into a uh, uh, um, a rehab center. Check, go get therapy. They got free hotlines out there and stuff, man. Stop making excuses. He talking about, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to do it, man. I I I've been battling with demons lately. Nah, nah. If you've been battling with demons and you know that you got this sick fetish and all this and that, you know that you can equally get help. And he talking about he's sorry. Yeah, you ain't. You not sorry. No, no, no. I take that back. He is sorry. He's sorry that he got caught. Now, here's the thing, y'all. When they fully shook down this dude's apartment, this dude has so many DVDs and VHSs. Now you like y'all like VHSs. Hey, this dude. Y'all remember when I told y'all this dude was on the registry? This dude. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna. Nah, I ain't even gonna do that. But this dude. So they got. So they was going through this footage, right? And this dude would have a van. He would go around the city and had his big old camcorder just tape recording women. Like he'd be in a van and he, the women would be like maybe 12 feet away or on the next block. And he'd just be zooming in on women walking down the street like some straight up creep stuff, man. And then he had pictures of random girls. When I say girls, I mean girls, like from the ages of 10 to like 16, like a whole bunch of picture books. And he, ugh, dude, just a real creep. So he got all this type of footage and stuff. And they like, yo, this, this dude is wilding out. So they end up taking him down to the police station. He's sitting there crying and talking about, oh, I just want to, I just want to delete myself, man. I just want to delete myself from this world. Y'all, I can't say the real word, but I just want to delete myself, man. Oh, man. He crying and stuff. So, so he like, man. So cat's coming to him like, hey, man, what, what's up with you? What, what you do? He like, man, I, I'm just sick, man. I don't need to be here. I need to be in the hospital. I need to be in the hospital. So, so this one, Dude named Ty, like, what you mean? What what you do? What happened? He like, man, I I I just got caught with some videos I ain't supposed to have. Hey, when you in Rikers Island and you say some crap like that, that's an immediate warrant for a beat down. So Ty, like, what you in here for for to for some what? He like, yeah, man, I don't need to be here though. I need to be pop pop pop. Got to, he took off on him. <sighs> hey, y'all, listen. I'm going live tonight. That's right. Y'all going to finally see my beautiful face again. I'm going live tonight at 7 p.m. Y'all make sure y'all in the building. Y'all ain't, want, ain't going to want to miss this one. Hit that like button and share this video. I'm out. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Last thing. Make sure... 
when y'all go to these hotels and these Airbnbs and y'all to hear some interference with y'all devices, y'all might want to be careful and check that out. And now I'm out. Before we start this video, I need everybody to answer this question for me. What should the age of consent be? Let me know in the comment section. So you got this older cat from New York, the Bronx. He is friends with this man that was selling you know what, and he ended up going to prison for 10 years for, you know, selling you know what. Now, this man had a wife and he had a daughter, and the daughter is 14 years old. Now, the daughter is kind of wild. She out here running the streets, but she ain't messing around. She ain't being promiscuous at all. She just out here hanging with the wrong crowd and all this and that. Now, her dad's so-called friend sees her doing this, and he come up to her. He like, man, you need to go home, girl. And you ain't grown and all this and that. She like, man, get out of here. She call him Unk. Man, get out of here, Unk. Man, I'm, I'm, I ain't even doing nothing now. I'm just chilling. He like, girl, you need to take your butt home. You know your dad will be mad at you. And she like, man, my dad is locked up. He shouldn't have never been doing what he did. Man, he would have a say so. And he like, well, you know, I'm your dad's friend, so I got, I got to make sure you straight out here. You need some money. You need some weed. You need some. You need anything? She like, hold on, uh, did you just say, do I need some weed? He like, oh, my bad, but I'd rather give it. I'd rather you get it for me than get it from somebody else out here. And they lace it and put something in it. And how you messed up out here. And she was like, you know what? Come to think about it, you right. You is right, huh? Yeah. Yeah, let me get that. So he hit her off with some, right? And give her like $20. Now, let me tell y'all something. Right now, what he doing, he grooming her. He grooming her. Do y'all remember when I told y'all, like, in prison slang, we talking about the fast, with, with the slow con, with a hard press and the soft press? Right now, he's soft pressing. So, <clears throat> he, like, so days would go on, and he'd just always find himself where she at. And he just keep giving her money. He keep giving her, you know, weed and stuff like that. So one day... He, she ended up going to this hood party, and it's like over a hundred people there, a hundred teens there, and somehow, some way, he just make his way down the block, you know, talking to other teenagers. And dude, look every bit of about forty, fifty years old, so he look out of place. But hey, this the Bronx, this New York, weird stuff happens. So he just kicking it with some teenagers, and when he see her. He like, hey, what you doing out here? She like, oh, I'm about to go to this party. And she like, what you doing out here? He like, you know, I'm just trying to get these bags off. So she like, okay, cool. So he like, here, here you go. I got something for you. So she was like, just give it to me after the party, unk. So she go in a party. And about 10 minutes later, now she in there dancing. And about 10 minutes later, he find himself up in the party. And he behind her. Now, the light, now this type of party, the lights is not on. It's like the lights is cut off, and, you know, they got the music. They got, like, the LED lights in there. Y'all know how these Brooklyn parties is in these townhomes. So she don't really know who she dancing on, but she knows she dancing on somebody, but she don't know who it is. So when, like, the song go off, you know, he like grabbing on and touching on. She moving his hands, but she's still dancing. Next thing you know, she turned around to see who her assailant is that's, you know, roping her. And it's Unk. And she's like, what are you doing? He like, oh, oh, my bad. My bad. Man, I thought you was one of these other chicks, man. My bad. First of all, hold up. You know dang well you are in a teen party. So what you mean? You every bit 45, 50 years old, you have no business being up in this party. And he knew exactly who he was behind also. So he like, oh, my bad, my bad. I, oh, man, I thought you was somebody else. And who, who did you think she was? A grown-up? Come on, man, stop playing these military mind games. So 
She like, Unc, man, you tripping. He like, man, hold on. Let, let me, I, let, I need to talk to you. Let, let me talk to you right quick. So she like, what you want to talk about? He like, let, let's talk outside. So he like, listen, I know your pops, he locked up. And, you know, he ain't coming home for at least 10 years. And you're going to be about 24, 25 years old when he get out. You know, these streets is dangerous out here. And, you know, I'm, I just I just want to look out for you. And plus, you know, you, you, you cute. And she like, huh? Now, I don't know, y'all, if the cannabis done set in. I don't know because they was hot boxing in the party. So maybe she was... How can I say her brain was clouded or whatever, but she like, you said I'm cute. He like, yeah, man, I've been checking you out for like the last two years. That means y'all, he been checking her out since she was 12 years old. So she like, man, uh, you tripping, you tricking. He like, no, no, I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping. No, I just really feel like we got like a connection and I just want to, you know, I, to be real with you, I ain't gonna lie. I I want to talk to you. Like I want to I want to be your man. And she like, whoa, Unc, you 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 really tripping? You bugging, Unc? You bugging? That that's what she's saying. She was saying you bugging. That was that's the New York term of you tripping. You bugging, Unc? He like, no, I'm I'm not bugging, man. I mean, just really think about it. I've been giving you all this, all this cannabis. I've been giving you money, dang there, every day. It's, I mean, it's kind of like we together anyway, you know what I'm saying? And she like, man, Unc, man, but you old, though. He like, no, nah, but listen, I've been out here, right? You know, I've I seen a couple of things. I've been around the block. I, I know how to treat a woman. All right, if you know how to treat a woman, then why you, never mind, y'all. Anyway, hit that like button for me right quick cuz we finna get we finna get to the story. So, she like, "Nah, uh, nah, um, I'm cool. I'm I'm straight." So, he so she's like, "I'm about to go back into the party." Right when she turned around to walk off, he like grabbed her by her wrist. And she's like, "What's up, um?" He like, "Listen, don't tell don't don't tell your moms about this, all right? And definitely don't tell your pops about this. She was like, I'm not going to tell my mama nothing. I'm dang sure I ain't going to tell my pops nothing. He like, yeah, don't do that because, you know, he might look at it as a different way. And he locked up and, you know, we don't want him to get into no trouble, you know. So let's let's just keep this between us. So she like, yeah, man, I'm not going to tell. I ain't no snitch. Now let me tell you all something right quick. Right now he playing military mind games again. He trying to get the feel. He trying to see how far he can go with this. Cause this this is why he said don't tell your mama, tell your daddy. Because he know he know that the mama can call the police. Now I could be wrong, y'all. So anybody from New York, let me know if what's the age of consent is. I'm pretty sure it's not no dang fourteen. I think it might be sixteen, seventeen, or eighteen. So. That's why I said in the, in the beginning, let me know what the age of consent should be, y'all. But in New York particularly, let me know what the age of consent is. So he know that if the mama knew about this, she could call the police and get him locked up. Then he'd be in there with pops. So, and he also know that she loved her daddy. And she don't want her daddy to know, you know, spass out in prison and get extra time. So right now, he just getting the feel. He trying to set his play up owner so some days ago by and just not really sitting right with the girl so she would see him he'd be like hey baby girl and she'd go the other way this would go on for like three or four days so now she about to go to school it's like seven o'clock in the morning she walking down the street and he just corner her he just come out of nowhere like hey man what's up what's what's going on with you man why you why you acting like that? She like, acting like what? He like, I mean, you acting like <clears throat> I did something to you when you like trying to avoid me and stuff. Like, what? what's up with that? I, th I thought we was cool. You need some weed? You need some money? She like, no, uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. He like, listen, man, I know the other day was kind of weird, but I, I would just let you know how I felt. I mean, it ain't nothing wrong with it. And he like, man, I just... 
I mean, she 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 like she like don't be weird. He like you don't be weird. And she's like, look, I gotta go to I gotta go to school, man. I, I gotta go to school. Now he's standing in her way, like he ain't trying to let her proceed. She like, would you get out my way? He like, man, hey, I gave you money, man. I gave you weed too, so you gonna have to you gonna have to give me something. She like, what you mean? I gotta give you something? He like, man, you know what I mean? Shoot, it ain't nothing free in this world, man. You better ask your pops. She like, man, move out my way. And he like, man, you going to at least give me a hug or give me something. And she like, man, move out my way. So she kind of like shoved him and she walked off. And he like, all right, all right, say less, say less. So she go to school and, you know, she get through her day and she just, you know, thinking about what just happened real heavy, you know, real heavy. So she get out of school and she like, man, I don't know, man. This this dude just real creepy, man. He real creepy. He just keeps showing up everywhere I'm at. And he already came on to me. And then he just pulled this mess this morning before I went to school. So she walking. And she walking. And he come out of nowhere. He just grab her. And she like, man, let me go, man. Let me go. He like, no, man, give me a hug. Give me a hug, man. She like, man, let me go. I'm going to scream. I'm going to scream. He was like, all right, man. All right, let, I'm going to let you go. She got to walking off. He was like, hey, listen, listen, let me just take you out. Let me take you out to dinner some tonight so I can apologize to you. And she like, no, man, leave me alone, man. Stop messing with me. Stop talking to me. I don't want nothing from you. He like, listen, I just, I'm your unk, man. She like, I don't want to hear that. I'm, I'm tired of, I don't want to hear that unk, man. You ain't my dang uncle. You just my daddy friend. And if he knew that you was out here trying to mess with me, a 14-year-old, he would have had your head. He like, hey man, chill out, man. Chill. And she was so she was like, look, if you if you say something else to me, I'm telling my moms. I'm telling my moms on you. He like, all right, man, whatever, whatever. So she go home. Now when she get in the house, she look real disturbed. Her mama like, what what's going on with you? She like nothing, mama. I just had a long day. She like, well, um, you want to talk about it? She like, nah, ma. It's it's all good. It's it's good. She like, are you sure? She like, yeah, ma. I'm I'm just gonna go in here and lay down. She say, all right. Well, I'm about to go to work. I I'll, I'll be home probably around midnight. She like, all right, ma. So she take a nap. Next thing you know, maybe about two three hours later. She hear like tapping at her window. She she stayed on the first floor, right, of a tenement building. So she hear like some tapping on her bedroom window. So at first it was faint, and then it was like in threes, like. And she like, hold on, who the, man, who was that? Y'all already know who it is. It's Unk. Unk. It's at her window. Talking about, hey, listen, man, I just want to apologize. She's like, get away from my window before I call the police. He's like, listen, man, I just need to tell you something. I just need to tell you. She's like, what? What is it? He like, listen, I know I've been acting weird. Like, you you call it weird, but I really am attracted to you, and I just can't stop thinking about you. She like, you really need to go. You really need to go. He like, no, but wait, wait. I, I, I just want you to know something. If if we go move, if we move to out there in Utah, we, we could get married. Like, we can really get married. We can be together. She was like, if you don't get the F away from my window, I am going to call the police and get you locked up. He like, what you mean you gonna call the police, man? What 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 you mean? If gay people out here can say love is love, why can't I be with you? She like, what are you talking about? He like, yeah, I mean, if 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 gay people can get together and be together, why can't I be with you? Well, I mean, that ain't fair. Why can't I be now he getting loud? And why I can't be with you? If gay people can get married and stuff, why can't I be with you? That's some bull. That's some BS. Man, love don't Love don't got no age on it, man. Like I said, if gay people can get married, why can't I get married with you, man? That's some straight-up bullshit, man. She was like, if you don't leave, I'm calling the police. I'm about to call the police. And she grabbed the phone. He like, all right, man, man, forget it. Forget it. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. So 
he leave. And so she like, you know what? Forget this, man. Forget this. I'm I'm not about to I'm not about to keep going through with this with this stalker dude. So she get on the phone. She called her mom. She like, Ma, I gotta talk to you. Her mom like, I'm at work. Her mom was a waitress at the diner down the street. Ma, I already gotta talk to you. She like, baby, I'm at work. Just just give me a minute. She like, Ma, Unc just came to the house and he basically tried to come in the house and do something to me. She like, what? What you mean? Unc came to the house trying to. I, hold on, here I come. Here I come, baby. Here I come. So the mama tell her boss, like, yo, I got to go. I got to go. My my baby need me. He like, all right, hurry up. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So the mama get this. She's like, what's going on? So the girl crying to her mama, like, man, ever since Pops done got locked up, Uncle been trying to, he been giving me money. He been giving me weed. He been trying to come on to me. And he talking about he want to marry me and want me to run away with him to Utah so we can get married and all this and that. So she like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. So she like, uh-uh. So she go grab her back. And, she, you know, her daughter get dressed and they go out the house. She see Unc standing out there in front of the bodega. And, and she like, you up there trying to have to my daughter? You trying to be with my daughter? What's wrong with you, you dang pervert? You 50 years old and you trying to talk to my 14-year-old? He like... Man, watch out, man, watch out. She like, no, nah, you watch out. If you ever say something to my daughter again, I'm going to bust your dome piece wide open. He like, man, man, move around, man. Anybody try, man, watch out. You know, the other dudes looking at him like, oh, you wild and you wild. And he like, man, watch out, man. She like, I'm going to say it again. If you ever try to talk to my 14-year-old daughter again, I'm going to knock your teeth out your mouth with this bat. He like, all right, man, whatever, man, whatever. So she store him off. All right, y'all. This is where this story get real crazy. About two weeks later, while he watching the news, right? The 7 o'clock news. Why this dude mug shot? And yes, this is the dude in the thumbnail right here. Why this dude mug shot pop up? He done pulled a 12-year-old in the alley and violated her. Oh, like I said, y'all, in the beginning, what should the age of consent be? I need to know that in the comment section. If y'all like this content, y'all hit that like button for me. Share this video. It might be a teenager out there that might need to hear this story. If some creep... Some creep is messing with you. Man, go tell somebody. Tell your mama, tell your daddy, call the police. These creeps operate in the, in the shadows. The Bible says what happens in the dark shall come to light. And this creep, well, he getting his just due. And with that, y'all, I'm out. Y'all gonna be mad at me with this video. Now, I understand when you have to sell certain things to get by and you can't, and you're back against the wall. I understand that. But this story ain't about that. This story is about a low down, dirty scoundrel. Now, you got a cousin. We're going to say cousin one and cousin two. Cousin one just got out of the penitentiary doing four years. Okay. He got 20 years over his head, still over his head. Now, he out here on parole, and his cousin come to him after about a month when he when he went dude home. And like, look, bruh, I know you messed up. Um, I don't want to see you out here all messed up, man. I know you've been out here looking for jobs and stuff, and I know you on parole, but Man, I don't want to see you out here like that, bro. I'm going to give you a bird or two to get back on your feet. Cousin that just did four years and still got 20 over his head. Like, no, nah, man, I, no, nah, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay with my head down, man. I'm going to, I'm going to get through this. He like, come on, cuz I'm telling you, man, get back in the game, bro. Get back in the game. He like, nah, man, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm cooling, man. I just keep putting in these applications and you know i just keep beating my feet it, it is what it is he like no come on bro 
man, ain't nobody hiring you, bro. And then whoever going to hire you, they going to screw you over because they know you're a felon. So you might want to get back in the game. He like, nah, man, I'm, I'm straight. So the low down, dirty scoundrel cousin, like, you know what? Check this out. I got to play. And I got to go to Mexico, right? And if you go with me, we can turn little this and little that to 250000 That's your cut. I get one twenty five. you get one twenty five. Let's do this one run with me, and we going to be straight. That's all you got to do. He like, nah, cuz I'm not doing it. I, nah, I'm, I'm good, bro. I'm, I'm good. He like, all right, man, just just let me know. It's 125000 on the table for you, bro. Let me know. He like, all right, all right, cuz, all right. Let me tell y'all something. And we're going to get to the story. If you got, I don't care if it's a family member. I don't care if it's your so-called friend. If you just did time because you was out there selling, you know what? And your people know you was out there selling, you know what? And they got locked and you got locked up behind that. And they come to you and trying to get you right back in the game. They don't care about you. They don't love you at all. In fact, if you got kids and you got a wife too, they don't care about your kids. They don't care about your wife. I'm going to tell you because if they did, they would not put you in that predicament to get you snatched off these streets or possibly put in a casket for dealing with these streets. Right? So, do. Go out the next day, you know, he go to the Goodwill, put him put him on a suit, one of them thrift store suits, and, you know, he go beat his feet. You know, hey, my name is so-and-so. Um, is y'all hiring? No, nah, we ain't hiring. Cool. Go somewhere else. Hey, my name is so-and-so. No, nah, we ain't hiring. Okay, cool. Hey, do you? No, we ain't hiring. God dang, right? So now he's sitting there, he's thinking that temptation is working his mind, working his mind. He like, man, 125,000 to just go do one run. Man, I, man, I'm I don't know. This this is getting frustrating. So he like, nah, I'm nah, I'm just gonna hold it down. I'm I'm not even gonna no, I ain't even trying to go back to prison, man. So this is what he's saying to himself. So when he get back home, his girl like, hey, listen, you're going to have to do something because I'm doing double shifts and you ain't bringing no money here. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, you need to make some money. He like, listen, girl, I've I been out here. What you want me to do? She like, you need to sell some stuff, man. You need to get back to what you used to doing. He like, no, man, I just did four years in the penitentiary, man. I got 20 years hanging over my head, man. If I get caught doing something, man, I'm gone. She like, man, I get that, but, man, the bills need to be paid around here. He like, all right, man, forget it. All right, man, I'm I, I'm a, I'm a, all right, whatever, man. So she like, all right. So she left and she went to work. So he called his cousin. He like. Hey, cuz, man, tell me that this ain't going to be no type of fugazi. Tell me that this is foolproof. He like, listen, man, when we get down to Texas, right there, we ain't even got to go to the border. It's going to be a car waiting on us. They're going to have them things in the trunk, and all all we just got to do is drive, bro. That's all we got to do is drive. He like, and there's 125 racks, right? He said, yeah. He like, man, all right, bro. All right, when, when do we leave? He like, okay, I'm going to call you right back, cuz. All right, all right, call me back. About an hour go by. His cousin called. Oh, we on for Saturday. Now, today is Thursday, y'all. Today, Thursday. So he like, all right, yep, Saturday. All right, we on. All right, bet. So we going to fast forward to Saturday. It's about. Two, three o'clock in the morning right now. And they almost to the destination. Saturday, early Saturday morning. They get out the car. They see this Escalade, this blacked out Escalade. It's parked right here. They both get out and they approach the vehicle. 
as soon as they get in the car, right? They start the car up. As soon as they start the car up, he accelerate maybe about five miles per hour. Then the car shuts off, right? It just shut down completely. Next thing you see in here is red and blue. Police, 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 police. Wow. So now the cousin that just did that four years in a penitentiary, he looked right at his cousin like, you know, he gave him that look, that 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 death stare look like that. Man, dog, I knew I shouldn't have, I knew I shouldn't have done this, man. Dang, dang, man. I, I'm gone. I'm I'm gone. So his cousin look at him and they just shake it. He, sh he shake his head and he put his head down. Now the police done got to them, unlocked the door, snatched both of them out the car. But here's the thing though, y'all. They snatched the dude that, that did the four years that's on parole. They snatched him out something crazy and threw him straight to the ground, knee to the back, hands behind your back, right? Rough dude up. When they opened up the driver's side to open, to, to get the cousin out, they had to set the whole play up. They just pulled him out gently and walked him to a squad car and put him in there. Oh, yeah. Y'all see where this about to go. Yeah. So a couple days will go by and dude getting interrogated. He like, man, listen, I I just want a lawyer, man. Just give me a lawyer, man. Y'all y'all said y'all already got me and all this. Like, give me a lawyer. So the detective that's working the case is like, listen, I, if you know anything about anything, we can help you. We want to work with you. He like, what you mean? I, I don't know nothing. I don't do nothing. You know, I just... They like, so what was you doing in the car? Man, I was just traveling with my cousin. I was just traveling with my cousin. I don't know. I don't know nothing. You know, he was he was he was keeping to the cold. He was keeping it gutter, right? No snitching, right? They like, listen, man, we're gonna tell you like this. You need if you know any drug dealers out there, you know, some Anybody, just tell us anything, man. Give us, give us some names, and we don't want no low, no, no low level cats. Give us some names. He like, man, I don't know what y'all talking about, man. I don't do that type of stuff, man, and I don't even know about no drugs or nothing like that. So they say, okay, all right, just hold on one second. Then a detective come back in there. Y'all know they like to play the military mind games and turn up the air conditioner on you, right? So they wait for about 20 minutes and then they come back in there with a recorder and they like, now, we gonna ask you again before we play this tape. Is there anything that you want to tell us? Are you talking about you want a lawyer and, you know, you, oh, you, you can get your lawyer, but we want you to listen to this tape right quick. He like, all right. So they press play on the tape. Why his cousin, his cousin that put him on to this play, telling them everything. See, the cousin was an informant. Yeah, he was an informant. He felt like, shoot, he got jammed up in the streets. And he felt like, shoot, my cousin, he, he really the dude that got to connect so you know, I'm just going to set him up so he can give y'all something so I can work my time down. So he said, so basically his cousin set him up because he knew that his cousin knew some big cats, but he been in the penitentiary. So it was just a domino effect. He got caught up. So he put his cousin and just got paroled in this. And now the cousin like, God dang, my own cousin, my own flesh and blood just set me up. And not only he got, what, 20 over his head, now he got another probably 30, 40 years that's going to be tacked on to that. Dude, they never coming home, man. So the detective like, yo, so what you going to do? Is you going to play ball or what? So dude, he sitting there, he like, I ain't no snitch, man. I, I, I ain't no snitch, man. 
But now he's thinking like my cousin, they got me. They got me dead to rights. They got my the cousin had, was wired up when he was calling him, when he came to the house, all that. He set him up, y'all. So he thinking, he like, man, I'm 30 years old. I mean, if, if I don't cooperate at minimum, I got 20 years that I got to walk down. So I'll be 50 on top of this new stuff, man. So I, I ain't getting out till I'm about 100 years old. So he thinking like, you know what? Should I stay, should I stay solid or should I just rat? I, let me tell y'all something before we go on with this story. Y'all got to understand, man, this, the streets is dead. It's dead. Ain't no, that drug dealing, all that crime and stuff. I'm telling you, it, it's over. It's over. When you about 30 years old and you done did time already, I don't think you got another 10 years in you. I don't think you got another 20 years in you. I don't think you can get a judge another 20 years of your life. And a lot of dudes fold. This is why I tell y'all crime do not pay at all, man. It's best to stay legal. Be legal. Make that legitimate money, man. You might got to stay down a little bit until you can get up. It's what's staying down. You get. You might have to struggle a little bit. You might have to save up the Walmart and restaurant checks. You might. You just got. You got to stay down until you can get up. So he he looking at this whole situation like, man, my cousin, my blood cousin, has set me up. They got me dead to rights. I got to walk down this 20 plus whatever they going to give me for not cooperating, man. So he like, man, you know what? Man, I ain't got no kids. I got a, I, I got a girlfriend, but man, man, I, I can't do this time. I can't. I can't. So the detective's like, so you ready to make a statement? You ready to give us some names he like yeah yeah give me yeah give me a pencil and give me a pad he like all right all right i got you let me tell y'all something the street the streets is over let me let me give y'all some advice i don't care how long you knew a cat i don't care if y'all family or not there's no honor amongst thieves. There's no honor amongst criminals. We only got one life to live. Y'all better stay out them streets because just like how Judas betrayed Jesus, tch, hey, don't think that you won't get betrayed. I mean, just think about it. Judas was there when Jesus turn water into wine. Judas was there when Jesus was walking on water. Judas was there when he seen that Jesus healed people with leprosy. He Judas seen Jesus healing the blind, healing the sick. Come on, man. Judas was there when Jesus fed 5,000 human beings with just a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish. Y'all better wake up, smarten up, man. When you do demonic activities, such as giving human beings certain things that you shouldn't give them, that destroying their bodies, their minds, and their souls, and destroying the community, karma. And well, hey, it is what it is. If you like this type of content, share this video. If you like this type of story time, like the video. And with that, y'all, stay out them streets, man. I'm out. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Happy holidays, y'all. Y'all know it would not be right if I didn't give y'all a holiday Christmas story. So... 
you got this cat named Kilo from Detroit, Michigan. Now, from the get-go, he had a bad start in life. Why? His daddy was a dope fiend and his mama was a crackhead. And, I mean, just by the name of Kilo, and no disrespect to anybody out there with the name of Kilo, but they named their son Kilo due to their activities. So, from the ages of 4 to 12 years old, Kilo will find himself in a juvenile justice system, not on the fault of his own, but because of his parents. You know, there was neglect to him. Um, they wasn't feeding him. There wasn't no food in the house. Child Protective Service was always called because they'd see this young boy walking the streets, going to neighbors, asking for food. So, yeah, he grew up kind of messed up. Now, in the process of him growing up, he was in and out of boys' group homes and boys' facilities um, because he started committing crimes as he got older. Now, a family... And I hate to bring race into this, but it is what it is. A white family ended up adopting him when he was 12 years old. So y'all know the type that they feel like, you know, I want to go to the black community and, you know, help out one of these kids that's troubled, but they had no idea what they had in store, what he had in store for them. Now, before we go on with this story, y'all, I'm not putting that on every kid in the system that when white people adopt them, that it's always trouble because sometimes it work out and sometimes it don't work out. So this is one of them stories. So this was around Christmas time. Matter of fact, it was right after Thanksgiving when Kilo got adopted by this family. Now he was 12 years old at this time. So there was a middle class white family. Um, the dad worked. They didn't have no kids. The dad worked. The mama worked. Actually, the dad worked in a shop. And the mama was, a, I believe, an elementary school teacher. So what? So when they got him, you know, you got this 12-year-old street kid that, you know, been through a lot. So with him being through a lot, he was real advanced and mature. So the first incident was when, oh, so let me give y'all the age also. So dude about 12 years old, the, the wife is about maybe 40 years old and the husband is like 42, 43 years old. And so the first incident, the wife was in the shower and dude knew that Kilo knew that she was in the shower, but he waited outside of the bathroom and wait till the shower went off. And then, you know, he opened the door when the wife was walking out, like getting out the shower. So he looked right. So he opened the door and he looked at her and she had to jump back in the shower and close the thing. He said, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. That was the first incident. Now, the wife took it as, you know, maybe it was an accident. Maybe he didn't know I was in here. Maybe, you know, he walked up here and he was using the bath. He had to use the bathroom and he didn't hear the shower. So maybe that was, yeah, that was it. You know, blew it off. And nah, Kilo was real freaky and he wanted to see something. So that was the first incident. Then other things would happen where, you know, the dad would put like $20 bills, $50 bills in his sock drawer, like the top sock drawer. And he had noticed like a 20 missing here, $60 missing there. But he thought, okay, maybe my wife, even though she ain't never done nothing like this before, maybe my wife, you know, she... Maybe she wanted to get something, you know, grab a little 20, a little 40, 50 dollars, you know, to go grab something real quick. But she ain't never did nothing like this. Matter of fact, she got her own money. Matter of fact, they got a joint account. So it really didn't make no sense. But he just blew it off. So that was another thing that happened. Um, other things will happen where, you know, when a wife is at home by herself with him, with Kilo, you know, he... uh always want to give her a hug and like, and I ain't talking about the church hug. Y'all know 
and if y'all don't know what if y'all don't know what the church hug is, it's like when you hug somebody from the side, nah. Kilo wanted a hug, like, you know, up close and personal. So he will always do this. Hey, so and so, um, I just appreciate y'all so much for adopting me and thank you for saving me from the system and stuff like that. Can I just give you a hug? Well, a lot of times, you know, like the first couple of times she would give him a hug, you know, she didn't really notice nothing. But then, like, as the hugs would progress, she would feel something, you know, like, how can I put this without being descriptive? She would feel something down there growing from him and she had kind of pulled back and he had just blow it off. Like he don't know what's going on, but then it was one time it was just undeniable. So one time she was teaching him how to read. Like he had like a learning disability or whatever. So she had him sitting down. It was going over some, whatever it was. And he was like, man, I just really want to thank you for helping me. I I just really want to thank you because, you know, a lot of people have been giving up on me and, you know, nobody ever took the time to sit me down and educate me. And he said, I just, I just want to give you a hug. Now this hug right here is where she knew that something was all the way off. So when he gave her the hug, like they stood up and he gave her the hug. Now, I, I need for y'all to picture this for a moment. So his, let's see, his left hand went on her neck and his right hand went to her lower waist. Now, y'all got to picture that for me. And he like pulled her really close. And... Of course, she like, now nah, this ain't no normal hug. Like he like was gripping, like he was trying to touch something. Matter of fact, he, it wasn't that he was trying to touch something. He was touching something. Like he like cuffed her butt cheek and like, like pulled her in close. And she was like, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She said, no, that is inappropriate. We do not do that. No, you do not do that. And he like, what did I do? She like, you, that's inappropriate touching. You do not do that. And then she walked off. So then he came, be, he came behind like, I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I, uh, I, I, I just wanted to show you that I pre come on, man. He knew exactly what he was doing. Dude was really freaky. And he was trying to push up on his adopted mama. So, she like, go to your room. Just go to your room. We'll talk about it later. So he go to his room. Now, the mama is in the living room and she contemplating because she never told her husband what he been doing. So she contemplating like, dang, should I tell him? Maybe, nah. Oh, was I tripping? Is is I'm taking, I'm blowing this out of proportion? Is Did he really like, I don't know. I, I and and I just don't really want to blow this out of proportion. This boy done been through a whole lot already. And hey, y'all, let me know in the comment section right quick. Do y'all think that she over exaggerating, or do y'all think that he just don't know no better? Let me know in the comment section. And make sure y'all hit that like button too. It's the holidays, y'all. So she said, she said, Nah, I'm not. I, I'm just not gonna say anything, right? So it's about a week before Christmas and the husband noticed, now the husband know for a fact, he said, you know what? Let me test something out. So he put a thousand dollars and all hundreds in a drawer and he put like $500 and fifties in there. Right. And he knew exactly what he put in there. So he had $1,500 in a drawer. So he just wanted to see something. Two days would go by and he'd go back and look and $300 was gone. So he go to his wife. He like, hey, babe, um, come here. Let me talk to you. She like, what's going on? He like, uh, did you go in the drawer and take any money? She was like, no, I, I didn't take anything. And he like, are you sure? And she say, why? You, you missing something? He like, yeah, um, 
I put three, I put fifteen hundred dollars in here, and I purposely put it in here a certain way, and three hundred dollars is gone. And she like, well, I didn't take it. Now both of them, you know, y'all you, you, know they they white, they white, and they don't really want to say, you know, the little black boy did it. But you know, they they both looking at each other, but not saying it. But you know, the wife like, do you think? You know, Kilo could have took it. And her husband like, well, I mean, this is not the only time where, you know, money was missing. I, I just haven't said anything. And I mean, I've, just, I've just been noticing little things that he has been doing. So may, maybe he did do it. And the wife like, well, why would he do it when we give him everything that he needs? You know, we, we buy him shoes. We buy him clothes. We got him all these Christmas presents down there. I mean, like, why would he don't need for nothing? Why? Why do you think he did this? And he like, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to have a talk to him. I'm going to have a talk with him. So the wife like, okay, all right, um. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then he like, hey, do, have you noticed anything weird like going on with him? And she was like, you know, I really don't want to, I really didn't want to say nothing. And I could just be blowing this out of proportion, but, you know, uh, I don't, what is it? What, what What's going on? What, t tell me. Oh my, I just don't really, how can I put it? <sighs> Okay, listen, when he gives me hugs, it's like he's trying to fill me up. Huh? What you mean fill you up? Yeah, it's like he, huh, how can I put it? It's like he's not giving me a normal hug. It's like he's, I, I just feel so bad saying this, but he. it's like he's getting off. What you getting off? Yeah, it's like he's attracted to me in a way and then there was a time when i was getting out of the shower and he walked in on me but then he hurry and walked back out but i know he seen me but i mean i don't know it's I, I, maybe i'm tripping he said so the husband like okay i'm i'm gonna talk to him I'm, I'm gonna talk to him so she said okay so a couple hours would go by and kilo would come in the house so the husband like, hey, Kilo, I need to talk to you. Um, Come here. Come to the family room. He's like, okay, here I come. So he go in the family room. He say, Kilo, do you need to tell me anything? Like, like matter of fact, how was your day? You know, right now he being therapeutic with Kilo. So he like, how was your day? He like, my day was cool. It it was cool. It, it was straight. He like, okay. He like, do you like living here? Kilo like, well, what you mean by that? I mean, do you like living here? Like, do you feel safe here? Do you feel like you can be yourself here? He like, yeah, I, I, I feel safe here. It's, why do you say? So he like, well, Kilo, I have some money missing out of my drawer and you know, my wife said that she didn't take it, and I know I didn't take it. So that kind of, you know, leaves you of, you know, you're that kind of leaves you. So Kilo don't ain't saying nothing. Matter of fact, he just looking at the ground. And the cousin like, so do you know where the money went? Kilo like, yeah, I, I took it. He say, well, why did you take it? Well, uh, I, okay, I, I'll be honest. Well, since you guys took me in, I just felt like it's just a matter of time that y'all was going to send me away. And, you know, I want to have some money so that way, you know, I could buy things. And so the dad was like, no, man, we would never do that. We would never send you away. No, you you are our son. We 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 adopted you. You you are. We would never do that to you. And he said, "Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry." So now, listen, y'all. This is where the military mind games 
is being enacted on the behalf of Kilo. Kilo is playing on this man's heart strings and all that, right? So he like, well, you know where the money at? Where's the money at? He like, oh, well, I kind of spent it, but, and so the father like, you know what? Never mind. It's just money. It can be replaced. Cool. Right? Oh, listen, y'all. This is a Christmas story. Now we about to go to Christmas. Matter of fact, we got to go to Christmas. Yeah, 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 yeah. We going to go to Christmas Day. So now it's Christmas Day. The husband get up. The wife get up. They go downstairs to wake Kilo up because his bedroom is downstairs. They, when they get downstairs, you look to the right, and that's where the Christmas tree at, where a whole bunch of presents should have been at. Yeah. Y'all notice I said should have been at. Why every last one of them presents is gone. Oh, yeah, they gone. They like, what the heck is going on? So they run to Kilo room. Kilo gone. His clothes gone. His shoes gone. His video game. His TV gone. So they call the police. They make the report. They like, we don't know where our son at. Uh, he, and the police, you know, they asking them questions. <sighs> turns out. Turns out. Kilo took all the presents and packed his room up and he bounced. Now. Here's the real kicker of this whole story, y'all. Kilo is found two days later in a dope house. In a dope house. You said, what, what is Kilo doing in a dope house? Kilo went out there to find his mother and father, and he did find them. Kilo will go on to going back to different foster, foster homes, Kilo would go back to boys' home, and what he would do, he would steal. Like if somebody adopted him or put him in like a, a facility, a place where you can like get visited by like parents that adopt you or whatever, he would steal from them and give like some of the money to his parents for drugs. So yeah, y'all, this is one of the most craziest Christmas stories that I could remember that I'm relaying to y'all. Now, I know y'all miss my beautiful face. And don't worry, when I get back to my studio, it's going to be back to business as usual. It's Christmas time, y'all. I'm about to put up my promo where the cash app is right at the top, y'all. Enjoy the music because I know y'all like the music. Enjoy the music and y'all Lean on that cash app just a little bit for your boy. And with that, Dante love y'all. Happy holidays, and I'm out.
here we go again. Do y'all remember that story where I told maybe a couple months back when this cat I ran into in the county jail and he told me how he killed his brother over two Newport cigarettes? Y'all remember that? Well, here's the updated story to that. Now, I was in Oakland County County Jail when this all took place. I seen this disheveled dude where well, y'all see him in the thumbnail. That's him right there. So I seen him over there and I'm looking at him I'm like, man, what's up with this dude? So I ease over there and I'm like, hey, where you from? He was like, oh, I'm from the D. I said, what you in here for, man? He was like, man, bro, man, come over here. Uh, he like, what's up? I, I mean, I was like, what's up? He was like, man, I'm in here for something real stupid, bro. I said, what happened? He like, man, I killed my brother, man. I said, dang, you like your blood brother or something? He like, yeah, same mama, same daddy. I'm like, okay, I mean, what happened? He like, so it's, it's really kind of stupid. But I mean, I, I well, this what happened. I said, all right, well, well, you know, talk to me. He like, man, so we at my mama house and, you know, he was playing a game and I was in the kitchen and um, he said he was making some ramen noodles. And he said he had a pack of his Newport cigarettes like on a coffee table where his brother was at. So his brother, you know, grabbed the square and fired it up. And from the kitchen, he could smell it. And he like, hey, bro, did you just touch my cigarette? He like, yeah. He was like, hey, man, hey, don't do not do that, man. Ask me next time. Don't be just taking my cigarettes. So he said his brother ain't didn't say nothing. So he said later on that day, he went upstairs and got in the shower. And he smelled cigarette smoke again. So he said he cut the shower off. And he yelled out the bathroom door like, hey, bro, don't touch my mother effing cigarettes no more. And his bro was like, man, chill out, man. Hey, I can get a cigarette if I want to. So he said they got to arguing back and forth about the cigarettes. And he was like, you know, he got back in the shower, dried off, put his clothes on. He came downstairs and his brother was back playing the video game. So he said that, you know, he was just already mad and irritated. So he was like, hey, bro, don't touch my cigarettes no more. So he said his brother, while still playing the game, you know, turned around and was like, man, I ain't worried about them little stupid cigarettes, man. I ain't got to touch them. I'll pay you back. It don't even matter, man. They're just cigarettes. So he like, they just kept arguing back and forth, arguing back and forth. So he said later on that day, well, I guess you got to say, later on that evening because now it's about seven o'clock he said he leave and he gonna meet up with this chick like the dude is telling me the story he said he leave the house and he go down the street and he gonna meet up with this chick and you know they chilling or whatever and I, he said that the girl he was chilling with it wasn't his girlfriend but it was just somebody he was messing around with you know she stayed down the street. They didn't really have no commitment. But when when he was chilling with her, her phone kept ringing. And I guess this was her dude on the phone. And so when he when she answered the phone, finally, the dude like, hey, I'm about to come through, babe, or whatever. So she telling him, like, okay, you got to go. You got to go. For some strange reason, he get irritated. And he, like, grabbed her phone and was like, hey, man, hey, I'm over here and all this and that. And, you know, the boyfriend like, man, who is you? And he like, man, I'm so-and-so, man. Stop calling her phone, man. She over here with me. And he like, hey, man, well, whoever this is, this better not be one of your cousins or whatever playing games. And he like, nah, man. So, I, hey, listen, y'all. I don't know why dude did that. I I don't know why the hey and I could be wrong, but I don't Detroit dudes be doing that all the time, right? But let a hey, matter of fact, y'all let me know where y'all from in the comment section. Let me know if it's cats out there in y'all city that be doing stuff like that. So they arguing back and forth, and I guess you know threats was ex exchanged. You know the boyfriend talking about he coming over there with a the chopper, and um he like. You know, he stays strapped and all this and that. And they just arguing back and forth. And the girl is like trying to grab her phone. 
But, you know, all this could have been avoided, man, because it wasn't even that serious. The dude that's telling me the story, he want, he was just screwing the chick. So it, it really wasn't even that serious. So she ended up getting her phone back, and he ended up leaving. Now, he said he was a little salty and still irritated when he got back to the house. So when he get back to the house to pick up his squares to smoke, he noticed half of the pack is gone. Now, he said that he he used maybe three cigarettes that day, but his brother used uh, what he know two or maybe even three. So there's five cigarettes gone that, that that's accounted for. But when he said when he picked up that pack, it was like two cigarettes left. So he said when he picked it up, he felt how light the pack was, and he, you know, pushed out the cigarettes, and it was two left. So he said he just got so angry, like his blood started boiling. And he said, like, he just got to smoking the squares, smoking the squares, like back to back, smoked them like real quick right there. So he said he went back in the kitchen to make him some more food. And then his brother came in and he was like, hey, bro, why the F you smoke all my cigarettes for, man? And he like, man, stop tripping, man. I give, I if you want some cigarettes, I give you some cigarettes. So he pulled out a pack of Winston's. Y'all know the red pack. He pulled a pack of Winston's out. Like, here, bro, I give some dang cigarettes. They just cigarettes. And he like, no, man, I don't smoke no goddamn Winston's, man. No, man, where's my man? Hey, give me. I I, I need my cigarettes. I only smoke Newports, man. Don't come in here with no dang Winston's. So they arguing back and forth about the cigarettes. So the brother sit down, cut on a video game, right? Now, this is where it get real tricky. So according to him, he said that his brother was facing the TV because you got the couch right here. And you got the TV right there. And then you got the kitchen. He said that before he know it, he blacked out. He said that he came in the living room. There was a lion statue that was like right here on his nightstand. And he said he picked up the lion statue. And when that happened, everything went dark. Like he said that he don't, he said he don't really remember too much or nothing. He just said he just know he blacked out when he was in the kitchen. Um, the next thing he remember was that he was picking up this lion statue and then he blacked out again. And then when he said what well, he realized what he done, it was already too late, y'all. Now, he said that it was red liquid all over his hands, all over his shirt. Um, his brother was laying sideways on the couch with, you know, his um, head um, cracked and, you know, red liquid pouring out. And he said he was just, just sitting there like, what the heck did I just do? What the heck did I, did I, oh, I just killed my brother. So he said that he got to grabbing his brother's shirt, like, bro, wake up, wake up, bro, wake up, bro. And he said his brother wouldn't wake up. He said, you know, red liquor was pouring out of his ears, out of his mouth. His eyes was bloodshot red. And he said, like, man, I, I did this to my brother. You know, I, I killed my brother. So he said that about 10 minutes, he didn't call the police yet. He said about 10 minutes to come by, then his mama ended up coming in the house. And he's sitting right there like, okay, so his brother slumped on the couch. And he sit in front, he's sitting in front of his brother like on the floor, but having his back against the couch. And he like, man, uh, his mama come in like, what happened? What happened to my baby? Now, keep in mind, y'all, um, the dude is telling me the story that took his brother out with the statue. He like 23 years old and his brother like 19. So they not kids. They young adults. So she like, oh, my baby. What happened to my baby? What happened? And he just shaking his head like back and forth. Like, man, my, I, I, I don't know what happened. My, she like, well, what, what happened? Who did this to your brother and all this and that? And he like, I, my, I don't, I, I did my, what, what happened? The car, car, did you call the police? Did you call the ambulance? No, mama, I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't, mama. 
So she get on the phone, she call 911. She's like, please, please, I need somebody help. I need somebody here. My son is dying. He was already gone, y'all. He her, her son was already gone. Please, I need help. My son is dying. Something's going on with his head. Like his head is cracked open. So she get in the address and everything. And she's like, what happened? What happened to your brother? And he told her, like, he, 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 he was smoking my cigarettes and I, I, I just blacked out and, uh, it, it just happened this way. So she like, Oh no, why would you do that? Why would you do that? So he like, I don't know, ma. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma. I don't know. Right. So the police end up showing up in the ambulance show up. They put him in handcuffs after the mama tell him what happened. It's like, he, he bust him over the head. He bust him over the head. He killed my baby. And, you know, they put him in handcuffs. And, well, we in Oakland County um, jail. So, you know, when he when he telling me this story, the only thing I'm thinking about is like, God dang, dude, over some cigarettes. I'm saying this to myself in my head. Because at this point, as him telling me the story, you know, his head dropped. He sounds so remorseful. And it's like, I mean, just imagine, like, I mean, just even me telling y'all this story. That it's like, I'm about to go do life without the possibility of parole or maybe 30 or 40 years because I killed my brother over some cigarettes over some menthol cigarettes what I could have easily just went to the store and bought more and now I'm about to go do all this penitentiary time over some cigarettes now I got to thinking about that that Bible story about Cain and Abel you know how Cain rose up against Abel because God accepted Abel's offering and rejected Cain's offering and when they was in the field together, he rose up against them and took his life and his blood cried out to God. That's a cold story, y'all. Ice cold. So now I'm thinking to myself, like, of all things, man. So the reason why I'm retelling y'all this story, because it's the holidays. We got about what? It's December 18th, 2023. We got, what, two, seven more days for Christmas, right? And I know, you know, we got, for people that got siblings and, you, you know, y'all be beefed out and be beefing, you know, something, sometimes you got to let that stuff go. If it ain't no, no real stuff, like, y- y- y'all know what I mean. Like, if he, if, if your family member didn't violate you, like, in a, how can I say, a, a S-A way, Assault way, as assault way, or something like that. If, if it's over a little money or whatever, just let that go, man. Cause, you know, dude, he ain't never coming home. He lost his brother. And I can, I can see him right now sitting in a cell right now. Like, I'm in here cause I killed my brother, man. Over some cigarettes. Over some cigarettes. Wow. So. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this video in the comment section. Also, listen, um, I am on vacation. So this is why y'all can't see me. I have to um, record my videos remotely because I'm out of town. I'm not at my studio. So don't worry. Dante will be showing his beautiful face real soon after the holidays okay but right now i'm working remotely and i told y'all i gotta give y'all these bomb stories all right so um matter of fact i'm giving y'all two stories a day since y'all can't see me i'm gonna give y'all a story um at 11 a.m and 8 p.m monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday this week so that means y'all actually gonna get 10 videos all right so if y'all don't got the notification bell turned on, turn it on. So that way y'all can get the notification when I drop a video. But if y'all don't get the notification, just know every day this week, I'm dropping a video at 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. Okay, so 
Don't even worry about it if y'all don't get the notification. Okay? So, happy holidays to everybody out there. I hope y'all having a good day or a good night. Because I guess I'm dropping the video at 8 o'clock. So, a good night. And with that, y'all. Hey. It's the holidays. Y'all see that cash app over, over here that I'm about to put up. Y'all can lean on it just a little bit. Spread that holiday cheer. And with that, y'all, I'm out. We go again. Hey y'all, this story right here. I didn't even want to tell y'all this story, but I just got the hearing the backstory of this, and this right here is crazy. Imagine being in Chicago. Imagine being a gangster disciple, and you out there just straight up thugging, right? You see your ops, you banging on your ops, right? You come home. And you eating dinner with your mama and your daddy and your siblings. Then you hear a loud knock on the door. Chicago PD. Chicago PD, open up. Your daddy get up from the kitchen table and he goes to open the door and the police just barge in. They like, where your son at? Where blah, blah, blah at? And they see you and they say, come here. We need to holler at you. Elk. By the way, y'all, the son ain't nothing but 15, 16 years old, right? They say, we need to talk to you at the police station. And the mom and daddy like, yo, what is all this about? They like, oh, we just need to question him. See, being ignorant of the law, see, the cops cannot question a minor. So keep that in mind. But the parents don't know this. They, they, they don't know no better. So they let the cops take their son down there. Now, true enough. He's a gangster disciple, he's a gangbanger, and he is committing crimes in the streets. However, when he got put in that interrogation room, the cops got to showing him pictures of a woman from her neck down with wounds on her body. They tell him, you were, was picked up out of a lineup that you did this to this woman. He like, I didn't do that. No, true enough. I am GD. I, I am a gang member. And yeah, I do do stuff, but I didn't do this. I, I would never violate a woman like this. So they hold him in there for about eight, nine hours. Y'all know how the gang, y'all know the military mind gangs, the police pay, how they play in the interrogation room. They cut that air conditioner all the way up and freeze you out. So they start enabling these military mind games and tactics on them. So they telling him, yo, you did this. Just submit it, man. I ain't do this, man. I never do that to no woman. You going to prison for the rest of your life. Just tell us. Just tell us that you know you, you did this, man. Man, I didn't do this, man. I'm not saying I did this, man. No, I, I didn't do it. Come on, man. It just take make it easy on yourself. Just just tell us what happened. Look, man, I didn't do this. I would never violate a woman like that, right? So he say that they just keep working on them, working on them. So finally, after about eight or nine hours of this basically coerced confession, they make him sign some papers saying that 
he basically admitted to doing this, right? And what what is said that he has done is that he s assaulted a woman and you know poked her up also, and somebody um picked him out of a lineup and said that he did it. Now, now y'all know how Cook County Jail is. We all know about the crazy stories. I ain't even gonna lie, y'all. I've been in Cook County Jail twice, and it was rough, even for me. And y'all know how I give it up. But it was even rough for me. That's gang bang central where cats this yo, it's 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 wild in there. It's the wild, wild west. You you gonna fight. But if you go in there with them type of charges as being an offender, a S offender, whoo, wild ride, right? So he get in Cook County and yo, he, he going through it. Cats know his charges that he violated a woman off GP, off the grip. He getting he get into fights. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Um the way how dude look. I'm I'm not gonna put that on them, but I've been around cats while I locked up that has been touched, and they just got that look about them. They got a certain walk. They it's in a voice, and I I I ain't gonna say he been touched, but you know if it quack like a duck, it's a duck, and he looked like he might have got violated. But here's the here's the here's the crazy thing about it. So he get a lawyer. Um, of course, it's not a paid lawyer. It's a uh, appointed lawyer, you know, and a public defender. He basically, the public defender is working on this case for like three years. So the first deal they come with is 20 years, 20 years. And he's saying that he's innocent. So he like, nah, I, I can't do no 20 years, man. Uh, no, nah, I, I need a new deal. So the lawyer go back to the prosecutor. They strike another deal. He come back 15 years. Nah, I can't. Nah, I, I can't do that. I can't do no 15 years, man. And I, I didn't do this. So the lawyer go back. Come with another deal. 10 years. Nah, man, not with these charges, bro. I can't take. No, I, I, I can't do it, man. Nah. So. He said, we just going to have to go to trial, man. We're going to have to go to trial. So now, for some reason, it I mean, it's not in the paperwork, and they didn't really say why the lawyer had to drop the case and, you know, move on. But he, the lawyer is now not his lawyer, and he got a new public um, offender, well, public defender. And the public defender, like, listen, I'm not about to go all the way back. Now, dude been locked up for three years, three to four years now. And the new lawyer is like, yo, I'm not about to go back three years and go through all this paperwork, you know. So we just, I'm going to go talk to the prosecutor and we just going to try to get you a better deal. So he like, all right. So he go out and he, you know, come back with uh, an eight-year plea. And he like, no, I can't do that. I'm not doing no eight years. So then he come out with a seven year plea. So the lawyer tell him like, listen, if you take this seven years, they gonna give you day for day, good time. So basically, you will only have to do two months in prison, okay? If you take this deal, and you are gonna have to register to be a offender for ten years, right? So he like, so, okay. So if I cop out to this, if I cop out to it, I. I do two years in prison. I mean, two months in prison because of my good time and my day for day time. So I, I'll get out right in two months. And keep in mind, y'all, this dude, daddy is like on his deathbed. So he like, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and cop out. So he going to get sent to prison. God knows what happened to him with them type of charges. So he get out in them two months. So he said when he get out, he go to these projects. I guess this where his people live at or whatever. And he like, they did a, a sweep 
like a couple weeks later while he was there, I guess he was in a hallway or something. And a part of his conditions that he can't be um, in low income government subsidized places, you know, I, I don't know. But, you know, he got caught up there and he paroled there or whatever. So he got he ended up getting caught up in this suite. And um, they end up sending him back to the penitentiary for like two or three months. Then he said he'd get out. And, you know, with that type of record and that type of jacket on you, everybody in the hood know what you went to prison for. And so he, you know, he telling people, you know, he, he, he like, yo, I didn't do this. I'm innocent. I just got railroaded, you know. He can't meet women, so he's he talking to women, and, you know, he got to disclose that, like, yeah, you know, I'm a offender. I'm on the registry, and he, like, you know, girls instantly turn them down, turn them away. He say every, when he get a job and they run a the background, you know, they come to him like, yo, you can't work here, and, you know, we got to let you go. He said he been homeless, like, many times, living on the street. He said, you know, with them type of charges, you know, that's what comes with it. Now, he go on the Steve Wicko show to prove his innocence. So when he get on there, you know, he telling Steve the story. Now, me listening to the story, I'm like, ah, I don't know. Let me just let me just wait till the lie detector come out because it's like 50-50. Some cats can really talk their way out of things and making you think that they didn't do it. And um, me, I don't know. I really couldn't figure it out. So, you know, Steve read his test and it says that he's innocent. Oh, that's ice cold. And when I say that's ice cold, it's because no doubt for sure, he was out here gang banging and committing crimes, but he did not do this to this woman. And he had to go to Cook County Jail for four years and endure all that torture, fighting for his life, dang there every day. Because I know how it is when you win there, even if you ain't got bad charges. But when you got bad charges, oh, you got to get flack from the guards, the inmates. Crazy. So I can only imagine what he had to go through knowing that he was innocent. That got to be the most sickest feeling that you can have at the in the bottomless pits of your stomach to knowing you didn't do something and you got to fight for your life. Are you innocent? Oh, man. So the point of me telling y'all this story here is that, number one, just be careful out here in this world, man. Always, like, if, if like, if you go out here in public, right, try to go to places where there's cameras where your face can be caught on video. You know what I'm saying? Like if you just out here in the streets, you know, stop at a corner store, stop at a McDonald's, stop at, you know, a convenience store where they got you on camera. So just in case, you know, if you out here doing things that you're supposed to do and you get a knock at your door and the cops like, yo, they saying you did this. We need for you to come to the station and it's a, a bad charge. You will have at least, you know, some video evidence that'll back you up, especially if whenever, when this incident happened, you will be on camera saying, nah, he couldn't have possibly done this because he was all the way on this side of town. Right? So, you know, just always be careful, man. We live in a 2023 y'all. And it's, it's wild out there. I can't even, I mean, I've been locked up many, many, many times. And I see these cats all the time. And you don't know if they innocent or not. But in prison, and like it is out here in the street, you're gu you are guilty until proven innocent, right? And even when you are proved to be innocent, there's still cats going to be looking at you like, ah, nah, he 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 looked like the type that'll do that, but maybe he ain't do it this time. But he he, that, yeah, but he he probably did it before, type stuff. So you know you always had that jacket, even when proven innocent. But 
Hopefully, you know, dude um, can get off that registry because Steve Wicko show proved his innocence. So y'all let me know in the comment section how y'all feel about this video. And I'm going to leave a link in the description also. Actually, I'm just going to leave the link to this story from the Steve Wicko show in the comment section so y'all can find it um, without no issue. And again, y'all, I'm sorry that y'all can't see my face right now because I'm on vacation for the holidays. But when I get back to the studio after Christmas, you know, I'm going to be back in full effect. So, you know, y'all just hold it down. Hold it down. Hit that like button. Share the video. If y'all feeling real generous and want to support the Dante Show Network, y'all know what's about to happen. I'm about to have my promo come up in a second, and y'all bless that cash app. And with that, y'all, I'm out. We go again in this world there are a lot of sick twisted demented people in this world there was this dude from alabama he worked at the post office he was married and had a son this man when he get angry and hit that bottle of old irish liquor he would turn on his wife and put hands on her. Y'all know how Dante feel about that. His son, that was 12 years old, he didn't like how daddy was putting hands on mama. But he's 12 years old. He couldn't beat his dad. One day, daddy come from the post office drinking that old Ivers, right? Getting real saucy. His wife just got done making dinner. Spaghetti and meatballs. Okay. She get him his food. Y'all know the whole scene where he's sitting in the living room watching TV, whatever he watches. And he got the, um, what is that called? When you put the food tray. She put the food tray right there. And he already off that old Irish. When he eat it, it's not to his like it so he knock it off right she like oh here we go again here we go again he he like now he used a profanity calling her all of her name calling her bees and h's and whores and all that type of stuff and she like i'm just so tired of this I'm tired of this now the son he tired of it too like he come out of his room, 12 years old, man. And he like, the standing there just waiting to get in the middle in between them, right? When the daddy tried to attack the mama. The mama, she tired of it. She grabbed a butcher knife and put it behind her back because she know what's about to happen. Dude get up, he walks over there to the wife, to his woman. Blah, 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 blah. He snuffed her. Boom! Punch her. She gonna lead to the left, and she come up with her right with the butcher knife. With quick thinking, 
he had me up and grabbed that knife and he beat her hand on the counter till the knife falls. Now, he's really mad. So now he gets to commence and to put hands on her. He done beat this woman down to the ground, to the floor. Now he's stumping her out. The 12 year old son, he done had enough. Ran over there, get off my mama. Punching him in the back of his head, punching him in his back. Don't you ever put your hands on me, son. Grab him by his neck, push him. He hit the floor, knock him out. Turn around, now. I'm not making no excuse. This is not no excuse. But when I get saucy on some liquor, the only thing I wanna do is, well, go to the bedroom with my woman. That's the only thing I wanna do when I get saucy. Matter of fact, that's the only time Dante gets saucy is when he going to his bedroom. Now, I am I know how to handle my liquor. I don't turn into a whole nother human being when I'm off that liquor, when I'm off that liquor. When he was in front of his wife, kneeling over her, something snapped in his brain where he decided to bite this woman's nose. Y'all know I got, I got a big, a big old nose. He decided to bite this woman's nose off. He bit this woman's nose off. Then he commenced to bite this woman's cheeks. He bite and chunked of flesh out of his wife's face. Thank God. Well, I really can't say that, but thank God this room, this woman was screaming very loud. She stayed in a mobile home. They stay in the trailer parks. Thank God the neighbors heard this. And the neighbors always hear when he whipping the wife out. Can you hear the glass breaking, the woman screaming? But these screams was different. They end up calling the police. The police sheriff department by this woman screaming. He come to the door. He come to the door with blood on his face, on his shirt. What's going on? Man, she in there. They grab him. They, I wish I was the arresting off. I, man, if I, y'all remember Detective Stabler off of um, Law and Order Special Victim Unit? Let it be me and Detective Stabler. I wish I was the arresting, arresting officer. I would have been like, get your mother, grab him by his shirt, threw him in the dirt, put the big knee in the back of his neck, hit him with the, with that billy club, that nice stick to his ribs. I'm just gonna say he was resistance. He was resisting. Um, I would have did him bad. I would have did him dirty. Anyway, um. They go in and they find the wife. But before we, before I tell y'all the condition of the wife, before we even go on with this story, man, everybody may ask me about my merchandise. To get to my merchandise, either you can go to the community tab and I put it, the, the, the link to the merch on each one of my posts. Or you can just go to the description of this video and every other video and click on the link. to just say click link for merch. And they went in the house and they seen the mama laid out. She was still alive, but it was so much red liquid all over the floor. It looked like a Halloween gory situation here. The son, he was waking up from this, from, from him getting knocked out cold. The police grabbed him and got him out of there. They did not want him to see his mother laying down there like that. Now he go to trial. He tried to blame it on the alcohol. I don't know what was going on. I wasn't myself. You was yourself. 
He was the same guy that for some reason, the failures of your life, the decisions that you made in your life, you just felt like you wanted to take it out on your wife. Always putting hands on your wife. But this time, after what, the maybe 50th or 100th time of putting your hands on your wife, something evil escaped from the bottomless pit of the underworld and laid siege in your mind and took control of you. And you decided to do the unthinkable. I can't even imagine. I can't even, this is why I tell y'all, don't get comfortable in your sin. Do not get comfortable in your sin. Because when you, when you sin, you lay in eggs for demons to hatch. And I honestly believe a demon, through all them sinful things that he was doing, of putting hands on this woman and drinking that alcohol, a demon came out and manifest and ate the, bit this woman nose off and bit this woman chunks of her face off. They end up giving this monster, this woman abuser, it gave, it gave him 12 years. I think that he should have got more. And this woman, after facial reconstruction and all that, whoops, I don't know y'all. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this. Do y'all think that he should have got more time than he got? Let me know in the comments such how y'all feel about this video. You men out there, we gotta protect these women and these children. And with that y'all, I'm out.
Here we go again. The normal order of life is that you live and then you go to the grave. We all agree to that, right? We all subscribe to that. But nowhere should a 79-year-old 70, a victim should be violated by a security guard. Well, y'all like, Dante, what the heck are you talking about? Video surveillance showed the 79-year-old victim body arrived at the morgue on October 22nd when Bird was in charge of transporting her to the morgue, police said. Court documents say two witnesses arrived at the morgue but found the doors locked from the inside, which was unusual. A light could be seen on the inside of the freezer and the freezer door was cracked open. The two witnesses reportedly saw a bird inside the freezer where he was sweating profusely and acting very nervous. Court paperwork states Bird had removed his duty belt, his zipper was open, and his uniform looked messy. Investigators say the victim's body bag was unzipped and she was facing down. Bird's belt was also on top of the gurney where the victim body was. Authorities say as the witnesses walked into the morgue, Bird immediately tried covering the victim's body. He then claimed that he had a medical episode and fainted. Yeah, all right. And grabbed the victim's body as he fell. Court paperwork states, Bird told the witnesses the body bag then tore open and the zipper broke, police said. However, the witnesses disputed this claim to the police saying the back and the zipper weren't broken. The two then reported Bird to their supervisor. On October 25th, police interviewed Bird, who claimed he had a medical episode and couldn't remember what happened. Yet I bet. Investigators said. Crime scene investigators collected evidence from the victim and Bird, and his DNA was found on the victim. He was taken into custody on Tuesday and booked on five counts of crimes against a dead person, a class four felony in the state of Arizona. Those convicted of a class four felony often face one to four years in prison for a first felony offense so you mean to tell me this cat can get maximum four years or be out in one year give me a break officials confirmed burrow no longer works at the hospital banner health released a statement to arizona's family regarding burr's arrest we are saddened and appalled by the alleged actions of the individual at Banner University University Medical Center Phoenix that resulted in his arrest on November 28, 2023. Y'all, this just happened. Recently, Banner team members identified and reported concerning behavior of an employee in the hospital morgue. Banner initiated an internal investigation filed a report with law enforcement and terminated the employee. Banner Health has and remains committed to high standards that require each of our team members to treat everyone at every stage of life with compassion, dignity, and respect. We are grateful for the work of the Phoenix Police Department in the investigation and handling this matter, and we will continue to cooperate with law enforcement. Out of respect for the family family we will not further comment at this time banner health okay we got a lot to break down and sorry y'all y'all can't see my face but i'm on vacation right now so we're just gonna have to do it just like that but we got a lot to break down number one look at this dude eyes y'all see that what y'all looking at is a face of horror I always tell y'all, we are living in 2023, where right is wrong and wrong is right. Y'all know when I go live and y'all be wondering on my banner, it says, Welcome to, so Welcome to Sodom and Gomorrah. This is a full-blown resident of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, 
for the people that don't know what's going on, a 79-year-old woman comes into the morgue. She, this cat right here, Burr, is in charge of her. They put her in the freezer. But instead of putting her in the freezer, he put his you-know-what on her body, and, well, he gets caught. And then he going to say, well, I, I was having a medical um, issue, and I faint. Come on, man. Come on. This dude look like he twisted. Just look at him. Look, Y'all looking at the face of horror. I thank God he got caught. Imagine the other... Imagine the other victims. Just imagine how how many other people he done did this to before he done got caught. Like, come on, let me know in the comment section do y'all think that this creep, this is his first rodeo, or he done did this many times. And you know, like that Rihanna saw, you only sorry that you got caught. Yeah, yeah, he only sorry that he got caught. Oh, that this, I mean, and, and for the victim's family, imagine what they going through. We just, we, uh, we just lost our loved one and then they get violated by a security guard. Come on, man. What type of sick animal this dude is? You have to be, your mind got to be deprived. You have to be deprived. He done gave himself over to an animal, an animal mindset. I know people have all type of fetishes, but come on, dog. For real? You violate a 79-year-old woman that her soul has passed from this life to the next. And then, come on, man. This cat right here. Y'all let me know if y'all think that this was his first rodeo. Me, I'm going to put it out there. I don't think so. I think he been doing this. And that makes me wonder. They need to check his computer, his phone, his browser history, all that. Because they might uncover some more demonic stuff. Because this right here is straight up demonic. Now, I'm going to let y'all know the fun part of this story. Because, yeah, there is a fun part. When he get into the joint and they find out what he in there for, well, it ain't even going to be about a matter of time of they finding out what he in there for because this this just happened. And this well, this is broadcast everywhere. And I'm going to do my part to spread this word too. But when he get up in there, I can see it right now. As soon as he hit the dormitory, he they going to be like, hey, the guards, a guard might put the word out. Be like, hey, you, you know th that white cat that just came in here? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, man, he the one that, you know, violated that 79-year-old dead woman. Like, huh, what you mean, 79-year-old dead woman? Like, he, he took advantage of a 79-year-old dead woman? Yeah. Come on, man, you, you got to be. You, all right, all right, man, show me, show me a clipping of it. Right? CEO show him a news clipping of it. Oh, okay. All right. We going we gonna make we gonna get him we gonna get him right. We gonna straighten his head out. I can see him sitting on his bed. He might even open up a Bible and get to read. And cats like that turn super religious when they get locked up. So I can see the brothers rolling up on him like, Hey man, what you in here for? Oh, uh nothing. Oh, you in here for nothing? Well, I, I mean, I, I messed around and, you know, got into a little trouble. Uh huh. And what was that little trouble? Oh, uh, I, I really don't want to talk about it. And, you know, Dante would be like, check this out, homie. You you don't want to talk about it. Well, I tell you what, I want you to look down to your left. You see them four cats right there? They got their hands in their pants. And you see them other cats down there to your right? They got their hands in their pants. Well, they got shanks. What's a shank? Well, you about to find out what you went here for. And if you lie, well, you're going to figure it out real soon what's going to happen to you. Right? And then 
After that, you can I, I can almost guarantee you, y'all, he's going to get beat up on the daily before he had to get put in the hole. But he's definitely going to get beat up and extorted if he got any money. I don't know, y'all, if he going to get, you know, a, you know, S-word assaulted. But, um, hey, you never know. But, yeah, this dude is real creepy, disgusting, nasty. Let me know in the comment section how much time y'all think this dude should get. And with that, y'all, I'm out.
go again. All right, y'all. This is one of them bone chilling prison stories. I need for y'all to really let me know how y'all feel about this video in the comment section. All right. So every Tuesday we get brand new inmates in our dormitory. So I end up getting this white cap in my cell. Dude was 22 years old and he was one of them white dudes that acted black. Some people will call him, um, what's that word? A wigger. Yeah, the wigger. They will call him a wigger, you know, a white cat that act black. You can't tell this dude that he ain't black, right? Y'all know the type. So he in there and I'm looking at him and I'm like, yeah, this knucklehead, he got to be in here for, you know, selling drugs or getting caught high speed chasing. He probably gonna kill somebody drinking a jive or something, right? So, usually, you don't supposed to ask your bunkie what he in there for, usually, because, you know, that's kind of a sign of disrespect. But, you know, I know he ain't been locked up before, and he don't know the penitentiary rules, so I just ask him. I'm like, hey, homeboy, what you in here for? He like, man, bro, man. My mom, man, she told on me, bro. She told on me, bro. And I said, well, what what happened? What what you do? And he was like, look, cuz, okay, so this will happen. And I, and I said, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before you even go on with this story, I know you just got up in here. I don't know how y'all politic, wherever you came from, but you cannot say the N-word in this cell. You can say that out there. Now, he didn't say it, but the way that he was talking... I knew eventually it was coming. It was going to slip out of his mouth and I was going to have to punch him in his mouth because penitentiary rules are in full effect. So he said, oh, no, nah, bro, I, I don't talk like that, man. I don't never use that word, man. That use was to put our people down. I said, OK, no doubt, no doubt. So he said, yeah, man. So my girlfriend, we was in there messing around in my room. You know, we was having intercourse. And after we got done, you know, I left and went to the store to grab some hot Cheetos and some drinks or whatever. And my homeboy, he was downstairs. And I guess when I left out the house, he went upstairs and he started messing with her. Right. So when I come back from the store, you know, I go upstairs and my girl not there. So I'm calling her phone. And she ain't answering. And so I tell him, like, hey, where my girl at? And he say, oh, she left. And then he left. So I call her. I call her. She don't pick up the phone. And then I'm like, oh, well, well, so whatever. So he say he laid down and he went to sleep. Next thing he know, he got the sheriff department snatching him off the bed, accusing him of, you know, a violation. Matter of fact, let me just straight up tell y'all, because they gonna flag this video anyway. They he the police tell him, long story short, that he violated his girlfriend and let his friend violate her too. And he like, what? Man, I didn't do that, man. Hey, listen, hold on. I did not do that to her. We had consensual intimacy. And as far as my homeboy go, I didn't even know they even did anything. Well, the cops like, well, tell it to a judge. So he get locked up and he in the county now. So the, you know, time would go on and now he got to take it to trial. Now they telling him like, listen, if you take this plea deal, if you going to take this four years and you know, just do your time. Cop out to this and you'll be a registered sex offender for the rest of your life. But take this four years. And if you don't take this four years, we're going to hit you over the head with 20 years. What what you going to do? So he talking to his mama and his mama like, son, I think you should do it. I think you should do it, son. And he like, ma, ma but I didn't do this, though, ma. I, I didn't do this. She like, son, I, I just I just want the best for you, man. I don't want you to go to prison for the rest of your life, man. I, I just just don't fight this, man. Just, just do the 20, man. I mean, take the four years. 
And he like, Ma, I don't want to take this, man, because, you know, if I go to prison, you know, they don't like, you know, cats like me that got bad charges and I could die in there, Ma. And she like, son, just please do it. And he like, all right, man, I, I'm going to sleep on it. I, I, I'm going to sleep on it. Tell me why y'all, why the mama write a letter to the judge. And in this letter that she wrote to the judge, it went something like this. Dear judge, my son, it, he come from a troubled background. I told my son about, you know, having sex with um girls and that you know he need to wait for marriage i don't know if my son did this or not but if he did do this he does need to go to prison i don't know if he did it or not but please judge please show him mercy and some other stuff now if you heard what i said in that when i was reading off that letter you will hear that she basically it's without a shadow of a doubt saying to the judge, I don't know if my son did this. In that letter, it should have been saying, my son didn't do this. So now you leave room for doubt that he did that he did do it, right? Versus he didn't do it. So she's steady writing the judge these type of letters, but the language of the letters is really kind of pointing to do could potentially could have did it because the mama keep on saying things in these letters like, you know, he's troubled. He needs therapy. I've been having a rough time with him for the last couple of years. He has put his hands on me, but he said he would never do it again, even though everything that she's saying is true, but she's making this worse for dude. So now he cop out, right? He cop out to the four years. When he get in front of the judge, all rise, right? He come in, the judge like, okay, you know, they, he talking to the prosecutor. He talking to his lawyer. They agree in, they, they reading off codes and sections and all this and that. So he tell him like, okay, so this is what's, this is what's going on. You are being accused of sexually assaulting your girlfriend and having your friend do it too. This is very serious. Now, your mother has written me letters on your behalf. And all I see here is that you could have done this. And he got to read in the letters. Man, why this dude face turn beat red? This is what he telling me. He said, as the judge is reading off, you know, I mean, we're reading a letter. He looked right at his mama and me mug like, ma, no, you didn't. No, you did not. I'm cooked. I'm done. Right? So court adjourned. They say sentencing is next week, next Tuesday. So he say he in a bullpen now waiting to go back to a cell. And he like, man, I can't believe my mama did this, man. I can't believe she did this. Now let's fast forward to sentencing day. So it's his time to come up. The judge call him, call him up, call his lawyer up, prosecutor. He said, the judge said, you know, Looking at the severity of this crime, and you a first offender, but um, due to your history of violence, according to your mother, of abuse and trauma and stuff, I think that you did this, and I think that you need therapy. So I'm going to remand you over to the state of blah, 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 um, correctional facility for a matter of 12 years. So the guideline is that you have to do four years. So your minimum that you have to do is four years and your maximum is 12 years. Now, at this point, y'all, of the story where he's telling me, I said, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Or rewind the story again. What was you, like, what happened? He like, me and my girlfriend, 
was having sex, right? After we got done, I left and I went to the store to get some hot Cheetos and some drinks. When I was gone, my friend was downstairs and he went upstairs and I guess, you know, took advantage of her. She left after this happened, went home, called the police and told the police that me and him violated her. I didn't do this. So I'm listening. I'm like, so what happened to your homeboy? He copped out. He copped out and he only got two years. I said, whew, that's cold. Now, he began telling me like, you know, his mama was calling up there like at the county jail, um, you know, talking to the deputies. Well, not the deputies, but whoever was answering the phone, the receptionist, letting them know like, please don't let nothing happen to my son. I know he accused of, you know, this, this bad charge. So she constantly calling up there. She thinks she doing him a favor, but she not. So she calling up there, telling whoever will listen, like, please protect him. Don't let nothing happen to him and this and that. You know, the guard, some of these CEOs is getting this information, even though they got access to this information, but they get irritated about it. And one of the CEOs going there and like, yo, you need to tell your mama to stop calling up here about you doing A, B, C, and D. And when that happened, now cats that didn't know what was going on, now they know and they looking at him sideways. And now he explaining to them, like he explaining to me, like what happened? So long story short, his mama thought she was doing something good, but really it was real bad. So now he in the cell with me. And now I have to ask y'all in the audience that's listening. Do y'all think that he was telling the truth about what happened? Or do y'all think that, you know, he's guilty of what he's been accused of? Me, I don't know. I don't know. And how I feel about the situation, it's, I don't know, it's real tricky, y'all. It's really tricky. Because when you look at it, number one, my homeboy would have been coming with me anyway. If me and my girl just just got there messing around and my homeboy downstairs and I'm about to go to the store, he rolling with me anyway. So, I mean, and it's not, that's not even, oh no, I don't trust my girl type of thing, but it's just, why you want to be here? You know, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, y'all, I'm not really sure how to pass this judgment on this dude, but I'm going to leave it up to y'all in the comment section. But also, let me know, do y'all think that his mama was wrong for writing them letters? Me? Now, I can talk about that. I think she was dead wrong because she made his situation way worse. So let me know in the comment section how y'all feel about this video. So I tell him, like, hey, listen, what you did and how you got up in here, that's your business. But I tell you what. If it was me personally, I wouldn't tell nobody else this story. He like, why? I said, because cats ain't, ain't going to want to hear that. They feel like you went here on a bad charge. They having a bad day for whatever reason. And since they know that, you know, you a white dude that want to act black, they might just want to beat you up just off the strength that you white and then you acted black and you in here on a bad charge. So I'm like, you know, just keep that to yourself and, um, you gonna have to get up out the cell also. He like, what you mean I gotta go? I said, cause dog, I mean, we in the penitentiary, man. You whether you innocent or not, you've been convicted of this, and you know, the way I'm programming it here, I'm being nice about it, really, but you know, when when the doors pop, you need to go to the CO and let them know, like, you know, you feel like your life in danger. You ain't gotta tell them, I mean, I'm not threatening you, but this is just what it is. If you was in the cell with somebody else, they probably already put will put hands on you. And I'm just really being nice about it because you know I'm just I'm just doing my time and cruising. But you can't be in here with me, man. 
He like, all right, all right. So what should I do? I said, when they open the cell doors, when we come out, go to the control booth, ask to speak to a sergeant, and be like, yo, I feel like my life in danger, and, you know, I, I need to get out of here. And he was like, okay, okay, bet. So that's what he did. So y'all let me know in the comment section how y'all feel about this video. Do y'all think he was innocent or guilty? And let me know how y'all feel about the mama writing them letters. And with that, happy holidays, y'all. I'm out. Gritty streets of Flint, Michigan, if your parents wasn't working at GM or the factories and stuff like that, or had a decent job, you was out there in the streets. Either you were selling or you was robbing. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. There's a King Von in every state every city and every hood. Back when I was 16 years old, one of my closest friends was a King Vine. I remember the first time when he caught a body. So I was sitting in my room and how my room was set up, I have, I was on the second, we, we lived in a townhouse and my room was upstairs and he, I had like this door that you can, well, balcony, but it's a door that you can go outside and you could just jump up there on the bars and come on in. And some of my homeboys, you know, they'd come in that way. They won't even use the front door. They'd just jump up on the porch and just open the door, come in. So that's not unusual. So my homeboy, for everybody that know me in real life, no, we're not talking about Al. This was somebody else, the other guy that used to be with me. So y'all know who I'm talking about. So here I go on my computer playing Age of Empires. It's a it's a computer game where you um it's like an army computer game. So I'm playing this game and I hear somebody right there on the balcony. So I'm thinking it might be Moot Quest or Al or the dude that I'm talking about. So he get up there and he just bust through the door. And I faintly seen him when he came through. And I, I noticed like, cause he always was wearing a, a white tee, but it was like kind of burgundy. So I look at him a little bit and I keep playing. And now he, so now, okay, y'all see where I'm sitting at right here? He was probably sitting right here to the right of me, but in the corner. So as I'm playing, I'm look over there and he got a sawed off shotgun. And you know, that's not unusual. You know, we teenagers, we in the hood, you know. So seeing a gun, that ain't nothing. So I look at him and I look at him again and I'm noticing his white teeth is red. It's blood on it. So I stop and I'm looking at him, I'm like, man, what's up with you? He all breathing hard and he doing like, y'all know in the army, when they say like a thousand yard stare or something like that, where somebody could be looking at you, but they looking past you. That's what he doing. He looking at me, he like, bruh, I had to do it. I had to do it. 
was like, I was like, you have to do what? Now at this point, y'all, I done paused the game and I'm looking right at him. Cause I'm like, what did this dude just do? Now prior to this, yeah, we was around here toting guns. We was around here sticking people up. This is the results of growing up in poverty. Yes, we could have went a different way and worked at McDonald's or Burger King or went to a grocery store, but we chose to live this type of lifestyle, which is robbing people, you know? So it wasn't, like I said, it was unusual for me to see him with a gun, but it was very unusual for me to see him with blood on him. Now, for anybody out there that might say, oh, Dante snitching, he snitching, no. My dude told me to tell this story. Y'all, he got 70 years. It, well, it ain't 70 now. He got 60 years now because he done did 10. But he told me to tell y'all these stories. So that way that it might be somebody out there, might be a juvenile out there that might be listening to me and might think twice about going out there robbing somebody. But I'm going to tell you how it goes. Hold on. So, and, and be sure to hit that like button, y'all, because y'all be playing military mind games. Anyway, so I'm like, dog, what happened? He was like, man, I had to do it. I had to do it. I'm like, you had to do what? He like, man, bruh, bruh. Now he out of breath. I don't know, was he, did he run all the way from the scene to my house nonstop? But he like, bruh, yeah, man, I had, I had to. And then he just went to sleep. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, this dude done popped somebody. He over here in the corner of my room. And then he go to sleep. So what I do? I turn right back around and get on my computer game. So he get up like an hour later. And I'm like, so we gonna talk about what happened? He like, yeah, bro. So basically I went up to the park and I ain't going to say the park and none of that. I went up to the park and I caught this white boy and, uh, you know, I ran up on him and he tried to fight back. He, I guess he thought, you know, the hammer was fake and he tried to fight back. So all I know, we were struggling for the, you know what? And then it went off and, you know, it was like, it, it was just so loud, like I thought I was deaf, like my ears were ringing and everything. And, you know, he he was still holding the hammer. So basically, they tussling for the gun, but the barrel is pointed at the other cat's stomach. And the gun go off. And I guess dude, when he, I guess he, his body locked up and grabbed the, the gun while my homeboy had it and he like leaned over on him. So he said like, dude was like saying something, but he was gargling, you know, red liquid out of his mouth. And he was like, he said like that, he seen like when dude's spirit left out of his body. And he said like, it's like his eyes glazed over glaze over and dude was still clutching the gun like his body locked up and he said he he actually saw this man life leave out of his eyes and he said he just was like just looking at him and he said he was like in a trance and he had to snap out of it so he said when he realized what happened he snapped out of it he grabbed the gun and he took off running and now he here so I'm looking at him and I'm like like, I don't know what to say. Because in my crew, y'all, yeah, we was out here doing stupid stuff. We was robbing people, breaking in people's houses and stuff like that. But we, nobody in the crew ever took nobody's life. At best, you know, we'd go as a two or three man team with, you know, stuff with, and, and then most of the times, y'all, we had BB guns. We all shared one gun in the whole crew. So most of the time, you know, we'll go as a two-man, three-man crew where we'll catch somebody and we'll stick them up. I mean, you got three cats with what you assume and pistols on you, you going to give it up. And that's what we did. But this time, he, he took it too far. And this is why I tell y'all that 
when a man is hungry and he trying to feed his family and he go rob somebody and that gun go off, yeah, he is in danger of the hellfire because there is other ways to make money to feed your family. So I'm not gonna make no excuses. But if a man go out there definitely to just rob people and steal just to look good, to get them some jewelry or what kids say now today, some drip. And you end up taking a man life because you want to look good. You are definitely in danger of the hellfire. So he like, man, bro, bro, that, that it was crazy. It was crazy. And then he starts smiling and I'm looking at it. I'm like, now this dude right here, particularly, he was a quiet dude. He was quiet. They always say it'd be the quiet ones. He didn't even look like he was a, you know what, a, a stepper. Uh, well, back then we, I don't even know what they called it back then, but, but this was now he has earned his stripes and badges and his activation of being a stepper just have been activated because he will go on y'all. He will go on and become a hitman in Detroit. I'm gonna break something down for y'all. This might be the realest video that I ever done. When you got these older drug dealing dudes that already did time, they know that, why do y'all think these older drug dealer dudes be having these young boys around them? These teenagers, these minors. Because they know if they get, they have these teenagers and minors hold the pistol. They know the teenagers and minors, if they hold the drugs and the police run up on them, they just going to get juvenile time or slap on the wrist. This is why these drug dealers, we have these young cats around them. These cats that's in poverty. Yeah, they using them. And they feel like, well, especially when you come from the places that I done been to, of the gritty streets of Flint, Michigan, if your parents wasn't working at GM or the factories and stuff like that, or had a decent job, you was out there in the streets. Either you were selling or you was robbing. Pick. You got a choice. So um it was like um so he he done found himself in Detroit, got up under some guys that was paying him to do to to you know take out rivals. And I remember I didn't see him for about two years after this would happen. And I ended up running into him when I was in Pontiac, y'all. Y'all know about the Pontiac stories. So I ended up running into him, man. And he looked so different, man. I'm talking about his whole face was tatted up. And um, when I seen him, I was coming out of a club called Tonic. And um, we bumped into each other. And he instantly went to his waistband like, dude, was like that. And he looked at me and I'm looking at him. Cause I was about to grab at his waistband at, at that's one thing about me, y'all. Like, I just feel like I'm this this is why Dante don't drink and this is why Dante don't smoke or do any type of drugs. Cause I always have to be on point. I always been like that. Because a lot of my associates and a few of my friends done lost their life because they was off that drink. So my thing is if if I see a man and he ain't got the hammer out. Nine times out of 10, I know he got it on his waist. So if I'm about to get into any altercation, I'm instantly grabbing you by your throat and going for your waistband. And that's just how, that's how I was back then. So when I see him going for the grip, I kind of, I, I, this hand was going up and this hand was about to go that way. But I'm looking at him and I say, I say his name. And he say my name. And we like, oh, what's up, my N-word? What's up, my N-word? So we grab each other, embrace each other. I'm like, man, where you been at? He was like, shoot, man, I've been in the D. I've been in the D. I'm like, man, like, dog, what, where you been? I done forgot. I didn't forget about what he did, like, the last time I seen him in my room. But um, I wasn't even thinking about that. I, I just see, this my homie. I ain't seen him in two years. So we embrace each other. We talking. He like, yeah, man. Nah, I ain't, I ain't the same dude, man. I, I ain't the same dude. I'm like, what you mean? He like, man, you know, I'm, I'm out here getting it. I'm out here getting it. I'm going to tell y'all something. 
I remember the look in his eyes when he was in my room and I told y'all he got to laughing hysterically when he was talking, telling me the story about how he downed the white cat. This is two years later, y'all. He still had that crazy look in his eye. I don't know what it is when a man take another man life. It, I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe a part of him is taken away from him. I don't know. Now, Dante ain't never, uh, to my knowledge, I never took a man life. Never. I have assaulted men plenty of times, but I have never took taken a man life in my life. So Dante eyes, I can still sleep okay at night. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm looking at him I'm like, my dude is gone. My dude is gone. So he gave me his number. And at that time, y'all, I wasn't about to call him. <laughs> nah, he said, yeah, man, when you in a D, man, yeah, hit me up, man, so we can chill, so we can hang out. Yeah, I'm going to show you the city. Let me tell y'all something. This was my homie. This was my dude two years ago, okay, when we was teenagers. But Dante knew enough. That growing up in the streets of Flint, Michigan, you do not, when you hang around certain cats, it, it, it just know what comes with them. If you got a family member in, in, I remember one of my brothers, right? I just had my son. I think he was maybe a year old or maybe even 11 months old. And my brother was a stepper. My brother that was directly under me. He was a he was a king vibe for real. I remember I was at my baby mama house and he came over there to see us. And he was like, hey, I want to take my nephew with me. Right? I said, Are you crazy? He was like, No, nah, what you mean crazy? Why can't you take my nephew? I said, What you got under your shirt? He had a bulletproof vest on. He said, What? Uh, a bulletproof vest. I said, What you got in your book bag? I got a tech nine. I said, that's why. That's why you cannot take my son out this house. Man, ain't nothing gonna happen to him. Man, you know I got, man. I got, I said, th I said, that is why. He didn't understand that. He said, man, you know I can protect him. I can probably protect him better than you can. I said, <laughs> listen, bro, you're not taking my son out of here. You, there's no way. I'm about to let you take my son out of this house and you got a tech nine in your backpack and you ain't a bulletproof vest. That don't work that way. It don't work that way. So he was like, man, all right, man, whatever. So let's fast forward to my dude. So he gave me the number. I know I'm not calling because it, it always be the cat, the innocent dude. And I'm not saying that I'm innocent at all, but it, don't, it always seemed like it'd be three cats in the car. And the dude that get hit was the guy that had nothing to do with it. And I'm like, with my luck, I might be that dude to get hit. <laughs> right? So, you know, I, you know, he gave me his number. We embraced each other again, told each other we love each other. And he went his way and I went my way. He would go on to document it. He went on to catch what I know, well, I know for a fact, maybe five more bodies for a fact, and allegedly maybe two or three more. <sighs> we all got a King Vine that we know. We got King Vines in our families. I ain't the only one. And the crazy thing about that, y'all, that we love our family members that's like King Von. We love them to death. But we also know that, yo, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Because the Holy Scriptures teach us this. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. I'm going to say that again because I don't think y'all really caught what I just said. The Holy Scriptures teaches us if you live by the sword, Meaning if you a cat out here robbing and stealing and shoot them up, bang, bang, and people. Nine times out of ten, if you don't go to the penitentiary, like my friend, you're going to the grave. 
And nine times out of 10, it's because somebody's going to take your life away from you. Like you done took the lives of many, many people. We got to understand something about this gun violence thing. And please, if you a parent out there and you got a young son that might be gang banging or you know, out here in the streets confused, show him this video. Because it's about to get real raw and raunchy. Because the thing that they don't tell y'all when you get locked up in the penitentiary, what they don't tell you is this. Sometimes that victim, the person that you took away from this earth, Sometimes he got family or she got family out there in these penitentiaries. And then they're waiting on you. Then they're waiting on you. Matter of fact, I'm going to give y'all one right here. I remember Wallow. Y'all know Wallow and Gilly? Wallow was telling the story not too long ago where he was talking about this, this young cat took out this dude nephew or niece or something and he he didn't even know this was the person family member that he was in the pod with and he told the story where long story short for the sake of time he said you know the dude didn't approach him he didn't say nothing to him but he knew who he was and he ended up when dude ended up walking past his cell one day he grabbed him by his mouth like this and had that sword of justice poking at him and brought him into his cell, pulled his pants down and inserted heavy D inside of him and made him his prison wife. A lot of cats don't be talking about like, I, hey, I, I told y'all this on a live the other day. One of my homeboys, y'all remember in Flint, I had a crew. It was about 12 of us. And um, everybody went to prison. Everybody. Everybody. Except for my homeboy that's doing good in Atlanta. His name Terrell. He doing good. But he the only one that didn't go to prison. Um, Dang, I forgot what the heck I was talking about. What was I talking about? I done lost my train of thought. Well, anyway, y'all, um, oh, oh, the, the Wallow story, the Wallow story. So my, my the point of telling y'all is this. If you out here committing crimes, man, and I need for y'all to look at the magnitude of what's really going on. When you kick, when you take a man's life and he has kids, you, t you just not taking that man's life. You take him a father away from his kids. This dude has a mother and a father, right? And you taking them, when you take a man or a human being out of this earth like that, you leave a hole. There's a lot of family members that are affected by that. And for you steppers out there that won't keep it real, when y'all get caught, tell about how many nights that y'all cry at night when you in that cell. When you replant in your head, every you just keep replanting it over and over. I should have never did that. Dang, look at me. I'm up in here now for life. I shouldn't have went out this time. I should have just let it go. I should have just let it ride. Now I'm in here. Y'all know what? I liked it. The reason why I liked the King Vine, because he, he reminded me of my brother. He reminded me of my brother that's no longer here because my brother lived by the sword and he died by the sword. And when I seen King Vine, I, I don't know, his, he just reminded me of my brother. But I realized something also, man. Yo, it ain't worth it, y'all. It ain't worth it. Put down them guns. Put down them guns. If, if it ain't no real stuff, like somebody violating somebody in your family or violating a, a child or a woman in your family or just did something that's so out cold, unforgivable to some, to you or your family member, man, let it go. Let it go. And with that, y'all, I'm out.
Hey, y'all, I need for y'all to check out my big partner, Spiritually Speaking. This is his YouTube channel, y'all. He got some stories over here for y'all. I need for y'all to go check him out, y'all. Check him out. It's called Spiritually Speaking. This is what his YouTube channel look like. He got some good stories. Contact Brian at 248-629-1117. He offering cash for diabetic test strips. Make sure y'all contact him at 248-629-1117. Y'all, we got a good brother out here by the name of Paris. He got an organization called Father Type. His mission statement is Father's Type is a Mindset. It is a way for the youth to have core principles like values and morals that they believe are very important to help them guide and cultivate young men into becoming the best version of themselves by the way of a Father Type Mindset. Be sure to contact Father Type if you want to become a sponsor or a mentee for troubled youth. Y'all, if y'all looking to get your personal credit fixed, make sure y'all contact Rose. Her telephone number is 888-557-5778. Not only does she help you improve your credit score, but she also will help you obtain business credit. So y'all make sure y'all contact her. Her information is right here on the screen. I need my bread right now. He like, dog, you better calm down. He like, what you mean I need to calm down? He like, dog, I said calm down. Marcus was like, what? I need to what? Boom, boom. So oh, shit. Here we go again. If you owe a man something, pay that man. If you borrow something from a man, Pay that man back because you don't know what a man is going through. You don't know what burdens this man got going on. Sometimes cats give you they last. And well, when you decide to borrow from a man and, and, you, and he done gave you his last and you done told him, gave you his word, your word that you was going to pay him back and you don't. Well, this is how we get to this story right here. So dude, we, we gonna say this dude named Joe. Joe go to this dude named Marcus. Joe like, hey, hey Marcus. Now, now they know each other. They've been friends for 10 years. Joe like, hey Marcus, uh, you know, it's the holiday season, bro. And you know, I'm kind of short. On, on a couple of bills. You think you can help a brother out? Marcus like, listen, bro, my rent is due. In eight days, I'ma need it back. How much you need? Oh man, so uh, maybe about 300. 300? Yeah, bro, I, 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 yeah, 300. Mark, uh, Joe, I, I need my money, Joe. I, I, I got you. I, I, I got you. I got you. All right. Hey, listen. Here, here, here go the money. I need my money. Rent due is in eight days. All right. I, 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 I got you, bro. I got you. All right. All right. One love. Before we go on with this story, Drake. Drake said this. He said, never give what you need right back. I'm going to say that one more time. Never give what you need right back. Let's fast forward to six days later. Ring, 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 ring. No answer. 
This is Marcus calling Joe to remind him like, yo, I, I need my money. Ring, 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 ring. Forward to voicemail. All right. All right. I'm, okay. He got two days. He got two more days. We Okay. Next day. Ring, 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 ring. Calling him throughout the day. No answer. Mark is like, man, you know what? I promise to God, man, if this dude don't give me my money, man, if he don't give me my money, I'm okay. So the day that rent is due, ring, 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 ring. You reach the voicemail of Joe. Leave a message. I'll get back with you. Hey, man, answer the phone, man. Hey, I need my money, man. What happens? No call back. He like, you know what? I got him. I got him. So, Mark is getting his car. And he go over to the Joe house. Banging on the door. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Joe mama come to the door. Old, nice, little, sweet church going lady. It's a Sunday, y'all. So, you know, she got the big old, y'all know, at the Koji, the Koji churches, the, the ladies with the big old hat. You know, Dante sitting maybe in the third row and I can't see the past. I'm like this. Because the ladies with the big hats doing all this and blocking Dante view. You know, them type of ladies with the big hat. She come to the door. We could call her, what, Mother Esther. Okay. Matter of fact, in the comment section, let me know. Get we're we gonna play a game right quick in the comment section. Let give me church lady's name. We're gonna start. I'm gonna start it off. I'm gonna say Mother Pearl, and then you will say like Mother Esther, and we're just gonna keep it going. So in the comment section, I want y'all to put the church lady's names in the comment section for me. So she like, hey Marcus, what's going on, baby? He like, hey hey uh. Miss Joe, is Joe in there? She like, oh yeah, he he upstairs sleeping. You want me to go get him, baby? He like, he like, no, it's okay, Mother Joe. I I I'm gonna go up there and I'm I'm gonna go talk to him. She said, okay, baby. Why you ain't going to church? He like, oh, uh, I, I gotta work. I just you know I just gotta go holla at Joe right quick. She said, okay, you you want a peppermint, baby? Yeah, I, yeah, not. How can you turn an old lady away like that? He take the peppermint. He like, thank, thank you, thank you, Miss Joe. She's like, okay, baby, I'll see you later. He, oh, oh, okay, okay. So then he go upstairs. Joe sleeping good, but I'm finna tell y'all something that's real crazy. Not only Joe is sleeping good, but Joe got a. How can I say this without being offensive? Joe got a lady of the night laying right next to him. He paid for that. Not only did he pay for that, Marcus is right here looking on his dresser and he see cigarillos, paraphernalia of, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, he got a couple dollars, just spray, you know, a couple dollar bills right here. He got red lobster right there, you know, old takeout. But it's fresh takeout. So in Marcus mind, he like, so you got money for a lady of the night. You got money to drink good, eat good, and smoke good on my dime. This is what he's thinking in his head. And you, you not answering the phone? So he go over there and snatch the cover off of Joe. Hey, get up. He like, man, bro, man, what you doing, bro? Man, I need my money, man. Man, bro, man, I, I, I got you. No, I don't want to hear that I got you. Why you even answering the phone, man? I've been calling you for the last three or four days, man. I told you I need my money. Man, bro, yo, chill, man, chill. I, I'm, I, I, I'm gonna get it. No, man, get up, man. I need my money right now, man. Where, where, where is it at? So he turned around, and started going through his drawers. Up. Joe, like, man, Marcus, chill, man, chill. I'm, I'm gonna give you the money. Just chill. Give me a couple of days. What? 
What you mean a couple days? I, I, I ain't got it, bro. What do you mean you ain't got it? I told you I needed my money, man. That was my rent money. I need my money. Man, get up, man. I need my money. So the lady of the night waking up, she's like, what's going on? He's like, man, hey, man, hold on. Whatever. How much money did he pay you? Because I'm going to need that. She like, I'm not giving you nothing. He like, man, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need that, man. Whatever he gave you, I need that. And Joe like, man, you need to chill, bro. You need to chill. He like, no, I'm not chilling, man. I knew I should have never. I knew I should have never gave you that money, man. I need my money, dog. I need. I need my money right now. I need my bread right now. He like, dog, you better calm down. He like, what you mean? I need to calm down. He like, dog, I said calm down. Marcus was like, what? I need to what? Boom, boom. So they get the rumbling right there in the bedroom. The lady of the night get the screaming, and she grab her clothes, and she run out of there. So they're in there throwing down. Bam, 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 boom. They, they going out. It's like an even match. Next thing you know, Joe goes under the bed and grab a piece of steel. And let a couple of them off. Boom, boom, boom. Now, when he let a couple of them off, he's aiming at Marcus. And Marcus just instantly, what? Fight or flight kicks in. And he takes off. Run. But Joe, he mad. Joe is seeing red. And Joe steady letting him shots off. Boom, boom, boom. Ah, oh, ah. This is Marcus getting hit. So then Marcus, he fall towards these stairs. And Joe standing over him. Like I told you I was gonna give you your money. I told you I was gonna give you your money, man. Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do, man. Look what you made me do, bro. Look what you boom, 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 boom. Marcus like, oh bro, over some money, bro. You gon' you gonna kill me over some money, bro, that you owe me. Oh, Right in that moment, Marcus gave up the ghost. You cats out there that's always taking and taking and never giving. A day is going to come. A day is going to come when, when somebody tell you no because you always ask for something. And when they tell you no, you're going to feel like they did too wrong. There's people out there, you can tell them yes, yes, yes. Every time, the moment you tell somebody no, they act like you wronged them. Like you forget all the other hundred yeses. You just focus on this no. Like I'm the bad guy. If you owe a man, pay that man. Pay him. If you know dang well that you had no intentions of paying this man back, even he he told you that he need his bread back in seven to eight days because you came to him so humble, so humble. Oh, please, Marcus. Marcus, please. I need this money, Marcus. Marcus is not even, Marcus is such a good friend of yours that Marcus didn't even ask what you even needed for. He just seen his homeboy, his friend, his Judas by the name of Joe. I just need it, bro. And he gave it to you and put that condition that, yo, bro, I need that bread back. I got to pay my rent. I'm, I'm about to tell y'all something. I didn't want to. I didn't want to put it in this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this video. Y'all know Judas, right? That was walking with Jesus. Jesus had twelve disciples that walked with him. These twelve disciples, and I'm focusing on Judas. Judas was with Jesus when Jesus fed the five thousand people with the fish and the bread. He's seen that. He's seen that miracle happen where he multiplied the fish and the bread and fed the 5,000 people. So this is Judas seeing the son of God do this. 
Judas also witnessed the son of God in the flesh walk on water. He seen Paul that was called off the boat when Jesus said, come here. And it speaks about how Paul thought he was a ghost. Or was it John? It was John or Paul, one of the disciples. Jesus said, come here. And he thought it was a ghost. And when he got, he got, he got, he got off the boat and he got to walking towards him. And he started losing faith because he stopped looking at Jesus. And he began to seek and then Jesus grabbed him. Judas was still on the boat and he seen this happen. Judas was on the boat. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Hold up. G Judas was on the boat when the storm was rocking the boat and they thought they was going to die and they went in there and said, Jesus, wake up, man. How you going to sleep through this? Can you please do something about this? And he said, y'all have little faith, man. And he spoke to the storm and told the storm to cease and chill out. And they listened to him. Judas was there when they got off the boat and two demon-possessed men approached them. And Jesus cast them out right in front of Judas' eyes. This is the son of God in the flesh that was with Judas. Judas was right there with him and witnessed all this. And what did he do? He betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. He put a price on the son of God. He put a price on his life. Gave him a kiss. The Romans, the Roman soldiers didn't know who was Jesus. They couldn't identify him. But, the, but Judas told them, the one that I kiss is the one that is Jesus. So he kissed them. And they seized them. And Paul or John grabbed one of the Roman soldiers' sword and cut the dude ear off. Cut his ear off. Bam. And Jesus said, no, we ain't going to do that. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. So he picked up the ear of the Roman soldier ear that got cut off and put it back. And Judas seen this too. He put the ear back on the Roman soldier's face, on his head, and it was healed. Despite all that, Jesus was, betra was betrayed by a friend over some money, over some bread. I tell y'all all the time that the Holy Scripture says that my people are due, are, are, are destroyed due to lack of knowledge. At the end of this video, y'all, I need for y'all to really tap in. Tap in. Tap into these promotional videos that's at the end. This can get you out of poverty. This can get you out of your out of, out of your out of your financial burdens. This might not be for everybody, but it might be for somebody that's out there. I'm just putting it out there. I got eBooks for free. You just, you just pay for the shipping and handling. The books is free. You just pay for the shipping and handling. Get some education, educate yourself. These people that I'm promoting, on this platform at the end of the video. I'm telling y'all, this is how y'all get out of, this is how you get out of poverty. With that y'all, this is the Dante Show Network. If you want to continue to support the Dante Show Network, y'all know where the cash app is at. It's in the description. Y'all know where the PayPal is at. It's in the description. Somebody gonna say, oh, that there go Dante go big in him again. He rock. The Holy Scripture says that if a man don't work, which I am working right now, a man don't eat. So I can't eat, but I can work, but I can't eat. I can't get my wages. I can't get my apples and oranges. 
And again, y'all, I know it's 2023 and it's hard out here, but I know this at minimum, because I don't care if it's just a dollar versus $10,000. The reason why I always say that, because y'all remember, it, it goes back to the scriptures. When Jesus and the disciples was there in Jerusalem at the temple and people was giving wealth and money and money, donating, right, to the temple. And he said, look at the woman right there. She had the e equivalency. Let me see. She had the equivalency of two shekels, right? And when she put that in there, that was all she had. That's all she had left to her name. And she gave it. Jesus said, see that woman? She gave more than anybody else. You see that rich man is putting, and there's nothing wrong with putting in so much that you got because you have abundance. But the reason why I'm saying is even if you put a dollar in there, it still goes a long way because you, you took the time out and said, you know what? Let me support that brother. I like what he's doing. Let me give him an apple or an orange. I know it's just a dollar. It might be just a dollar to you, but it goes a long way because you took the time out to say, you know what? I got him. I got him. It's all much appreciated. And at minimum, like I said, I know it's hard out here. At minimum, at least you can hit that like button and share the video. That's minimum. Check out the education and the promos at the end of this video. You need to. You got to. It's a must. And with that, y'all, this is the Dante Show Network. I'm out. Y'all, if y'all looking to get y'all personal credit fixed, Make sure y'all contact Rose. Her telephone number is 888-557-5778. Not only do she help you improve your credit score, but she also will help you obtain business credit. So y'all make sure y'all contact her. Her information is right here on the screen. If you got your license suspended and you facing wage garnishments and you got bad credit, some lawsuits, make sure you contact Brian at 313-492-9097. That's 313-492-9097. Y'all, we got a good brother out here by the name of Paris. He got an organization called Father Type. His mission statement is Father's Type is a Mindset. It is a way for the youth to have core principles like values and morals that they believe are very important to help them guide and cultivate young men into becoming the best version of themselves by the way of a father type mindset. Be sure to contact Father Type if you want to become a sponsor or a mentee for troubled youth. All right, y'all, my guy Mike Ecclesi is starting a new podcast called Hood Psychology. Coming soon, y'all. Over there at Hood Psychology, he talking about all kinds of stuff that we as a people face daily. Tackling the uncomfortable conversations about religion, politics, relationships, history, and just the day-to-day -day life in general. Mike the Ecclesi will also feature special guests to help him break down these topics. So beat your feet to the page and subscribe now because y'all don't want to miss out or don't be late to hood psychology. Real pulled out the block and was like, boom, 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 boom. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Let me tell y'all something. When you got cats out here that take on this bully role out here in the free world, and they bully and bully and bully just one person, and then when that person get fed up and they act out, well, this is what this story is about. Now, before we tell, before I tell y'all the prison story, I have to tell y'all the hood story. So y'all know, so it didn't make sense why the bully got bombed on in prison. Oh. So you got this dude named Rail and this dude named Mook, okay? Mook is a bully. 
Mook always bullying this dude named Rail. So he'll do things like if Mook, if, if, if Mook see Rail with a chick, he'll just go up to him and just totally disrespect him. You know, trying to sun and be like, man, what's up, little dude? And, you know, touching his hat and like knocking his hat off and just roughing him up in front of a chick, right? Bruh. I want to ask, this is a question for the fellas. I got you, homie. Because I don't know if women go through this, but have y'all ever met a guy that every time y'all get around some females, he always acting out like he always doing the most, being all extra? Well, this is how Mook was with Rail. Every time he would see him with a chick, he would go over there, oh, what's up, you punk mother effer? Oh, what's up, BA nigga? And like, trying to play him like that, right? Bruh. And Rail, he wasn't like a real aggressive dude. He was kind of laid back. So he like, man, just chill out, you know? But uh, Mook would do stuff like this. So Mook, uh, Rail would be walking down the street with a girl. Mook come to him, man, what's up, you little punk? Got his hat on, like, man, man, take his hat off, man. Take that hat off, man, and throw it down. Like, man, you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. Stuff like that, you know, being childish in front of the girl, right? So these are the things that he would do, or if we at the corner store, Mook would come in there, and he would see Rail count some money, like some count some change, and he would do like this. Or he'd see him eating some chicken or something on the block and he'd just come up to him, you don't want that, and knock it out of his hand. This is the type of bully activity Mook would do to Rail. Now, Rail ended up getting locked up for armed robbery. He was trying to rob a church's chicken. He got away with it, but his baby mama snitched on him because y'all know how dudes in the hood be. When y'all are down, y'all are down. But then when you up, you up and you want to stunt on your baby mama you want to um go to the strip club and spin on these chicks that's up there right but won't take care of home so his baby mama got tired of it so she just called the police and said hey i know who robbed the church chicken it's my baby daddy and he here and <laughs> there it go so real end up getting 10 years in prison <laughs> now cats like mook they, it's just a matter of time when they go to prison. Now, Rail been locked up maybe in his fourth year when, when me and Al got there. So when we got there, we ran into Rail. You know, we chopping up with him, you know, it's all good. About, I'm gonna say three months after me and Al got there, here come Mook. Ah, oh, shit. And Mook back on the same tip of Oh man, what's up, man? Y'all, y'all, y'all up here, man. Look at this BA nigga right here, man. What this soft A? Here we go again. Doing up in here, talking about rail. And he like, man, bro, listen, I, I ain't that same dude. I ain't that same dude from 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 when we was kids, right? He like, man, get out of here with that with that kid stuff, man. Man, watch out, move around, right? Let me tell y'all something about penitentiary. Penitentiary rules are in full effect. I got you, homie. And what is that? Anything goes. That means you might come joking and playing and thinking that I'm the same person that I was out here in the streets. You don't know what that person been through while locked up. You don't know how much trauma and how much BS this cat have to put up with while locked up, while you out there in the free world having a good old time. This dude, Rail, was in here stressing. This dude, Rail, his biggest issue was this, his girl that got him locked up. Now, even though he knows she ain't the S word for getting him locked up, that's all he have, okay? That's all that he has, his daughter and her. But, you know, she one of them type of chicks that be sleeping around, if y'all know what I mean. So, he like, um, he just stressed out. So when you get Mook coming in from the streets, bothering you and, you know, applying pressure on you, just trying to sun you and treat you like a kid, like y'all was on the street, you ain't going for it. So it was a Saturday night and it was me, Al, Rail, um, what's the dude's name? 2,000 years later. Davino and um, DeVille. 
we all up in my cell, we doing a cook up, we just kicking it, we just talking, we just chilling, right? So then, here come Mook. Mook come in, he like, hey Dante, can I come through? I didn't really want him in there because Rail was in here and I know, you know, they got tension and, and I know how Rail feel about Mook and I just didn't want to, I didn't feel like breaking up no fights. I didn't feel like, you know, just having that drama because we in here chilling and I know Mook going to come in here on some bad energy. So I'm like, I, it's already packed in here, man. He like, man, come on, bro. Let me come through. I'm like, nah, man, it's, it's not. Nah. He like, all right, man, all right. And so he walked off. And then now I hear him outside of the cell talking about, yeah, man, Dante on some BS, man. He on some BS. He was actually cussing. He was talking to somebody. He on some BS. I know what it is. He trying to say that H-A-N word. I'm like, and then we got quiet. Because first I thought he was just talking about me, but he was talking about real. He talking about, yeah, he in there trying to say that H-A-N word and all this and that. It was like that B-A-N word, real and all this and that. So real just sitting there like, you know what? I'm so tired of this dude. I'm tired of this dude, man. I'm tired of him. So I'm like, listen, you gonna have to do something to him. He like, man, I already know, man. I'm, I'm just like this, I, we in prison now and he's steady messing with me. So now Mook, I don't know if he heard him cause we was talking like at a minimum and Mook obviously had to be ear hustling. So I guess he heard what he said. He like, yeah. And I, 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 I wish one of them would up in there do something to me. I wish somebody would do something with me, man. Especially, especially that real, right? Especially real. So I'm looking at real and Al was like, man, go handle your business. So he was like, man, yeah, I'm going to have to do something to him. So then Al was like, here you go. So he gave him, y'all know what that is, the SOJ. He gave him an SOJ. So he like, all right, I'm finna go. So he walked out there and we all peeking out the cell down the tier. And he just walked past him. So we like, man, why he ain't him with the y'all, with the you know what? So we like, okay, well, I guess we we'll, I don't know. So when he actually walked past him, Mook like, yeah, that's what I thought, B-A-N word. That's what I thought, B-A-N word. Real just kept walking, went to his cell. So I'm like, that's odd. Well, maybe he going to his cell to pack his stuff up because you know what he about to do to Mook. And that way he can al already have his stuff ready for property, for the guards to take to property. So when he go to the hole, maybe that's what he about to go do. So we like, all right, whatever. So we go back in the cell, we talking, we chilling, right? Now at this time, y'all, Rail is down there playing dominoes. I mean, Mook is down there playing dominoes. Next thing you know, I hear, man, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? We all bust off the cell. We looking over the tier. We see him. Rail is standing in front of Mook while he's sitting down. And he 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 like just standing there with his fist ball. And um, Mook just barking on him like, man, what you gonna do? You ain't gonna do nothing. Don't mean, man, get, man, move around, man. Watch out before I beat your way like, like I used to do on the street. So real just steady standing there, just standing there. And dude just popping. So he like, man, I ain't even worrying about you. So now he's, he's steady playing dominoes while real is right there standing right on the side of him. Now, let me give y'all some advice for you people that think that you are super, super duper tough. Never turn your back on your enemy. I don't care how tough you think you are, okay? I don't care how real you think you are. Because let me tell you something. A scary dude will cut you, pop you out of out of fear. I'm telling you. This is why I tell everybody, all, all the youngsters out there, if you out here in these streets or whatnot, always give your enemy a way out. If you're not trying to go all the way, and when I say all the way with your enemy, give them a way out. Because it's just like a scared mouse. If you back a mouse into a corner or a rat and it's terrified, it's going to go through you. It's going to go through you. So always give your enemy a way out. Because a scary dude 
we'll pop you. Okay? So, he just standing there. We like, oh, it's about to go down. It's about to go down. Mook is steady running his mouth. Man, y'all got to say it, man. This, all this and that, right? Next thing you know, it just came out of nowhere. Rail pulled out a lock and was like, boom, 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 right? I'm talking about Mook. I mean, it happened so fast and so quick. Mook was like, pop, 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 like a pinball machine. So then Mook tried to get up, and when he turned like this way to face rail, it, he was like, wow. Took one, two, three, four, five, six. All his teeth went flying that way. He like, it. listen, I done seen a lot of blood before. But the way this blood was coming out of his mouth, it was like rushing out like a waterfall. I'm talking about, you talking about spit, him yelling like, man, what the f and, and I guess when he did that, when Rail hit him in the mouth with the lock, may, I think Rail maybe froze up a little bit because he was just standing like, Oh snap. Like I guess he was in a trance. I guess he I guess he was out of his body, out of his element when he went on an attack on Mook. So he's standing there like, oh man, what oh this crazy. I'm talking about all oh, his teeth was knocked out, the fronts was gone. So he go, he like, oh, oh man, oh, 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 okay, okay. Now at this time the guards already caught the cold. And they telling us, lock down, lock down, lock down. Now, he like, oh, okay, I got you, I got you. So he run to his cell. And then Rail run to his cell. Mook went to go get a sword of justice. And he he get it now, he over there at the cell, like, man, come on, come on. So how he said, we got single cells. I mean, they it's not single cells, but the doors, when you go into your room, when you go into your cell, you can open your, your, your cell door and you can close your cell door. They ain't got the ones that's all connected. There's one so you can open this, close it, just like that. So Rail is in a cell holding the door closed like this while Mook is outside of the door trying to open the door. Now the goon squad come up in there. They tell him, Put the knife down, put the knife down. Now everybody in their room, so ain't nobody trying to get hit with them purple balls and them rubber bullets, man, or get mace. So uh, Mook is just out of his mind because he like, I got to get mine back. I, I got to get me, man. This dude will knock my teeth out. I don't care about nothing. So he he right there with the knife and banging on the door trying to get the door open to get at rail. <sighs> For you cats out there, that out there committing crimes and might find yourselves behind them bars, understand this. When them goon squad, when the goon squad come through and then they full tactical gear, understand they not coming in there to play with you. They coming in, they coming in there to hurt you bad. They gonna put elbows and knees all on your body. They gonna be hitting you with sticks. They gonna be macing you. They gonna be putting your body parts in, in, in unnatural contorted ways. Okay, they gonna dog you out. It was six tactical, tactical gear COs. It was a nurse and it was a supervisor. And the nurse had a camera. Put the knife down, put the knife down. Last warning. Boom, boom. They hit him with the rubber bullets. Bam, bam. And then they rushed him. When they got him on the ground, I don't, maybe it was because when he got his teeth knocked out of his mouth, the blood was steady flowing. But they beat Mook down. They beat Mook bad. They did him dirty. They hog tied him and carried him on the body there. And then they went in there and well, they didn't extract him. They just told him to cuff up. They told Rail to cuff up and let's go too. And they sent him off 
to a level three yard or a level three facility. For you cats out there that's, that like bullying people, understand this, people get fed up. People get fed up. And understand this too, if you was a, if you was bullying somebody in high school or in the streets, and then when y'all get grown and you don't see them, you see them years later, and you think that you're gonna do that as a grown man to them, and especially if they got a family, a wife and kids, and you think you about to son them and do them bad in front of their family, some of these cats will bust your mother freaking head to the white meat. Y'all better get you some business and stop playing military mind games. Or you gonna end up like Mook with your teeth knocked out of your skull. Y'all, if y'all looking to get y'all personal credit fixed, make sure y'all contact Rose. Her telephone number is 888-557-5778. Not only do she help you improve your credit score, but she also will help you obtain business credit. So y'all make sure y'all contact her. Her information is right here on the screen. If you got your license suspended and you facing wage garnishments and you got bad credit, some lawsuits, make sure you contact Brian at 313-492-9097. That's 313-492-9097. Y'all, we got a good brother out here by the name of Paris. He got an organization called Father Type. His mission statement is Father's Type is a mindset. It is a way for the youth to have core principles like values and morals that they believe are very important to help them guide and cultivate young men into becoming the best version of themselves by the way of a Father Type mindset. Be sure to contact Father Type if you want to become a sponsor or a mentee for troubled youth.